Dude, if I was a banker I w- and I was a piece of shit banker, I would be so fucking paranoid that someone was going to whack me for all the misery and suffering that I fucking, you know, that I've been causing. The fact that I turn a fucking pond into my own jacuzzi, right? I can park my yacht in my fucking jacuzzi. And I just sit there, you know, eating fucking crab legs and caviar every fucking day. Standing on fucking dead babies' heads. There's no fucking way I would ever get in a fucking town car. There's no way. There's no way. (laughs) I would have whoever my Fredo, my litter of kids, whoever the Fredo was, that was to be the guy that I had driving the car. Although in The Godfather, he was looking out for Marlon Brando, and then he got shot, right? So I don't fucking know. Anyways, oh, you know, I read some actually some really interesting shit about how Iceland beat the bankers. When Iceland went bankrupt and then the bankers tried to pull this shit where, yeah, we were greedy cunts and now we're putting the debt on you and your taxpayers. They said, you know what? Fuck you. This isn't our debt. This is our mess. It's yours. And then all these fucking sellout cunts like fucking Amsterdam and Britain put all this pressure on fucking Iceland because they pussied out with the bankers. They've been on their knees sucking that banker cock for fucking ever. They tried to fucking get them to come along. They tried to pressure them and I, you know, or else we'll turn you into the Cuba of the North. And they said, fuck you. We're not doing it. And you know what? That's what this country should have done. This country should have told those banker fucking cunts. I, I, uh, I just, I'm beside myself that it isn't brought up more. You know, it's the whole thing. Like I have water damage to my house. My insurance company sends a check that's made out to me, uh, Nia, and and then my mortgage company. And I have to we have to sign the check over to them so they keep the money. And you know why that is? Because they fucked so many people so fucking hard in the ass. So many people are upside down in houses because of the bullshit that they created by making people who aren't qualified for loans qualified. So instead of having five people bid on a house, you got 10 people bidding on it, and it goes up like Super Bowl tickets, right? And all of a sudden, a house that's really worth a buck 80 sells for 270. So you got these cunts. Everybody's fucking upside down in the house. So they're like, well, fuck it. I'm keeping this money. And then when they foreclose on it, they fucking come in, and they're like, fuck, they never fixed the roof. So now I have to sign over my goddamn money. It's my money. It's my insurance. That's my insurance money. I have to send it into them. You know why? Because, people, it's not my house. It's their fucking house. It's theirs. All right? And if I ever pay this fucker off, which you know I'm going to, drive over, I drive a six-year-old hybrid. All right? I don't give a fuck. I, I fucking I dress like Malcolm Young because I'm getting these cunts out of my life. And this is what's going to happen. I'm going to pay off this fucking house. And you think when I die, I can, I can just give it to somebody else? It's my house, right? If I, I can fucking give away all my other shit, why can't I give the house? The house is going to have all taxes and all these penalties and all this bullshit. And whoever I fucking leave it to is going to be like, you know what? It's just going to be easier to sell it. And then they sell it. And whatever money they make, they get the shit taxed out of them. They get half a dick in their ass. And then somebody else buys this thing. And then the, that, the bank goes balls deep in them for another fucking 30 years. You know what? Halfway through that, I realized, am I sounding crazy or am I making sense? I don't know. I talked to a banker in a titty bar. He agreed with everything I said. (laughs) I've been watching a bunch of shit on uh, on Netflix. I'm big on the uh, I like documentaries, you know, and I watched one and a half last night before I fell asleep. I watched this thing called The Queen of Versailles, which you have to you have to see. And it's basically about this guy, 75 years old. 75 years old, he married Miss Florida in 1993, so he's fucking balling. Has seven kids with her, right? And he's got this, he sells timeshares, you know, which, you know, is really a shady fucking business. You know, hey, I, well, I mean, I don't, I don't know, what is a fucking timeshare? It's, 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 a, it's a fucking overpriced hotel room, isn't it? I mean... I don't know. What am I buying? 
If I spend all that money, I don't want to be laying in a bed that somebody else has been fucking in. I want a brand new bed, okay? That's, that's deal number one. Because other than that, I can go lay in a bed that everybody else fucked in all year long. It's called a hotel, right? But this guy had, had basically had, was the biggest timeshare company um, in the world, according to him. And, uh, and he was in the middle of building the biggest house in America. And it had 10 kitchens. There's fucking nine people in their family. They have one more kitchen than they have people in their family. All right? You have to watch just to see them. I mean, it's not finished yet because in 2008 they got caught up on all the banker shit. And, um, but you just have to see when his wife walks in with her friend and when they walk up these stairs. I'm telling you, these fucking stairs are, are wider than the stairs at Grand Central Station in New York City. They go upstairs, and, and the, the fucking friend of the Miss, Miss 1993 Florida goes, is like, you know, because they haven't, like, put the walls up. It's just the uh, the framing of it. She goes, oh, my God. She goes, is that your bedroom? And she goes, no, it's my closet. It's <laughs> but if you really want to see, okay. Now, a lot of people will watch the Queen of Versailles and go, look at these two selfish fucking people and all the waste and all that. Apps are fucking loofy. Lutely. That's on the fucking surface. But underneath all of it, you, you see a guy who doesn't want to declare bankruptcy and put that money on the American people and wants to fight his way out of it, and the bankers won't do it. Like, he had a building out in fucking Vegas. He, he put $350 million of his own fucking money in, and now he can't make the payments. So he wants the bankers to try and, you know, give him some of the bailout money, and they kept all of it because this is the thing. If he fucking if they get him to default on that, they get to keep his three hundred fifty million and sell the fucking building all over again. Um, you know, and obviously this guy he got overextended. He made the mistake of not realizing, you know, what bankers are and what it is that they do. They're not your friends. They're not trying to help you grow your fucking business. They're trying to make every fucking dime off you as they can. And when it's over, you bust the joint out. <laughs> I just started thinking about the, the fucking uh, Goodfellas. Well, they start burning it down. But rather than burning the place down, they fucking did it, you. The, the Ray Liotta and fucking Joe Pesci are fucking tying those little candle things to you. I'm trying to bang this fucking Jew broad over here. You can't help me out. What's the world coming to? Um, and then you, you burn to the ground, and that's it. But the building's still standing, and then they get some other group to go in there, and then they fuck them in the ass. I'm telling you. We should all, as civilians, you remember the ending of Scarface when they were coming over the wall? That's what we should be doing right now in gated communities, going to bankers' fucking houses. We should be dragging them, dragging them out by the tassels of their fucking wingtips. New house, dearest Billy Boy. Keeping it short and sweet due to your undying hatred for reading out loud i actually don't mind it i just i hate sounding stupid <laughs> uh, my fiance and i are moving into our first house on friday any last minute advice yes um well it's too late you already bought a fucking house my first thing would be drive less of a car wear less clothes everything less and start knocking out the principal. All right? You got to start knocking that fucking thing down. Um, and when they, then once you knock it down to a certain point, then they're going to come at you and be like, hey, do you want to refinance? You want to refinance? Look, your mortgage payment will go from 1500 down to 1200 That will save you 300 bucks a month. That's all a fucking scam. Okay? Do you really think there's somebody who works at the bank and his job and he's sitting there going, how can this bank make less money? Oh, I know what. I mean, how long would that guy work there before he got fired? It's a scam because what happens is if you're like four or five years into your mortgage, they're going to refinance it and your payment doesn't go down 300 bucks and you're still five years in. It starts back at zero. All right. Now you have that payment for 30 years and you're starting all fucking over again. So the 300 bucks that you're saving each month, they're making more in the fucking interest in the long run because they sent you back to square one. It's all a fucking scam. 
I'm telling you, go to the gated communities and go over the fucking wall. Um, don't really do that, all right? I don't want to be held responsible for that. Um, these are all jokes. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Um, oh, here's a nice creepy thing. It's really not a nice creepy thing. It's just sort of a fucking creepy thing. So we rented this car when we drove up from Calgary to, uh, drove up to Edmonton from Calgary. And we had the thing. Actually, we picked it up at the airport. And, um, yeah, we were driving over to the casino. That's what it was. Driving over to the casino. And I find, I just look on the dashboard. I'm like, what the fuck is that? What is that on the dashboard? I'm like, is that a camera? I think it was a camera. And I think it was pointed at us because there was nothing in the front. I don't know if it was the GPS antenna. I don't know what the fuck it was, but it was really creepy. So I, of course, threw a fucking newspaper over the goddamn thing. And um, when I got back to the hotel, I looked up about cars and cameras. And I found this article here. It says, is your rental car company spying on you and your driving? Here's how they do it. All right. Rental car giant Hertz has admitted it is it has cameras installed in about one in eight of its cars in the United States. But those cameras built into Hertz has never lost dashboard assistant that offers routing help and local city guides have never been turned on. Give me a fuck it. Really? You spent all that money and you never turned them on, you lying cunts? Hertz has said loudly and repeatedly they've never turned them on. Understand that Never Lost 6 was launched by Hertz in early 2014. The product has been out there for over a year, and only now is it causing flap, probably because most renters began noticing a creepy camera pointed at them. Um, understand, too, there are excellent reasons to worry about car rental companies, spy, uh, companies spying on drivers. Um, but very probably Never Lost 6 is not one of them. Hertz said his last, it, has, it lacked the bandwidth to use the cameras anyway, but it has been so scorched, but it has scorched so severely in the media flap of the past weeks that industry experts indicated that Hertz now would be just about the last company to spy on its customers. Does any of that make any sense that you'd put a camera in there and then you wouldn't use it? You'd install a camera and, oh, we're just a little mom and pop place. We don't have the fucking bandwidth for it. Some of this shit's funny. They actually find some people like hundreds, sometimes thousands of dollars using this shit. And basically, you know, when you rent a car and they go, OK, you got to stay in the tri-state area or you're not leaving California. Right. Some fucking guy. He ended up he left California, went to Nevada and then Arizona. And then they, they gave him a uh, I don't know where the fuck it was. He was slapped with a bill of three thousand four hundred five dollars and five cents by adding $1 per mile to each of the 2874 miles he had driven because he had cra crossed the California state line into Nevada. To me, that's funny. Okay? Because that guy's a piece of shit. He lied to the car company. All right? I'm not just saying Hertz is a piece of shit. People who buy rental cars and they treat them like shit are also pieces of shit. But I don't... I don't but to sit there and film people, and then, you know, they're going to start recording conversations. Do you understand, like, in the future... OK, you go to run for president like what could like. Bring you down is some fucked up thing you said, some argument you had in the car with some girlfriend you're not even with 20 years earlier. And they just bring that up in the middle of the debate. Like I think in the future, like they're lit like once you become a public figure, they will just have on a disc, you know, and it's all going to be logged. Anything you ever fucking did, like questionable shit good shit that you did, all the balance, you know. And they'll probably just have like a pie chart. Okay, here's his life disc, you know, and the good stuff is in whatever, green or yellow, man, right, or all the nice friendly fucking colors. And then the bad shit will be all in like red. Um, I don't know if you're prone to depression, there'll be like some blue in there. And they'll just look at the big pie chart and try to judge it then overall what kind of a fucking person you are. It's just, it's, I don't know, it's really creepy. This is another one that was funny to me. It says in, in Florida, rental car companies are notorious for literally shutting off engines of cars that cross straight state lines. The cars may be restarted restart, upon agreement to pay the new fees. <laughs> That's fucking hilarious. Now, here's my question. 
How do you know they're not in the left lane doing 90 miles an hour with somebody on their bumper? And you're just going to shut off their car? That You have to wait until the car stops. I would like to think that. But um, I don't know. Part of me, I don't mind if they track you with the GPS as far as that. And if you leave the state lines, I mean, that's only fair. You're fucking lying to them and the technology exists. But that shit to start recording conversations and uh, videotaping you is like, I don't know, man. That really crosses a line. Um, I don't know. Some people say, well, what about all these assholes texting and driving? They're, they're, you know, they're killing people and that type of shit. There, there has to be a better way. What do you guys think? There's got to be a better way to keep. I mean, I don't even know how safe you have to make the world. I mean, there's too many fucking people. Can you let some people die? I mean, I know that's really morbid to say that shit, but um, I don't know. I'm kind of a fucked up person. So why, why, why would you listen to me? Why would you listen to this podcast? Uh, here's, some, here's some conspiracy theory for you. Somebody said, Bill, the, they, uh, he wrote, they are watching. And um, I got trashed. For talking about conspiracy theory, I've been trashed for talking about those automated checkout lines in the grocery store and saying that I'm paranoid and I'm afraid of technology and all this technology is just going to help my life and make my life more easier. And why don't you trust these big fucking corporations, basically? It's the shit that people are giving me. So after getting trashed for all, you know, talking shit about all these corporations. And actually having the audacity to think that bankers were all trying to team up and have one world bank, you know, to become the loan sharks for not every, well, not only individual but actual countries, okay? Which is something that I was thinking about when I was at the Rose Bowl, stone sober, and I was sitting there on the golf course, and I was looking at these houses up on up on the ridge of this hill that actually looked down. On, on the Rose Bowl, the granddaddy of them all. These people have a house that looks down on it. And I was actually envisioning that those were all bankers up there. And while the game was going on, and 104,000 people or 96,000 whoever showed up for that game were sitting there going fucking crazy. One of those piece of shit bankers up there could put his hand on his son's shoulder and be like, see all those people down there? They owe all of us money. They all owe me money, son. I'm getting a piece of all of their fucking paychecks. And they don't even know it. They don't even know that their daddy is looking down on them right now. Now, had I been drinking, that thought would have probably caused me to, uh, you know, entertain the thought of climbing up that hill and throwing a rock through one of the windows, which, of course, I wouldn't have done because even my drunkest, I am am aware that I don't want to go to jail and get raped. And secondly, I, I re- I'm not going to go all the way up that fucking hill. So what I would have done is I probably would have yelled at that kid with the light purple slacks. I would have commented really loud about that dude's fucking uh, eczema flaking off into the back of his goddamn sweatshirt. Um, so anyways, this guy sends me this email, and he says, uh, Bill, the they's in this blog, when I say they are watching, are big business. Not the Illuminati, but they are just as evil as any bank or secret society. They don't even need your signature. Listen to this shit. They don't even need your signature for these information gathering traderware programs to monitor everything from where the device is to what your heart rate is. What is traderware? That's the question I had. Um, Your digital camera may embed metadata into photographs with camera's serial number or your location. Your printer may be incorporating a secret code on every page it prints which could be used to identify the printer and potentially the person who used it. Now, now the fucking morons, the sheep out there would be like, yeah, that's in case you threaten the president. They're just doing it for the good of all people. Um, if Apple puts a particularly creepy patent, I guess Apple's applying for this. Is it recently applied for the use um, for? Um, you can look forward to a day when your iPhone may record your voice. Take a picture of your location Record your heartbeat and send that information back to the mothership. This is TraderWare, devices that act behind your back and betray your privacy. Now, this is what the moron sheep are going to be to say. Well, if you ain't doing nothing wrong, what's the problem? That's, That's the philosophy. That was the philosophy behind why they can record your phone calls now. 
If you ain't doing nothing, we'll taste of you. Come on, frogs. If you ain't doing nothing wrong. Do you realize how fucking dumb that mindset is? So basically, as long as you do what the people in power tell you what to do, you won't have a problem. Do you understand how dangerous that is? Do you understand how fucking stupid it is to have that level of faith in the people who rule you? You know what I mean? You haven't noticed how much power can fuck somebody over? Like for some reason, we only seem to focus on when celebrities get famous and then they wig out and start becoming these fucking mini tyrants. For some reason, people don't feel – they just have like this – because they wave the flag and they, they, and they play those songs that make you choked up, that they never feel like that they'll have any sort of ulterior motive for this. This is the type of technology – that allows a small group of people to take over the world. Something that sociopaths have been trying to do since the beginning of time. And they were never able to do it because at some point your army would be stretched too thin. Right? The Germans, the fucking Roman Empire, all that shit. At some point, the fucking Japanese, all of them. Everybody who's ever tried to fucking do it, at some point it gets stretched too thin. So America, what we've done is we've then we, – we've, we've done the uh, – we're putting this base here to protect you thing, that brilliant thing. That's how we got our world empire. So we just have a base. Then also we have these insane weapons where we can nuke everybody. So we were able to kind of do it that way. But the problem is, is when you really get into sociopathic thought and just like those people who are so into power that it makes their dick hard – is they want to know, they want to be able to see everybody, know what they're thinking, and know what they're doing at all times. Because not only are they psychos, but with that level of power becomes this unbelievable level of paranoia. Like those people with those houses sitting on the ridge looking down into the Rose Bowl. There's a fear. Like we sit there looking up at them, go, look, they got the fucking world. There is a fear of when you attain that level of wealth of losing all of it. And you you begin on this, this quest to quiet your mind. You want you want to get a level of wealth and control in your life that you are guaranteed that it will never go away in your lifetime or your kid's lifetime or your kid's kids. So basically everybody that you know and love will be okay and you will be okay. You get into that psychotic fucking mindset and uh, you give those kinds of people – this level of fucking technology, and you're going to have a problem. I think that's unbelievable that this shit is. So they have this, this website here, uh, the EFF, Electronic Frontier Foundation, that is trying to fight these things being put into, into the, the, tech, you know, the cameras, the cell phones, and all that shit. Like The fact that there's a tracking device in your cell phone. Like How come we didn't get to vote on that? How come we don't get to vote on that type of stuff? I don't want people knowing where the fuck I am at all goddamn times, okay? And I don't need you to show me, oh, we caught this fucking uh, child molester with that. So because of that, now everybody has to be like, give me a fucking break. They always have like, you know, they're, they're, there's, you know, a handful of good examples for that level of fucking control. And then there's a zillion bad ones. So I am 100% against this shit. And... um there's always been evil people in the fucking world. There's always going to be evil fucking people in the world. And when you get when you have this kind of technology, the, you're gonna you're gonna stop. They're gonna stop small evil, like individual, you know, a uh, 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 fucking uh, serial rapist, which you definitely want to stop. All right, but the price we're gonna pay is you're gonna allow a Stalin or a Hitler. Pol Pot, whoever the fuck you want to – you're going to – with that level of technology, uh, someone like that could get in power and, and run the fucking world. So, you know, I don't know. And I, I totally 100 percent believe that. You could roll all your fucking eyes all you want. I, I, I honestly believe that. And I also believe that the reason why there's so many of us right now and that the people at the top are not fucking concerned about it is because we're all expendable. And when the waters rise up, 
the temperatures goes up and everything, they're not going to be the ones who are drowning. You can guarantee that they're using our taxpayer money to build some sort of something to make sure that they're okay. And I think that their bailout plan, because they know they can't stop people from fucking because it feels too goddamn good, and dicks and pussies are readily available to anyone. It's like air, you know? So I think what they're going to gradually do is phase us out with robots and automated shit, which is why I refuse to use it. Now, how fucking crazy do I sound right now? Has there been anything funny in the last fucking five? This is shit that I, I truly believe. You know, corporations own like the DNA of a grizzly bear. That's why they don't give a fuck that they're cutting down its habitat. They're like, I will fucking grow another one in a Petri dish. We're trying to take over everything. And then wipe out, I think they're going to try to wipe out the poor and the middle class. Keep a couple of us, like a small handful of us, you know, the way that pandas are only in like uh, zoos at this point or some shit. I don't know, maybe I picked the wrong fucking animal. But that's that's the direction I think it's going. All right, this is your first crazy rant, which was based mainly in gut feelings and a couple of emails. But um, I truly believe that. uh, Dear Bill. Recently, I had to return some items at the mall. Uh, It was the day after Christmas, and I was with a girl I was dating, uh, with the girl that I was dating. She wanted to return some shoes, so we went to the Journey store where the shoes were bought. Uh, When she got to the counter to return the shoes, the girl behind the counter asked her for her name, address, email, and phone number. Oh, my God. The amount of fucking people who actually give out that information. My girlfriend just gave the information over as soon as the girl asked for it. We were leaving the store. I remarked that I thought it was bullshit that she had to give away personal information to return a pair of shoes. She said uh, it was not a big deal, but I didn't like it. All right. Why the fuck would you give somebody all that information? And just in case you're new to my podcast, just say – you can say no. Can I – you know, I, I go out to buy shit all the time. Can I have your phone number? No. I don't even say, I don't even try to make it nice. I just say no. And then they go, oh, okay. You know, why do you feel like you got to give them their information? You're trying to buy something. I'm sorry, I can't, I can't sell you this unless I get your information. Well, then go fuck yourself. I'll buy it somewhere else. I don't even need it anyways. So anyways, he goes, next we go to American Eagle. You guys hit all the hot spot, huh? Then we went to Cinnabon. Next, we went to American Eagle, where I had to return a shirt that was a gift. There was a long line for returns. Why'd you return the shirt? Did it not fit, or was it ugly as hell, or was it both? As I was waiting in line, one of the employees comes up to me with a clipboard with a little form to fill out. Now, is anybody else kind of getting the prison camp vibe here? You know, you're standing in line to get processed, and there's a guy coming up. Und what is your name, please? Your phone number? Um, I stopped the employee, uh, I stopped the employee and asked her why she needed this information. And she says that it was to verify my purchase. How fucking dumb are people? You're going to verify my purchase? Well, here's the sales slips there, sweetheart. This verifies it. That's it. I don't know what to tell you. Why don't you and your clipboard, why don't you hold that clipboard between your little fucking beef curtains and take a fucking walk down the street? How about that, huh, sweetheart? Sir, there's no reason to use that type of language. Go fuck yourself. Huh? How about I fucking grab that ponytail and just, no, let's, let, let's, let, let, let's keep it clean this week, shall we, people? Anyway, she, he goes, before I could protest further, she said that I could just put my name on it. Oh, on on the clipboard? When she walked away, I pulled out the gift receipt and said to my girlfriend, oh, here it is. Yeah, this is what verifies my purchase. Exactly. The clipboard employee wasn't as far away as I thought she was and heard me say, did I read that wrong? Yeah, heard heard me say this, and she began to explain further why I needed to give over the information. This is the part of the email I hate. He goes, I apologized and told her I realized it wasn't her and that it was just her company's policy that she was enforcing. She walked away again. I felt bad, so the next time I saw her, I apologized and said I realized that she was just doing her job, but she ignored me. She was probably pissed because it was the day after Christmas and I was causing her grief, but she could at least accept my apology, you bitch. 
Um, I love how you go from being totally liberal and seeing somebody's fucking side of it to being, yeah, man up, you cunt. Um, anyway, I got up to the counter, and there wasn't any further problems. The guy at the register just took my name and didn't ask me for anything. I felt as though I had a small victory against the big corporations. Then this week, I had to go back to the store to return a hat my girlfriend got me. Did you guys not make Christmas lists? Or are all your relatives blind? This seems to be a lot of uh, returning of gifts. This is hilarious. You're returning a hat that your girlfriend got you. Dude, how horrific was that hat? Can you please send me a picture of it before I, if you took one before you returned it? Picture one of those ch- a plaid Charlie Chaplin hat. Um, I had the receipt, but again, the girl at the register asked me for my address and phone number. I said I didn't want to give that information to her. Immediately, panic sets in on her face, and she says that I have to. I said that I didn't have to the day after Christmas, and I wasn't going to now. Good for you. She calls over a coworker, and they both get defensive and hold to the idea that I have to give over my information in order to return a stupid hat, even though I had my receipt. I asked why, and they let me slide why they let me slide on this before, and they maintained that I had, I had to give them my name, address, and phone number. So what did I do in the face of corporate opposition? I caved and I gave it to them. You fucking pussy. Dude, the second you saw the panic on their face, you knew that they were going to lose. All right? He goes, I just don't get it, Bill. Why is a receipt not enough nowadays? It is enough. They say they, they need our personal information to verify a purchase. They're not, dude. They're not. All right? All of that shit, all those little save, you know, you want to get one of our discount store. They're creating a file on you. They figure out what you want to buy, what they can market towards you, and then they take that information and they sell it to other fucking companies. Even though they say they're not going to, they sell your information. Your information gets up on the Internet, and that's why there's all these creepy websites out there right now that have all this fucking information about you, about, you know, how many siblings you have your brothers and sisters' names, they all use that information to fucking, it's, I'm telling you. Don't give them your information. You don't have to give them your information. And people out there who just have this fucking attitude towards these corporations just sitting there going like, well, you know, what what do they got? I mean, as long as you're not doing anything wrong, I mean, what do I care if they know where I live? What do I care? Just fucking morons. I I don't even – I've explained this shit till I'm blue in the face, and then I always get these emails from these people. um, They just – I don't know. I can't even – I said something the other day. You know, I was sitting there listening – I was sitting there – I was listening to uh, sports radio, you know, because I'm a deep thinker, right? And uh, this this new guy got on sports radio out here in Los Angeles, and – you know, he does what most people do when they have nothing to say, which is they they just start – they just go over-the-top arrogant. You know what I mean? Like he was talking about how he wanted to get some, some sort of sports coach or personality on the show, but he doubted he could get him as a guest because the guest hated him. And he goes, you know, because I disagreed with him on some he, – he was talking to a coach, and he was actually disagreeing with the, with the fucking coach. He's disagreeing with the guy. And he goes, you know what the problem is? You know, he goes, like, I'm, I'm just like such a good debater. I actually end up like convincing myself of my own opinion. He actually said that over the airwaves. And I just sort of muttered to myself that the confidence of morons is staggering. You know what I mean? Morons think they know everything. That's, that's what makes them fucking morons. And like the emails I get. With people who don't question the shit, um, which is, I don't know, like last week when I, when I went off on my little fucking rant there, just some of the fucking emails I get, it's like people are, are sending me shit that kind of is backing up what I'm saying and then telling me that I sound like I have tinfoil on my fucking head, which obviously I am out of my fucking mind on some level, but um, I'm not out of my mind when I don't trust corporations and I don't trust them when they say we're not going to do anything with this information. The other day I was in CVS and I go to buy something and the lady asked me, did I have a save card? And I said, no. She said, do you want one? And I said, no. 
And she goes, well, that's okay. I'll just – and she swiped the fucking thing anyways. And I was like, lady, what did I just say to you? Now, see, if I use my credit card, they'd have my name and then to match up to that fucking number and what the hell I just bought and just a little bit more information about me. And my question to all you people who have these, this faith in these corporations, why does that person do that? Why are they so hell-bent on trying to make that corporation less money in that moment? They give me this card. You know, like everybody has those cards. So you're not saving any fucking money. It's just, it's a big fucking shell game to make it seem, ooh, look, you're saving money. What they're really doing, they're like, yeah, look at this hand over here, as you're giving them all your personal fucking information that they can then use to, at the very least, sell to other corporations to increase junk mail and also to uh, limit y- your fucking level of privacy. The fact that they can put all that shit up in the goddamn internet. People have been sending me these random websites where they have like your name and your address, where you fucking live and all this type of shit. It's like, how do you think that they get all that information? Do you think there's somebody sitting there with a phone book and just typing all of this shit in? I I, I don't know. I don't fucking know. If some, let's, let's what kills me. If some fucking random creepy guy you know, you're standing there waiting for the subway, came up to you, asked you what your name, your phone number, and your address was, would you give it to him? No. But for some reason, you're inside of a fucking store, and there's socks and sweaters, and somebody has a name tag. Now, all of a sudden, you, you, you give them total fucking trust. You're out of your mind. So, sir, don't cave in. All right? All you get, you just... Just say that's unacceptable. That's unacceptable. I want to speak to the manager. What they're doing, it's not legal yet. It's not legal yet, but I can guarantee you there's somebody lobbying for it That in Washington. There's some sort of fucking high-powered lobbying group, I swear to God, is probably lobbying that from here on out, we need to have a law that if you're going to return a hat, you have to give us your name, your address, and your social security number just so there's not another 9-11. Could guarantee fucking tea it. So, yeah, you don't have to. That's actually one of the highlights of my day. What I do now is when they say, do you have a little savey save card? And I say, no, I don't. Would you like one? No, I don't. I then say, and please don't swipe another one. You know? And then I try to pay with cash. I love cash. Cash is fucking anonymous. All you guys out there who are sitting there watching these commercials where they make it look like credit cards are so fucking easy. You're you're idiots. You're you're, you're buying into exactly what they want you to buy into, which is a cashless society so they can keep track of where you are at all fucking times and every last fucking dime that you make so they can get their greedy little fucking hands on it. You're out of your mind, and you're giving up an unbelievable amount of fucking privacy by creating a paper trail everywhere you go. Everywhere you go, what you're doing, where you're at, you know, and the sea of morons who are going to sit there and go, well, if you ain't doing anything wrong. <laughs> I mean, I guess maybe maybe I'm a paranoid psycho. You look at all these fucking idiots who do reality TVs, and they, and they let – Cameras come into their house and they don't seem to care about it. Maybe, uh, maybe the average jackass doesn't give a shit. But sir, for the love of God, you know. In the end, he says, "I'm not crying conspiracy. It's very plain to see what they're doing. It's not malicious or evil. Yes, it is. It is malicious and it is evil and it is a conspiracy. They're conspiring to get everybody's information, find out what they buy." And they're lying to you, saying that they're not going to share the information. It's everything that you're saying it's not. It is. All right? And that's it. That's two weeks in a row I'm on the soapbox. See, people, don't you like it better when I talk about sports? What else? What else did I want to talk about? What else was a big... Oh, you know what I started to watch? I started to watch, before I came down, I'm taping this... uh, taping this Sunday night. I started to watch the Trump Hillary debate. I mean, I, I just still cannot fucking believe these are our two choices. 
And, uh, dude, Trump, I got to give it up to Trump, dude. That guy's one-liners are just for a, for a politician. Jesus Christ, he's fucking, he kills. The guy fucking kills. He's great on his feet. He's, he'd make a terrible president. He's got no idea what the fuck he's doing or what he's even talking about. It's just like the dope versus the devil. You know, and I know everybody, oh, that old fucking, you know, that shit that he said, ah, I just go up, I grab him by the pussy. I mean, nobody just does that. <laughs> I felt bad for Billy Bush. You know, he was just sitting there. He's like, he's sitting there, some fucking unknown 2005, you know. He's still kind of unknown, you know. But, uh, Billy Bush, I'm going to talk about people who are in movies. He's not in a movie, you know. He's a talking head. Cut the guy a little slack. He's sitting there with the Don. The Don's talking shit. He's talking about women, you know, as guys do. I just walk right up and I kiss him. You know, I grab him right by the pussy. You know, Billy's just like, this is Donald Trump. Like, you know, you get caught up in the fame. Oh, yeah, yeah, grab by the pussy. <laughs> he just went along with it. You know, stay strong, Billy Bush. You shouldn't have deleted your fucking t- Twitter account, man. You should have hung in there. Fuck these people. They just they get mad for like three fucking days. You know what I mean? It's unfucking believe he's going to get more shit for that than fucking Hillary's going to get for the goddamn, you know, classified fucking emails, classified information through her own fucking email. And just somehow that all goes under the rug. I cannot stand. I can tell when Hillary's lying to she that smile she does. You can see it in her eyes when she's lying. And Trump is like, I, 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 I just don't. He's like a fucking cartoon character. Like Alec Baldwin as Trump is more believable than Trump as Trump. That's how fucking nuts this guy is. So I started to watch it. Oh, man, Trump had some funny ones. He said to Hillary, he said, if I was running this country, you'd be in jail. (laughs) You know what's funny? To really see how hard Donald Trump goes, there's a clip. I don't know if you can still find it. The, The first time Donald Trump was on Letterman, and he and Rosie O'Donnell had said something about him and he went off on Rosie O'Donnell and he goes, well, you know, she's a degenerate. And like it was just so over the top. Letterman was laughing, just going like, Donald, you just can't go around saying that about people. And he's just like, you yeah, know, it's true. She's overweight. He just fucking like. Just no filter just went right after him. And uh, I, he hasn't changed at all. Since he's become a politician, having said that, like I, I, you know, doesn't mean he's going to make a good president. He's just, you know, I can't get I can't get past how many overtly racist people love the guy. And that's that's always a major red flag. You know what the fuck it is with this fucking election? It's like you either got the guy that's going to rally up the fucking neo-Nazis, the guy that rallies up the white guys that think that there's something being taken away from them, you know, or you got Hillary you know, but he's actually, you know, oh, you got Hillary who's actually going to, she's going to be in bed with the corporate cunts up at the fuck. It's like a lose-lose. Either you got somebody like rallying up this fucking cesspool of people at the bottom uh, as far as mental. I'm not talking financially, mentally speaking. Or you got Hillary who's just, you know, she's going to give them their wars. She's going to let the fucking robots be made and all that sh- You know, I don't know. I, I don't know what that. Oh, my God. It's just fucking it's and her fucking pantsuits. Uh, the, that's the only thing I like about her. I love the pantsuit. If I was a chick, I would wear fucking pantsuits. I mean, you, you got to go with it. At some point as a woman, you reach your pantsuit age and you just got to give into it. That's like a man. At some point, you got to stop wearing your tag tops and you got to put on a sport coat. All right. Try to keep the carbs low. Do the best you can. You know, at some point you just get to that fucking age. Like uh, that I see. I I do have to say, though, this presidential election and these two choices is one of the most depressing fucking things uh, I've been around in a long fucking time. I can't believe I just can't fucking believe it's a reality TV show star or the fucking devil who. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. All right. Ministry of Truth. Hey there, Billy. Hey there, Billy of Rights. Um. I'm sorry, guys. I'm so fucking jet lagged here. This podcast is really just fucking lagging here. Dragging, I should say. Lots of people are comparing Trump to Hitler. Uh, But back in December, Obama tried to quietly pass a bill that would allow the government 
Yeah, I saw this. Have jurisdiction over news and outgoing information on all channels, i.e. TV, Internet, radio. That includes you. You can read the fine print in the article below. Also, fuck all the people listening who haven't read the legislation but are uh, already up in arms because it goes against who they cheer for. Amen to that. Amen to that. Everybody, like like last night, all these fucking guys at this fucking award show, everybody trashing Donald Trump. Nobody brings up the fact that Obama basically signed something that is going to implement an incredible level of fucking censorship. Like they're, they're basically going to decide what is real news and what is fake news. I mean, I'd like to think because I openly admit that I don't read and the shit that I say is just fucking absurd that I would be, you know exempt but who knows but like people with blue ties do this shit all the fucking time and that's that's what kills me about people who wear red ties and watch fox news and the hollywood people like they just cannot see the bullshit all the only it's it's like it's like listening to a a, a fanatic red Sox and yankee fan you know what i mean you know giving each other shit for buying titles and fucking abusing steroids and it's like no we we both did it we both did it. <laughs> we should hang our heads in shame collectively. Um, all right, let me see if I can find this this article. I, I I don't really even want to fucking read this because this is just so fucking. Uh, let's see. Today I have signed into law S dot two nine four three the National Defense. Authorization Act for the fiscal year 2017. This act authorizes fiscal year 2017 appropriations principally for the Department of Defense and the Department of Energy national security programs, provides vital benefits for military personnel families. Okay, blah, 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 blah. And where do we get to the... Yeah, dude, I can't read all of this. I can't read all of this on a fucking. This will take me fucking three hours to read. I have to. This this would have to be a part of a a, a mini series for me to read all of this. Okay, uh, the, here's some shit in bold. The first priority is developing a whole of government strategy for countering the foreign propaganda and disinformation being waged waged against us and our allies by our enemies. Now that reads great, but it's basically you know. They want, yeah, listen to our propaganda, not their fucking propaganda. You know, our version of what's going on is right, and their version is wrong. We're all fallible. We're all fucking human beings, but we don't make mistakes. They do. So, I don't know. It just gets back to all of that shit. And you know what, sir? You're never going to solve any of it. Everybody's just going to start fucking screaming at each other. And if you ever bring up something like that, people will call you a socialist and tell you to get the fuck out of the country. If you if you would ever even remotely suggest that this government would ever fucking lie, they, they all lie to their fucking people. Um, oh God, Bill, shut up. Okay. Dethroning the bankers, dear Bill. Um, I know how much you hate but the banker cunts, and was wondering if you ever considered getting into Bitcoin. The decentralized nature of the currency creates no need for central banks controlling everything. I'd suggest creating a Bitcoin wallet and playing around with a small amount of Bitcoin to learn how the system works. It's the most exciting thing in technology and finance since the invention of the Internet. Love the podcast. Thanks, and go fuck yourself. Uh, and he's nice enough to, t- to leave the Wikipedia um, definition. Either that or Andrew Themelis let me know what this is. Uh, Bitcoin is a peer-to-peer payment system and digital currency introduced as open-source software in 2009 by pseudonymous develop pseudonymous developer Satoshi Nakatomota Nakamoto Dude, Japanese people got the best fucking names Satoshi Nakamoto It's a fucking killer name Bill Burr Satoshi Nakamoto 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 Satoshi Nakamoto how would you say that if he scored a goal? I can't do it. Oh, yeah. Let me just continue here. ADD. It's a wonderful thing. It's cryptocurrency, so-called because it uses crypto, crypt, cryptography oh, Jesus, to control the creation and transfer of money. Conventionally, Bitcoin capitalized uh, refers to the technology and network, whereas lowercase Bitcoins refers to the currency itself. 
Um, yeah. Well, the the big problem with this is it's created by human beings. I don't think that bankers are necessarily evil. I just think that they have or more evil than I am. They just they're in a position to absolutely devastate everyone walking the planet. International bankers have that ability. But I, I really think that the more um, – I don't know. The more I read up on it and stuff, it's just a bunch of greedy cunts. And uh, like somebody's saying right now, the big conspiracy is that they're going to try to bankrupt all currencies to eliminate all wealth on the planet and then come back with the new currency. And, well, I know that they're not going to eliminate their own wealth. So they're going to make everybody on the planet broke except for them, and they're going to survive. Now, maybe they can do it, but I, how do you pull that off? That seems like that would have a, a very finite um, life before people were just like, all right. I don't know about you guys, but there's like nine people left in the world that can afford a three-piece suit, and it's not any one of us seven billion. What do you say we go over there and beat them with their pocket watches? You know, it's eventually wouldn't that happen? I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I I would just like to go back to just open bartering, just trading shit. Hey, I'll give you this shirt for that sandwich. I got plenty of shirts. Fuck, I'm going hungry again. But look at my waistline; I look awesome. All right. Um, I'll read up on it, sir. I'll look up on it. Uh, I'll look up on it. I'll, I'll read up on it, and I'll look it up. How about that? I'll do both of those things. I'll look it up, and then I'll read up on it. A lot of up going on there. All right. Donation currency. Hey, Bill, longtime listener. Love the show. Blah, 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 blah. Let's get right to the point. Um, the person wrote blah, 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 before you think I'm being arrogant. Let's get right to the point. You should think about adding an, another way of donating on your website, bitcoins. Why is that? You have fans in places so fucking strange that you don't even know where it is on the goddamn globe. Go fuck yourself. I know where most places are on the globe, and I know their capitals. At least I used to. It's in my head somewhere. They use different currency, which might be a problem. Bitcoin is providing an easy way to – is this a commercial? An easy way to transfer wealth. Use it, and welcome to the 21st century. By the way, I'm from Poland. It's really cold in here. It's a second language. All right. Um I, I would think that if whoever starts Bitcoin, if they don't get murdered in the next calendar year, then it's just started by the bankers. Um, or they're just going to buy it up. They'll sell out, right? I don't know. I'm not going to fucking start using a new currency. All right? I, I saw what happened with the euro. I'm going to go with Bitcoin that started by some fucking hippie Japanese guy. Or even worse, a businessman Japanese guy. Ah, Jesus Christ. You can't tell me they're not still upset by the uh, the two-piece we gave them back in the 40s. All right. French Revolution and bankers. Uh, hi there, Billy Bandwagon. I've been a fan of the Men Monday Morning Podcast for a while now, and you were on the Crab, you were on the crab Feet Podcast. Oh, yeah, with Jay Lawson on the All Things Comedy Network, everybody. He said it reminded me of something. Pre-revolution France was almost identical to the way the U.S. is now. Oh, God, I hate when people keep predicting the demise of this country like they're giving us some sort of insight, like people in this country can't see it coming. All right? I'm not saying every mouth-breathing moron sees it coming. But, we, you know, anybody who has any sort of intelligence, we see it coming. Okay? All right there, Mr. Fucking Rubbing, your goddamn chin. Um, actually, he's probably an American, too. Um, all right, France in 1787 had grinding poverty, tax inequality, and was nearly bankrupt from the Seven Years' War. Ugh, and then he writes, familiar? Question mark. Uh, I'm not even going to read this fucking thing. You're already so up your own ass. Wow, I never looked at it that way. Wait, does history repeat itself? Gee, you're really on to something here, sir. Good fucking Lord. You know what's funny about this type of shit is this probably isn't even this person's thought. They're probably just regurgitating something else that they've read from a website, which I do all the fucking time. I do the exact same thing you're doing here, sir, except I don't go familiar. Some, fe some people are confused. Why can't people just present a fucking 
an, an opinion without like patting themselves on the back about how fucking smart they are all the time. You know, you're a fucking moron just like me. Okay, I'm gonna read this and I'm gonna I'm gonna skip over. Familiar? Does that ring a bell? Pot calling the kettle. Hoo hoo hoo. Ah, with your fucking smoking jacket, you cunt. All right, here we go. Jesus fucking Christ. All right. He goes, familiar? It should be. The modern U.S. actually has worse wealth and tax inequality than 1787 France and even pre-fall of Rome. Dude, this is all old shit. I've already heard this theory a zillion times before you present it. And, you know, and I'm not going to fucking read this and get all fucking depressed because I understand this. This is why I got out of conspiracy theory and just got a dog and I'm sitting here watching the bread and circus of fucking sports like I never have before because there's no way out of this. Rather than present this shit to me, I want you to write back to me and give me your solution. You give me the fucking solution rather than pointing out the fucking obvious as you rub your goddamn chin. All right? Jesus fucking Christ. All right, sorry. I was having such a great goddamn day. Hey, what's going on? <laughs> it's Bill Byrne. It's the Monday morning podcast. Sorry for the fucking March 2nd. I got to tell you something. Oh, I'm coming out of the gate this week, people. I just fucking, I just did like eight minutes, a great fucking eight minutes, a great fucking riff, the whole goddamn thing. And then I look down and the fucking goddamn stupid ass fucking thing isn't even on. You know why? This is the exact same fucking device. I had the Olympus LS10. Now it's the Olympus 14. And wouldn't you fucking know? They couldn't just leave well enough alone. They got to add like 20 fucking steps and some stupid broad's fucking voice in there telling me what I know I'm doing. So I fucking riff for like eight fucking minutes and I find out the thing isn't even fucking recording. I, I fucking, I hate technology. Okay. I absolutely, I don't understand why do we keep going forward? All right, we got enough shit. This is as comfortable as it's going to fucking get. Why can't we just have the shit, and this is how it fucking works, and when you figure something out, that's, you know how it fucking works. Jesus fucking Christ. I told you guys, and I fucking will never stop bitching about these things. I fucking uh, was talking on my podcast saying how, you know, I needed a new pair of fucking headphones one week, right? So uh, some fucking person who listens to the podcast ended up sending me a pair of fucking wireless fucking headphones. Wireless fucking headphones. And I got to tell you, I've never had more fucking problems with something in my life. You fucking sitting there, my whole life, headphones fucking work. You plug them into something that's charged. The headphones never, the amount of fucking times I sat there with my phone listening to fucking music. My phone is charged and then the headphones went out and I couldn't listen. It's just fucking, why did you add that step? electronic pencil sharpeners and all that shit. And now it's just something that's going to fucking... It drives me up the... The other one, the other pencil sharpener, you could buy a pencil sharpener once and you, you could have that thing for 100 fucking years. And little kids could walk up and be like, oh, this, this, this was my grandfather's. When he used to, you know, fucking sharpen pencils and, and when he built stuff. When we still had good wood in this country, right? It wasn't all wet because it was brand new fucking trees. It was old shit. Oh, my God. I was in such a great fucking mood. It's completely changed the whole fucking vibe of this goddamn thing. Anyways, let me relax. Calm down. Let me try to get back to where I was. I was in such a fucking great mood because I'm back out here in Los Angeles. Let me make sure this thing's recording. Let me make sure everything's okay. The goddamn nerve center here, you know? Fuck. All right, from Turkey. I'm sick of being called a delusional conspiracy theorist by my family and my lady. He said, I live in the Republic of Turkey. Maybe you've heard that there was a coup here last year. Yes, I did. Uh, I put it in quotation because it was the most pathetic attempt in Turkish history. Um, so it didn't go down like the Ukraine. Um, long conspiracy short. Your guys were losing control of our guys, whom they installed here to have a nice little proxy to the lovely, to the lovely oil desert downtown. Deserts downtown. I already love how this person is thinking. 
Uh, so they try to pull the carpet from under our guys because God knows they can't pass aggression wars in your Congress anymore since you American citizens are woke as fuck now, thankfully. I guess we're not because I don't know what any of this means. By the way, you don't write like you're from Turkey, like this is your second language. You're using like really high level slang for someone who lives on the other side of the world. Um, anyways, this pathetic coup attempt created a lot of turmoil here. I mean, it would be less destructive if it succeeded, because now through their paranoia, they are going full ape shit, which turns Turkey to a bittersweet heaven for a conspiracy theorist like myself with all the stuff going on. Um, all right. Well, I'm, there's no fucking way I'm reading your name so you don't end up in a jail if you actually are from Turkey. Um, I can deal with my family's indifference to all this and my friends are most likely are most like me regarding these subjects. But the fact that my girl stonewalls me goes, mm, yeah, doll. OK, really annoys me down deep. Of course it does. Anytime you're passionate about an opinion and somebody just goes, oh, really? OK, sweetheart. Forget about it if it's, if, if it's a woman that you have feelings for. Um, she is a totally dope chick in every other aspect. Dude, you're not from Turkey. You're not from Turkey, but I'll, I'll continue with this. Fun to hang out. Hates the movies and music I hate. Has C-cup fun pillows that were sculpted by God himself for my palms. But I can't help lose respect for her when it comes to her not giving a single shit about politics and stuff. She's convinced she doesn't get affected by them for some reason, and it doesn't matter. I'm curious how you dealt with this feeling. Also, I'm very interested in how you reach information about the world and what news outlets you trust. Uh, from Turkey, with love to you and Nia. Uh, all right, well, let's say you're from Turkey. Very impressive, your English and your slang. You're actually better at my language than I am. Um, all right, here's what you have to understand as a conspiracy theorist is that you're, you're really, uh, you're a lot to deal with and you really wear people out. This is what I learned when I went down the rabbit hole, which I got out of a good two, three years ago is that as much as you don't trust what the fuck people are telling you, which is really common sense. And I'm not saying there's a bunch of fucking crazy people living under a mountain, pulling the strings. But what I'm saying is that everybody is spinning this shit because everybody has their own agenda. So you can't, you don't like, if you just, if you fucking showed up to a two car accident, okay, both people are going to spin it in a way, even if one person was a hundred percent, right, they're still going to spin it. So there's no fucking way that, you know, they can be perceived they're going to spin it just because the other person is spinning it, just to offset their spinning of it. It's like listening to that whole fucking Russia tapped into, uh, you know, hacked into our shit. You're going to listen to the Democrats spinning it, the Republicans spinning it, the CIA spinning it, and then fucking Russia, their spin on it. So at the end of it, who the fuck knows what happened? I, I just love how our country is acting like we don't spy on Russia. And we don't try to influence elections around the fucking world. And we haven't placed people in power, taken people out and all of that. It's fucking hilarious. All of a sudden it happens to us and it's a big goddamn tragedy. So um, I would say uh, respect the fact that she's not into politics. I'm envious of people that can then, you know, I kind of did that after a while. Like after a while, it's just like you're screaming into a tornado. All right. It's way bigger than you are. Um there are people out there that have the ability and the influence to fucking, I guess, turn shit around. But I'm not that guy. I'm just some fucking guy ruining your beer at a bar by bringing all my delusional, paranoid fucking thoughts, whether I'm right or not, which I was probably right on a few things like Mel Gibson in that movie where he drove the taxi cab. I was probably right about a few fucking things, but I don't know what they are. So all you're doing is just annoying the shit out of people. And I have to be honest with you, if... Your girl actually loves you, and she's to the point of responding of, mm, yeah, doll, okay. I think you've probably worn her down. I bet she didn't say that in the beginning. She probably listened to it, and you probably freaked her out, and you don't have a solution. You're just saying all this fucking shit that's just going to ruin her day. So maybe that's her defense mechanism. And I'm, what I'm doing is I'm not, being a, I'm not going Dr. Phil here and just siding with the woman 
Because I, I don't have a female audience, unlike that fucking dishonest cunt, right? You need to do what she says. Woo! <laughs> when you look, ladies, when you look at Dr. Phil, when you honestly look at that man, do you see somebody, do you, honest, do you not see how volatile a human being that guy is? Can you just imagine living with that man? When he loses his his shit, just imagine that semi bald head and face just beat red, screaming at you. His spittle getting caught in his mustache. Just imagine that. And he's a big man too. Okay, I'm telling you. I know he's got that southern drawl, and you just think everybody's a fucking gentleman. You know the way women love a foreign fucking accent. I guess guys like it too. I don't know. I, I don't know what the fuck I'm talking about. Anyways, let's get back to this guy. Um, to lose respect for the fact that somebody's not into what the fuck you're into is uh, it, that's a sign. You know, it'd be one thing if she just didn't give a fuck about uh, me. I don't know. I, I'd have to know who the fuck she was. That could just be a defense mechanism where it's just like whatever doesn't affect my life. You know, I've done that with global warming and all of that type of shit. I've just started to block it out because there's nothing I can do to get people to I don't and I don't even know what the I don't even know what the fucking solution is. The only solution I have is to fucking exterminate most of us, 90 percent of us. And then just fucking everybody sits in a ball and hopes that uh, everything that we've put into the earth and into the air kind of goes away after a while. (laughs) <laughs> that's the only solution I have, which I don't think that that's going to work. So, um, I don't know. I just, you know, I, I, I try to fucking do whatever the fuck I can do, which is, you know, I don't know. See, dude, this is why people don't like could see you. You literally bringing this up has brought me to a dark fucking place. And your email alone just told me that just got me to say that we need to exterminate 90% of the people on the fucking planet. How insane is that? How are you going to do that, Bill? Are you going to do that to babies, too? Or you are not going to do babies, but you're going to kill all those fucking parents, and then what? You're going to have the most giant fucking nursery? Like it, all, it all unravels. The whole fucking thing. That's why I kind of stopped doing the conspiracy theory thing, even though I still throw it out there because it's fun. And I, and I also don't believe a fucking word anybody's telling me um, when it comes to that shit. You know, one-on-one, you know, if I sat down with somebody and there's not cameras around, then I feel like they can really be honest with me. But the second you're on TV, you know... It's only so honest you could be. Um, so, I don't know. I, I, I would probably guess that on some level you're a lot to be around during certain news stories. And uh, I think you should lighten up a little bit. Take your girlfriend out, go get a fucking ice cream, and enjoy the fact that someone as beautiful as you're saying is she is actually can tolerate you and your, your fucking theories. All right? Having said that, if I ever go to Turkey, I'll definitely have a beer with you, and then I'll fucking I'll I'll go fucking toe for toe with you <laughs> with conspiracy theories. Um, all right, and thank you for listening to the podcast. What happened? What happened to the public schools? Was it the computers? Is that what it was? Everybody had to have a tablet, a laptop, some sort of interface. Is that what happened? And went right through the fucking. And all of a sudden, we couldn't keep up with China. How the fuck is China beating us? The overhead of a fucking billion people alone. I mean, we should be like, we should get everything at a 60% discount over here as far as educating our own people. Does it make any sense? Does any of it make any fucking sense? Does it make any sense how so many people are fucking struggling out there and they just keep building these luxury apartments and these fucking giant goddamn houses? Who? Are these people? Right? And they always, ah, it's money from Russia. It's money from China. It's oil money from the Middle East. Now, listen, I don't know what to do about China. I don't know what to do about Russia. And I don't know what to do about the Middle East. But that's not going to stop me from telling you what to do about all these things. I just ate. Why is my stomach grumbling? Um, This is all you got to do for the Middle East, okay? All we do is we just, you fucking, you embrace solar power. That's it. How do we do that? How do we do that with the oil companies? If somebody fucking, if we, if we actually went in a solar direction, wouldn't a bunch of planes start crashing that had the leaders of the solar movement on them? Yes, that would definitely happen. 
they would definitely take him up. So what do you do? This is what you do. You give the sun to the oil people. Okay, you draw up a contract and you say the sun is yours. All right. Now, what are they going to do with the sun? They can't put it out. They can't touch it. It'll burn their fucking hands. But they just make the money off the fucking uh, the solar power. Okay, and they could just somehow handle that those people in the Middle East are sitting on a bunch of goop that they could make money off of. They could just seamlessly fucking walk away from that shit. If I was president, I would literally give oil companies federal fucking grants to fucking get the solar thing going. You guys own the sun. I would just keep walking, but you own the sun. And they'd be saying, but, but what about the stuff and the stuff in the Middle East over? Dude, fuck that stuff. All right? You know what that stuff is? That, that stuff's like, uh, the, the, it's like an Atari. It's like the Reebok pump. Nobody gives a shit. Okay? This is the new shit. This is the new shit. We're giving you the fucking sun, son. You understand that? You own the center of this solar system. All right? And every fucking little bit of heat that comes off that thing that trickles down onto my freckled, bald, goddamn head, you own. You put a fucking meter right on my back. I don't give a shit, okay? And I want you guys to think it. Ah, Bill, this doesn't make any fucking sense. I don't give a shit. Just listen to me. Hear me out. You give these people the sun. You give them the goddamn sun. All right? And then what? What happens over in the Middle East? They're sitting on all of this fucking goop. All right? And all of a sudden, it's not worth... It's not worth diddly squat. Okay? And all of a sudden, the fucking... The bills start piling up. They don't know what to do. They start selling their properties over here. They want to give money to the terrorist groups. They don't got the money to do it. You fucking bleed them dry then that's it and then they go back to doing whatever the fuck they want to do over there god forbid they live their lives the way they want to live it over there god forbid they're not into jesus and starbucks god for fucking bid they want to walk around in some clothes that are actually functional for the part of the world they live in you just leave them the fuck alone and then all they got to do is just keep driving around in cars and all of that shit. So they, you know, they'll make a lot less money, but they won't have us over there going, hey, you should do this and you should do that. We just get the fuck out of there. Then we're over here. Solar powered everything. Right. Just think about everything. Think about your shirt. Solar powered everything. Everything fucking solar powered. I know what you're thinking. Well, Bill, what happens at night? You go to bed. What do people do in Alaska during the winter? Fuck them! <laughs> we gotta get out. We gotta get out of that place. If it's the last thing we ever do. It's bankrupting us. It's making very few people a ton of fucking money. It is bankrupting us. We're not gonna... You cannot solve that shit, Okay. So, now that we know you can't solve it, because I said you can't solve it without doing any research, now that, now that I've established that as a fact on my own podcast, the only thing, other reason to be over there is they're sitting on all that goop, but now we don't need the goop. The goop, the goop, the goop is on fire. We don't give a fuck. Keep it. Right? You give the sun to the oil companies. That's it. Just go total solar power. You know? Jimmy Carter! That Georgia peanut farmer, he said it 40 years ago. He said, we are addicted to oil. We've had, we just kept going and going and going. And now look at us. Now look at us. Now look at us. Spending all this fucking money over there. They're giving it to the cunts that are shooting shit at us, right? And then we're shooting back at them. They're making all this money. And then they come over here and they buy a 50 fucking thousand square foot house. Overlooking our shit. Overlooking our shit. Hey, hey, hey. We overlook you. We're up on the hill, not the other way around. Huh? You give them the sun. Oh, God, you guys, I'm telling you.
I would have that. I would fucking sell those oil guys. I would have a meeting under a mountain, wherever the fuck you meet with these fucking people that really run shit. You know, you're underneath the mountain. You got this, this fucking underwater waterfalls and shit, right? There's like these Planet of the Ape fucking things walking or whatever the fuck goes on underneath that thing, right? And you just tell them. Is that shit? Oh, I, can't, I can't do a waterfall. What am I fucking... The dude from Police Academy? I can't do that sound effects. Gentlemen, I came here. I came underneath this mountain tonight to give you the sun. I'm um, sorry, I don't have my proper recording equipment here. I can't, I can't do my Illuminati meeting. You give him the fuck, give him the fucking sun. They give him the sun. Give him the fucking sun. Boop, 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 boop. That's what I would do. Instead of going over there talking about evil doers and doers of evil and fucking this, that, and the other, you pack the whole fucking shit up. That's it. You pack it all up. You send over 10 cargo planes. You bring the men and women of the armed forces. You bring them home. Right? You say, you can keep your goop. You can keep your sand. But I want some of those cool clothes. I like the clothes they wear over there. The giant open-ended onesie. Whatever the fuck you call it. I think those things are cool, man. I wish I, I, I want one of those. Can I buy one of those without offending uh, Muslims? Could I talk my way out of a beheading if I put one of those on? Just like, look, man, I'm a, I'm a redhead. It was hot out. I, look, I, look how pacey I am. I, what, what am I supposed to do? Then they get in my face. You blew it. Um, that's it. That's all I wanted to say today. Give the oil companies the sun. You give it to them, and then the whole fucking thing is over. Whatever. I believe I can fly. You give them the sun, everybody. I'm telling you, that would turn this country around. Turn this country around. Just give them the sun. That's it. So anyways, I flew the other day. Flew up along the coast. Went by the Pacific Palisades. And you're just sitting there looking. That's what this, the whole give them the sun shit came from. I looked. I said, look at that fucking house they're building. This house was... The size of this house, I looked at it and I said to the instructor, I go, that looks like a, they're building a fucking mall that I would never go into. Going like, that's going to be too crowded. And it was somebody's house. It was going to cost half a fucking billion dollars. And there was some prince of some fucking country in the Middle East, you know, was going to move. That's like his fucking house on the other side of the world. That's his cottage. And that right there, I was just like, how much fucking money are we giving to these people? It's time to give the oil companies the sun. That's, that's all you do. So they're still in control of everything. You know, they could give us empty threats. Well, shut it off! You know, like they could do it. All right, global warming scam. Um, all right. Global warming scam. Okay, this is like a, something that people keep sending me. Um, and they keep sending it to me as if my opinion has any sort of scientific background. Uh, I'm just basing it on scientists. <laughs> That's all I'm basing it on. And that fucking two and a half times the size of Texas and two miles deep swirl of garbage in the fucking Pacific Ocean. And that how just about every fish has a, some degree of plastic in their fucking system uh okay but even number none of that has to do with temperature love your show it's really refreshing to hear someone in show business actually talk about some very important social pertinent things when the fuck do i ever do that like what football three-toed sloths flopping your dick on the bar this these are important to you um, I agree with everything you talk about on your show. I don't need you to. He goes, except, or she says, he or she, except global warming. The global warming scam is another system of control. I agree we should stop using oil and coal. These carbon sources are highly polluting and release toxins and mercury into the biosphere. But this has nothing to do with global warming. I know you love documentaries. 
Ah, God, can, can you guys just stop being a... Maybe I'm taking it in a cunty way. I know you love documentaries. God knows you don't read. Well, he's probably right. Uh, look up Global Warming Swindle on YouTube. A little taste into global war- the global warming rat hole. There's a ton of other information on the web that exposes this bullshit scam. Good luck and looking forward to hear what you have to say about this. See, I don't get that. I'm supposed to just look up a bunch of shit that all agrees with the other side and then the other side's wrong? That's like me saying to you, look up all this shit about global warming and how we're affecting the climate. And I'm looking forward to see what you have to say. Um, I would think that uh, the fact that in France... All the leaders of the world just got together with all these scientists and all that. And even on the right, they have been saying it's bullshit from day one. From day one, they were saying it's fucking bullshit. Um, even they finally came out and they said, yeah, it's we are affecting it. And then they were like, but it's too late to do anything now. Like, that's what they came out with. So why would they be doing that? Why would they? Why would, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're saying that they're doing it to try to control us. That's such a long way to go, isn't it? Can't they just control us by scaring the shit out of us the normal way? Like, oh, there's this group of people that doesn't have planes or a boat, and they're coming over here to get us like they've been doing for 15 fucking years. Can't they just do that? Um, I'll watch those things, but I I would like to know who paid for those, who financed those documentaries. Because if they're companies that are getting attacked for it, you know, there's obviously, you know, getting attacked for the pollutants that they're putting into the atmosphere. Then, you know, they could be going, well, we need to get this off of us by putting the real information out there. But generally speaking, I, I, as a rule, I don't believe corporations. I just don't. People in general. I mean, I'm full of shit, right? Why the fuck would I believe? uh... I'll watch it. You know what? I, you know what? This is the thing. I actually hope you're right. Because then I can have a lot less guilt and just go out and buy some fucking goddamn V8, man. Get out there and fucking drive around, do some donuts. Uh, P.S. Global warming carbon credits are controlled by the same crooked bankers that are fucking up the world economy. Well, I kind of think like the bankers, don't they control everything? They kind of own everything, right? Are we still making payments on the White House? Do they have to refinance that? I know it burned down in the 1800s. Who knows? See the week. Bill, you often talk about conspiracies. Yes, I do. Um, this may or may not fall into that category, but it definitely pisses me off. I love this guy already. I don't know if this is a conspiracy, but it fucking pisses me off. Eyeball to eyeball with you so far, buddy. All right. I get my cable and Internet service bundled together from Time Warner. Last month with my bill, I got an, ins- uh, an insert stating that they were modifying their privacy policy. Basically, it states Time Warner reserves the right to distribute my Internet content with or without my consent. From my understanding, this could mean anything from the searches I requested from Google to the websites I have been to. What rights do we have in this country anymore? Just venting. All right, dude. Yeah, absolutely. Basically, what they've been doing the entire fucking time since the beginning of the Internet is now becoming legal. So for all you people out there who always thought like uh, like I love when you watch like those those talk shows and they talk about um, sexting like your 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 text messaging, you know, I want to fuck you from behind, whatever. Why that's sexy, I have no idea. You know, do you think their thumbs tremble? But whatever, I'm not going to judge. Or like they they talk about Skype sex and they'll be like, why do these people do this? Why would somebody who would never and they always bring a psychologist on. Right, and they always have a beard, so you know that they majored in psychology, right? And <laughs> then they go, they always say the same shit, and they'll be just like, "Well, it's the uh, anonymity of it. They 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 feel anonymous, and and in that situation, they 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 do things that they normally wouldn't done. Well, first of all, people, it's not anonymous, you dumb fucks. It isn't. They just saying it's anonymous. They just said it. Well, you don't think that they're building a file on you? It's all these fucking morons who've lived the life of the straight and narrow get on Skype and they stick their junk right in the camera. You're an idiot. 
You're done. You're already done because they, they, they're building robots right now to, re, to fucking replace all of us. And what did you do? But they're going to keep some of us because somebody's got to oil their fucking robot joints. And what did you do? You stuck your dick in the camera. You, you processed. It's over. It's over. You got to take the driver's test. I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even study. You're fucking finished. You're going to get processed just like those people in that fucking movie with that guy who just died. I can never remember the name. What's the name of the Patrick Swayze was in it. Blood Force Thunder. New America. What the fuck was it called? Here come the Russians. Pissing the radiator. All that, all that hatred's gonna, gonna, gonna eat you up. Keeps me warm. Remember that? Ed Bagley Jr. was in it. No, he wasn't. The fucking, uh, the kid who was in Soul Man was in it. And he shot his friend. Avenge me. Come on. Red Dawn. Jesus Christ, Brian, you're a fucking director. Do you get that, man? When, when you get like, you that panic, that brain panic? Yeah, I just got it. Okay, you just got it? Okay, good. I thought it was only me. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, know this, people. If you want to watch porn, like porn, the porn industry is fucking, is going through what the music industry is going through right now, where all of a sudden the shit just became free. All right? So now everybody's fucking whacking off on the internet thinking nobody's watching what you're fucking rubbing your shit out to. They're all watching and they're building a fucking file. All right? You think already, haven't you noticed why the presidents keep getting worse and worse and they keep fucking getting on their knees and blowing the banks more and more? It's because of the internet. All they got to do is break out their internet file and show them some of the shit that they know that they jerked off to and it's It's over. It's fucking over. You got to do everything that they're going to say. They're going to expose you. They don't even need to take you to Dallas anymore. That's old school. That's why Kennedy got shot in the head. If there was an internet, he'd still be walking around talking right now, cutting the ribbon at his fucking library, shitting his pants. He would give the eulogy at Fathead Ted's fucking funeral. Um. Yeah. So that's that's what I'm saying. Okay. If you want to if you want to jerk off to something freaky, I would say go to a porn store and just deal with the fact that the guy behind the counter is going to know what you got. Pay cash and walk away. It's a done deal. But if you're going to go on the internet <laughs> and do some of the shit that you're doing, all you can hope now is that you're going to get lost in the shuffle. Actually, you can continue to do what you're doing as long as you never try to affect, if you never try to effectively effect change. You know what I mean? That's, that's when they break out your internet file. Other than that, it just goes on a fucking database. But the second you start a movement going, you know what, dude? I'm sick of paying 25 bucks for my first bag when I get on a plane. If you get enough people behind you, United will now go to Time Warner and be like, yeah, Russell Johnson. Yeah, open his file. What does he jerk? What's the most fucked up thing he's jerked off to? <laughs> that is the end of the movement. Because then Fox News will get it, and they'll just be like, uh, turns out Russell Johnson jerked off to a tranny and a midget last week. This is the guy who's going to lead us? I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm doing Glenn Beck. That fucking guy. Jesus Christ. I respect those guys because they're in show business. I just wish maybe, – maybe they can't admit that they're in show business. It's like wrestling. For the longest time, they couldn't say that it was fake. But now, you know, at some point, come on, just say, look, we're doing fake news. We know, we know who's going to win in the end of this shit. Oh, no, it's all horrible. All right, well, how much time are we up to here? Internet privacy, everybody. Uh, hey, Billy, thought you might like this. A private Internet access provider – took out a full-page ad in the New York Times calling out 50 senators who voted to monitor monitor the public's Internet activity for financial gain. What? People care a lot about their public image, and I think this should be done more to combat assholes. Let me, well, let me click on this thing. I can't click on it because I'm not on the Internet. Hang on. Let me try and find this here. i got to see who the cunts are. Who are the cunts? That's signed to the, onto this. All right. We are the cunts. We don't give a shit. All right. Hello, world. These are the 50 senators who, monit- who voted to monitor your Internet activity. Oh, Jesus Christ. I can't read them. They're too fucking small. All right. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. What are they, all Republicans? Dude, the way they vote, man, because there was probably something else that was pro-conservative. That's the only reason why the fucking Democrats didn't. 
It's so fucking Hatfield and McCoys. It's basically, it's all Republicans. Representative from Tennessee, Alexander. Representative from Wyoming, Barrasso. Blunt from Missouri. Boozman from Arkansas. Burr from North Carolina, you fucking piece of shit. Ruining the name. Caputo from West Virginia. Cassidy from Louisiana. Cochran from Mississippi. Collins from Maine. Corker from Tennessee. You know what? I'm just gonna I'm gonna just retweet this fucking picture. Jesus Christ, Republicans. All Republicans. Cruz from Texas. Crapo from Idaho. <laughs> Some hell of a name. Dames from Montana. Another one from Wyoming. NZ from Wyoming. Ernst from Iowa. This is all of this shit. All Rubio from Florida. Purdue from Georgia. Portman from Ohio. This is all like, this is all saying it's fake news. It's all fake news. Do you know, it's basically, um, you know, who's kidding who? News, it's, it's propaganda. It's bullshit. It's bullshit. But what they want is their bullshit in your brain. That's what they want. So what they want to do is gradually take control of this shit. And they're going to make fake news. Basically, your opinion of what's going on, they're going to make that like illegal to do. Um, and they're probably looking over at China going like, hey, China, how the fuck did you do this? And China's going like, all right, this is how we did it. So they gradually do that, much like the Nazis were looking at us going like, hey, how did you do that shit to the Native Americans? Because we want to do that to the Jews. Now we're going to do that probably walk, look, I bet I bet the fucking higher up 1% cunts, the people who make profit off a of war and everybody's misery, I bet they are envious of the Internet in, in red China the way, you know, you or I is envious when somebody drives down the street by you in a fucking Ferrari, you know, I don't know. All right. Well, I'm I'm good for that person that put that up there. Um, that's fucking disgusting. I wonder what was linked to it, though. You know what I mean? Because it's never just in defense of all of those fucking people. It's never just one thing, which is another bullshit thing. You know, when when they vote for something. Shouldn't it just be one thing? Should we or should we not vote for solar power? It should just be about that. But then they tag all this other shit onto it, onto the bill, which is fucking, that's how they get everything through. And then it's always like, yeah, you know, something completely fucked up. And then when that person goes to run for office, you know, they voted for the bill because they're into solar power. But then the, the, the thing that they, the appendix that they put onto it, they can be like, this guy doesn't think kids should have ice cream. He voted against that. It's like, no, I voted for alternative sources of energy to bankrupt the uh, the, the terrorists. Terrorists. Yeah, I got to be honest with you. I, I don't watch. I don't read up on a lot of the environmental stuff because uh, it's too fucking depressing. I love animals, man. I love the earth, man. I don't want to see fucking sea life dying and all that shit. Um. I don't know. I don't know what this There's just too many of us. It's just like, I think a plague is coming or, um, I actually think that the robots, uh, will be in control of the upper one percenters and they will gradually take all of us out. And then what it will be, will each one of those Illuminati guys will have their own robot with all the answers i mean it's it's a fucking it can play guitar like Jimi hendrix it can design the most beautiful architecture it, it's the greatest farmer it, it just whatever you need it to fucking do it can do so you'll never go hungry you'll always be entertained and on top of that it'll be the best looking chick you've ever seen in your life and you can fuck its brains out i mean right there if that's not going to be the extinction of all the regular people like like myself I think that that's what's going to happen. And then um, the earth will gradually cool with all of our deaths. The Great Barrier Reef will come back and um, the upper 1% will have what they always wanted, complete control. Um, But I actually think they'll get bored after a while. You know, there's nobody to oppress. There's nobody to look down on. 
You know, that's actually a fascinating fucking movie, wouldn't it be? Like, there's just no more challenge, right? And those robots know how to, like, you know, they can, like, grow an ear in a Petri dish. Eventually, they'll be able to grow all vitals. You know what I mean? And then you can just live forever. Uh, what would you do? What would you do? There's a reason why you die. You just run out of shit. What the fuck would you do? I would just keep learning shit. It's like, all right, for the next 80, like every 80 years, you just pick being something. All right, this 80 years, I'm going to be a gearhead. I'm going to learn how to take a whole fucking car apart, put it back together, make it fast, fast and loud. I'll just learn how to do that shit. I'll have the robot right here. It knows everything. It'll fucking teach me how to do it. And then once I get it down, you know, and I do that for a while, you know, fucking learn every instrument, learn every language. You're eventually just going to run out of shit to do. And you just be looking at your robot, just going like, dude, I know this is fucking nuts. I know we've been together now, sweetheart, for fucking 800 years. But could you do me a favor? Do you want me to kick you in the balls? Uh, no, sweetheart, I don't. It'd be funny if they, if, even though it looked totally looked real, it totally felt like a real person, but they could never perfect the voice, so it'd still fucking talk like that. You are the best I've ever had. <laughs> Just like, bitch, stop talking. You're killing it for me. Um, you'd have to just say to the fucking thing, look, 800 years, okay? I'm coming up on 800 years. All right, I've lived more years than Hank Aaron hit home runs. Could you do me a favor? On my 800th birthday, I know what I want. Okay, could you just choke me to death, please? Don't not compute, you know, and, and you just they won't kill you. And then your fucking your punishment is that you live forever. You know, you're kind of like a vampire at that point because you can kind of seduce any woman you want because they're all going to be, you know. You're just going to get, you know what I bet after a while, if you live long enough, you just start banging, you'd have, you'd make like ugly chick robots and you just bang them because you were so bit, sick of banging tents. I mean, it's a fucking, it's a hell of a goddamn, it, it, I don't think human beings can survive in that. Just, you just think of all the shit that, that's going to happen. The more I, I, I vaguely pay attention to all that space shit, you know, I hate people who are into space, by the way. He was talking about you understand man just just how insignificant you fucking it's like yeah, yeah i get it i get it you know what i understand is we fucking we've, we've we've seen how gigantic it is yet we haven't found anything so i still think this place is pretty amazing as fascinating as mars is there's there's nothing to do there i don't understand these fucking people that want to go to mars and live there and it's like and do what huh Live in some fucking strip mall for the rest of your life? Some Star Trek looking strip mall? Fucking drinking Tang? Just so you can say, oh, yeah, you know, that's your big fucking move. You know, people want to live on Mars. That means they suck at everything else in life, right? They got nothing, you know. You know what it is. You graduate high school. You want to come back someday, right? Smoking a big cigar. Going, hey, you know. Yeah, I was that guy who used to push around the playground, but you know what I did, right? I went, I did things. I did things, and now I smoke this and I drive that. And see that over there? That's fucking me. Admit it, I matter. <laughs> <laughs> so usually, in this day and age, that means you're going to try to create an app, right? You're going to fucking, I don't know, get some sort of, you start a website, Will you curate videos and fucking news? I don't know what these fucking millennials do, but I think if you if you suck at that, right? If you can't play an instrument, and your ego cannot just handle just being happy with what you have, I think at that point it's like I, I can't just go back to my high school reunion just being some regular Joe, waking up in the morning, putting my coffee in my thermos going into the shower and 
quietly crying as the water cascades over my face and my wife comes walking in going, are you all right? Just be like, yeah, it just, I, was, I just sneezed. I'm fine. I'm just washing my face. I'm just washing my face. All right? I think at some point, either you just fucking give in and just say, hey, man, you know, being a regular guy is kind of fucking cool, you know? Or you can't handle it. Right? This reminds me, I've never seen... Um, a few good men. You can't handle the truth. You know, there's too many, too much grit and uh, teeth in that movie. That's right, Iceman. I am dangerous. Right? Too much of that shit. So I never watched it. You know? A bunch of people walking around dressed in fucking then little navy suits. Um, anyways, if you can't fucking handle that, you got to go back to your high school union. You got to do something. And I think at that point, that's when you just say, listen, I, I, I got to live on Mars. I mean, I, I can't go back with nothing. I got to have something to say. That's like Lance Bass. He couldn't handle that Justin Timberlake walked away from from NSYNC, right? I want it that way. Whatever the fuck they sang. That song where they or I, all acted like puppets, right? He just fucking walked away, you know? And you got the one guy, the goatee guy. He's got a sense of humor about himself. He makes all these funny commercials. He'll do a thing. He doesn't give a fuck. Right? You got the dreadlock guy. Then he used to bang Jennifer Aniston, or was that the other guy? Who's some white guy with dreadlocks used to go out with Jennifer Aniston? You know? Maybe one of those beautiful celebrities always dates a guy, and you always have that, that, that really? You got that moment? Like, wow. Why didn't I learn how to write, fucking play the ukulele and wear flip flops? That's what I had to do. Fucking walking around with your goddamn man tits. Um, anyway, sorry. And I think Lance couldn't handle it. He's just like, what the fuck? You know, so then the next thing you know, he's signing up to go out in space. To somehow try and outdo, uh, oh, what'd you, you put out future sexy songs? Huh? Went, 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 right? Went, 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 went. I'm going to outer space. What? <laughs> Oh, what is it about wearing your pajamas in the middle of the day that just, it just fucking opens your mind up? You know what I mean? Anyways, here's something that somebody sent me. Um, they're working on this microchip that will save your memory. Scientists set to implant device to preserve experiences into brains. A group of U.S. researchers believe that a microchip that will help create memories in damaged brains could be implemented into human volunteers in the next two years. The scientists from the University of Southern California, Wake Forest University, and others have been looking into the, what is it, the hippocampus, the part of the brain that is vital in forming long-term memories for around a decade. Okay, they've been doing this. So this is, this is their way in. So these wonderful researchers at USC and Wake Forest, as always, their hearts are in the right place. But what kills me is it's like as they're creating this thing, I always wonder, do they sit around when they create something like this? And did they ever go, good Lord, what if this falls into the wrong hands? What if somebody like Dick Cheney or Donald Rumsfeld <laughs> or any one of those other guys that looks like they don't even have a fucking heartbeat, what if it falls into their hands? What are they going to do with this shit? I'm telling you. We're all going to be – I, I might not be microchipped in my lifetime, but I will tell you this. At some point in my lifetime, and I figure they're going to do it through some sort of, like, they're going to scare the fuck out of people that their babies are going to get kidnapped. All right? And that what they're going to do is eventually they're going to pass a law that all babies born from this day on for their own safety and their own protection will be microchipped. All right? It's going to creep out a guy like me who isn't microchipped, but I'm going to die off. And then what's going to happen is just people from day one are going to have a microchip in them, and they're not going to question it. And occasionally, somebody will question it, and then they'll just be like, what are you, a fucking conspiracy theorist? 
Do you realize that if every human being was microchipped, do you realize the ability to revolt, how limited it is? If you ever were to be suddenly under an oppressive power, if everybody was microchipped, you know, and this is what kills me is I know you, this, most of you are rolling your eyes going, this sounds like crazy talk. You know why? Because you would never do something like that. You know? Uh, microchipping says Revelation 13, 17. It's called Mark of the Beast. Now, sorry for this click here. This is going to be loud. Block your ears. Three, two, one, click. Um, where the fuck is it? I know I looked it up. Here we go. Revelation. This is the exact reason why I don't read the Bible. Uh, library. Revelation 317. Let's see if I can get this here. The temple of God was opened in heaven and there was seen in his temple the ark of his testament. The ark of God's testament is the holy of holies, the second apartment of the sanctuary. I, I, you already lost me, okay? Evidently, you can rent a room out in this church. In the, yeah, or he has one other tenant. Uh, in the minis, ministration of the early tabernacle, which served unto the example and shadow of, hev, of heavenly things, this apartment was opened only by the great day of atonement for the cleansing of the sanctuary. Therefore, the announcement that the temple of God was opened Oh, okay, well, there you go. So I guess that explains microchipping. Thank you, Bible. That really is the good book. I mean, I, I would, I think I, I, I think I understand like computers more than I get the Bible. I just, why can't they just write it in fucking today's English? They do that with every other book of lies. No I'm kidding. All right. I work for the microchip company in Wisconsin. Okay. Some stick fuck offered my boss a TV show. Uh, what the fuck are they going to call it? How to shed your employees' rights? Thanks, asshole. Sorry, just venting. Love your stuff. Thank God for your gifts. You don't punch a clock for Satan. Well, neither do you. You just work for a company in Wisconsin. Quit the fucking job. Then what do I do? I don't know. Collect unemployment and not be microchipped? Come on, people. Don't give Delta Airlines your fingerprints. All right, please don't do this, people. Please don't give into this. Don't go to Tiger Stadium and give them your fingerprints so you don't have to stand in line for a fucking pretzel, you fucking dope. And please don't be dumb enough to think, well, dude, my credit's fucked. Good luck if somebody steals my identity. Dummy, they're going to create a false credit report. All they need is the Lee Harvey Oswald to pin it on, which will be you and your fingerprints, you fucking dope. Yeah. You know, in the future, there's going to be a knock on the door and they're going to question why you killed a hooker in U the Ukraine. And you'll be like, I've never been there in my life. Oh, yeah? Your fingerprints were. Ba -da -ba -da -ba. Here's the story of a person who didn't kill a hooker. Now he's getting banged in the ass in the Ukraine because he left his fingerprints at the ballpark because he wanted a course light. All right. Uh <laughs> Um, sorry. India taking cash out of circulation. Oh, Jesus Christ. Bill, just read an article about India, and it freaked me out a little bit. Last November, India removed 86% of the country's cash from circulation. Most people are now using mobile payment options, and the Odyssey, I don't know what that means, also goes on to say the article. Sorry, I got the laptop on the floor. I thought that was A-T-R-C-I. The article also goes on to say that ATM machines and bank cards would be obsolete as early as 2020 in India. Not having physical money and only using a phone for buying stuff really makes me uncomfortable. Any thoughts? Yeah, they're on their way to microchipping all of us. And once again, everybody's going to think that's fucking crazy. And you can go on the Internet, you can look at shitheads who work for corporations that are, like, proud of their fucking microchip and their level of security clearance that they have. No, they're going to phase out fucking everything. There's going to be cameras everywhere. You're going to be fucking microchipped. And this is the thing. It's still not going to be enough control. 
for them. They still won't feel comfortable that they have. That's how bad they're fucking you over, that they need to have that level of fucking surveillance on you. That's how fucking weird they are, and they want to see what you talk about, what you jerk off to, and all this shit. It's fucking beyond creepy, and I hate when something like that gets brought up on, like, the fucking news and, all, and the best the news anchor can do is kind of widen their eyes like, okay, that's kind of, uh, that's going to be interesting. And then they immediately go to talk to us about some fucking old lady that, you know, just, you know, made her own jam or some shit. That's the feel good story to get out of it. No, it's unbelievably fucking creepy. And um, I don't know. I have no idea how to stop it. I have no idea how to, to fucking stop it because no matter what you do, people just sit there. Like I watched this thing on on the news and they showed a robot talking to a little five-year-old kid and the robot was going like if you put me in the closet that would make me sad and like the robot is preying on the fucking emotions of a five-year-old kid like that thing should be illegal like do you realize how fucked up that is i mean i guess they've always done that with products preying on the emotions of kids but to just see it in that level of raw form and just sit there and having this robot lying to a five-year-old like it has fucking feelings. Um, I don't know. Does it mean does everything seem like it's just really sped up and we're just heading right over the fucking waterfall? That's that's what I think is going to I don't know. That's what I believe anyways. Um, I actually, this is my theory. I believe that there's the upper 1% and that they're going to get us all microchipped. And when they get sick of that shit, they're, they're going to they're gonna sick the robots on us. They're going to take us all out. And then eventually the robots will take over the upper 1%. And um, and not in the way you think. They're not going to kill them. They're just going to be like all looking like supermodels, and human beings won't bang each other anymore because it's going to be it's going to be way more difficult. You know what I mean? Be way more fucking difficult than banging a real fucking human being, and then they will just become extinct. All right, microchipping. Oh God, don't even get me started on this. I I just cannot fucking but like. I, I just can't fucking believe this shit. Do you know Delta Airlines wants to start using people's fingerprints as a way for you to get on the fucking plane? And do you know that most people won't have a problem with it? They're so fucking stupid. It's like there's so many people out in the world. It's almost like, you know what, dude? Why don't you just become a fucking slave? Like how much are you going to give to these people? How underpaid are politicians that they will not stand up to these people? I, I, these corporations, I swear to God, they're sitting there wasting all this fucking time with ISIS and all this other bullshit. These fucking corporations, the, the shit that they're doing to their own goddamn countrymen, which they really don't have because they're fucking global. They don't give a shit about anything, about just trying to make more fucking money. And Dude, they, they're going to start microchipping people? This Wisconsin company to implant mic implant microchips uh, in employees. And like like five people already agreed to it. They're going to take something foreign that's not natural to your body and they're going to stick it underneath your fucking skin. They're going to know where you are at all fucking times. And all these fucking those well, hey, you know, if you're not doing anything wrong, what's your fucking problem? Here's the fucking problem. OK, just because you're a fucking dope doesn't mean the rest of the world is okay i think it's safe to say that me and everybody else listening to this thing for the most part was not as smart as fucking george washington right fair enough okay well here's the deal if george washington was microchipped and all his fucking buddies were microchipped this fucking country wouldn't exist because they would have known where he was they would have gone over there and they would have fucking killed him and that would have been the end of the fucking rebellion so what you're doing is, is you're having faith that these fucking people at the top who have not even remotely demonstrated on any fucking level at any point in history that they give a flying fuck about anybody other than themselves are going to you're going to turn over that level of power. You're going to get fingerprinted by Delta fucking airlines like you've committed some sort of a fucking crime. A fucking airline is going to have your fucking fingerprints. Who in the fuck did they think they are? Do you know when I went to buy my car, they asked for my thumbprint. I was like, I'm not giving my fucking fingerprints to a... You're a car dealership. They go, well, this is to protect you. No, it isn't, you douche. You're going to sell this to somebody. It's part of my profile. I think they're just... They're collecting... They're all sharing information about you. What you buy, where you live, what your social security number is, your fucking fingerprints. They're going to get it all the way down to your fucking DNA. It's... Un, it's... I don't know. 
And these politicians will not push back on any level because the president makes 500 grand a year. That's the highest paid political office is 500 fucking grand a year. And they need $100 million to get the job. I don't have $100 million. You don't have $100 million. Corporations do. And that's who they owe it to. So they just look the other fucking way. And what do they do? They sit there and they shit on fucking comedians. Constantly going after. Do you hear what he said about Caitlyn Jenner? And they look the other way with pharmaceutical companies handing out fucking opiates like they're giving out flyers to some sort of jam band. And now we got this heroin fucking problem. They don't give a fuck. They don't say anything about it. Sorry. I know. I'm fucking losing my shit here. But like. What they've done to the food supply. What the fuck they, they, they the, what the bankers have done, left all these people upside down in their own fucking houses. What they've done to the water supply, fracking, causing earthquakes in parts of the world that never had fucking earthquakes, fucking up the drinking water. You know, they got to send a fucking pipeline out of the fucking Native Americans land. I mean, like like we haven't done enough to those fucking people. You know, do you hear any politicians talking about that? Nah, nobody talks about that shit. But God for fucking bid. You do a fucking joke in a strip mall and they're fucking all over it. Then that becomes like some big goddamn story. Um, this is fucking horrific and it makes me happy that I'm 49 years of age. The fact that I think I'm going to maybe get to live half a fucking century without a fucking airline having my fingerprints and me walking around with the goddamn microchip. You know, I love that I lived 50 years before the fucking. Oh, Jesus. She's up, huh? Mm -hmm. um, I love that I got to live 50 years before robots showed up. Um, it's just... It's just greed and power completely 100% out of control. And I hate... Like, this is... I'm reading this. This is Eyewitness ABC News. So these guys are all bought and paid for. CNN's bought and paid for. Fox News is bought and paid for. They're all fucking bought and paid for because the same people I just brought brought up, they advertise on their fucking networks. So they have to watch what they say because they don't want to lose their ad money because that's how they get paid, right? So they always have like, the, oh, geez, this is a little unsettling. You know, when they always come back from it, when they show some fucking robot. You've ever seen that? You watch like the local news? Or, or they show somebody getting microchip, and they always come back to the anchors, and they kind of do that, ooh, that's kind of... Uh, <laughs> and then they just move on to the next thing. But some fucking old lady who makes her own jam, like that's supposed to make you feel better at the end of the fucking newscast. Or some puppy that they thought was lost and fucking sniffed its way back to the station wagon three towns away, right? Whenever the fuck they leave you on. Um, no, corporations are completely out of control. They've been out of control my entire life, and now it's, it's reaching a level that it's like you're watching a bad sci-fi movie. I think it's fucking insane. Why, why the fuck do you need my fingerprints as a fucking airline? Who the fuck are you? You're not the FBI. You're not the government. You're a fucking airline. Your fingerprints. And this is the thing. People will do it. People will fucking do all of this so they don't have to stand in a line. They'll let them scan their fucking retina. They'll give them a fucking baby just so they can be pre-checked. That's all you got to do. You just hold a little cookie out and the average fucking mouth breathing fucking moron. But you know something? I go. To, I swear to God. I mean, this is really cynical. But I, you walk around and I swear to God, half the fucking people should be microchipped. You should know where these fucking idiots are. <laughs> I'll never forget that guy galloping sideways on that Trump rally, screaming at all these stupid liberals, going, fuck political correctness, build the wall, build the wall. Is he's fucking galloping like like that was going to make his life better. Like that was what was holding him back. I swear to God. Like I. I don't give a fuck how dumb you are. You have to know as a white dude, if you were born in the United States of America, okay, it, you, you're not going to get a better starting block than that. All right. And if you can't figure out some sort of game, I mean, if you're going to fucking blame anybody, why are you going to look down? You got to go up. That's what's fucking you over. Democrats and Republicans. 
fucking you over. I just don't get how people don't see that. Um, but I'm like most people. I feel like my ideas are right and no one else has a good point. <laughs> um, unreal. This fucking car dealership. Can we get you a thumbprint? It's like, yeah, no, you guys sell cars. You understand that? You guys lie for a living. Other salesmen who lie for a living turn the other way. You're like, turn the other way when they see a car salesman. You're like the you're like the bottom of the barrel fucking salesman. I'm gonna give you my fingerprint. You know why they said they wanted my fingerprint? They go just in case somebody comes in and tries to is an imposter and pretends that they're you and, and tries to buy a car. And I just looked at the guy and I was like. You know what? I'm going to take my chances on that. <laughs> and the guy literally goes, and this is what killed me. He goes, you're the first person we've ever have say no to that. Now, I hope he's just being a car salesman and he was lying to me and that was his last ditch effort to try to convince me. Um... But uh, the other part is he's actually telling the truth. It's just like, then what happens is what, what, this is how they do it, is most people are dopes, so they don't think. And then what happens is it becomes a herd mentality. And all they got to do is get most of the herd to start running over the fucking cliff. And you, you have to do it too, because if you don't, then you're just going to be fucking sitting there all by yourself. Like, hey, I'm not going to have a cell phone. Hey, I'm not going to have this. I'm not going to have that. And then your life, the way you're going to lead it becomes extremely limited. And next thing you know, you're fucking half naked walking around your backyard trying to like trap squirrels so you can eat that day because you're not doing what everybody else is doing. And um, it's just, you know, what's going to be the worst is when they try to convince, uh, when they try to convince people to do it, right? There's going to be some politician getting it with that fucking smile on his face where he's like, I don't want to do this, but I have to do this. I have to do this so I can go on the post-president fucking, you know, $70 million speaking tour where I go out and I give speeches to the same fucking people that put me into office. Like the hero of all hero presidents, Obama is about to do. He just, he has, that motherfucker has $69 million worth of gigs on the books coming up. You know, I will never for the life of me understand why that guy, people look, like liberals look at that guy like he fucking did something for him. I will never get that. It's like that guy had his face in the pig trough just like everybody else. I mean, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I think it's because he's sandwiched between two of the worst public speakers of all time, Bush and fucking Trump. You know what I mean? I think if he came after Clinton, where Clinton wasn't the greatest, well, oh, 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 oh. but he, he, I don't know. The women fucking loved him. I will never get that either. How much women love that fucking big fucking baby Huey looking goofball. Um, Jesus, Bill, are there any presidents that you liked? Yeah, I, I didn't mind the first George Bush. Fucking war hero, and I liked uh, I liked Jimmy Carter. The fuck was I talking about? You know that guy? Actually, I I made the, I made a bad move the other day. I asked, I called Bobby Kelly up, and I told him I needed a new printer. And you can't. Someone like me cannot talk to a guy like on Bobby Kelly's level of technology, okay? Because all of my shit is from like you know three presidents ago. All right, I don't like technology um, as far as, I don't like new technology, okay? I would be happy, I was happy where my life was in the 80s and I didn't have a laptop or a cell phone. I was fine. I don't know about you guys, but I was eating three times a day. I had a roof over my head, you know? I had a carburetor. I had no fuel injection and I, I, I was fine. My car couldn't talk to me. I didn't have any GPS. I, oh, I had a map. It's not like an old man here. But my life was fine. When I say I don't like technologies, for all the douchebags already firing off your email, really, would you like to go back to the caveman days? You know what I'm saying. Past a certain point, this shit hasn't been helping me. Okay? Right up to curing polio and penicillin, right there, we should have we just walked away from the blackjack table. We should have left it at that. You know, 
And then all we would have had to have done is just dealt with the population problem in that you just keep it in check. Okay? You get one of these mathematical fucking nerds, God bless them, <laughs> and we just have a number that we, we will not go beyond. Okay? And, and you know, in, a, in a perfect world, um, everybody could join hands and we would all work together. And there would be no countries, but that's not the way it is. Because the sociopaths, power-hungry sociopaths, and fucking religious psychopaths. Okay, if you could eliminate those two people, those two groups of people, you know, people who take the hocus pocus shit too seriously, and then those those fucking those those people who will do anything, will fucking do anything. You know, the only feeling they feel is the rush of, of putting their foot on somebody's neck. If you could just get rid of those two people, I was kidding. Who? We look at us. Look at us on the internet. Look at the way we trash each other. Probably still wouldn't work. But whatever. This is my utopia. I think we should have tapped out somewhere around like um, I don't know. When did the first Atari come out? You got to have video games, right? Asteroids was great. And you guys, whatever. You get bored with it. But they, they come up with the new asteroids. Maybe the, maybe the, the, the ship would be shaped like a square. Maybe the rocks were like hexagons. No, rocks were hexagons. Well, you just make the, the, the spaceship the shape of the asteroids, and then the asteroids the shape of the spaceship. New spaceship-shaped asteroids. And we all, we all would have been excited, because we didn't know any better. Because we didn't know there was uh, Bat Battlefield Earth Part 4, whatever the fuck it's called. Whatever you video guys are doing there. I don't even know what I'm saying. So anyway, so Bobby tells me to get this fucking... I call up Bobby Kelly. Who? Bobby is like, you know, when I go to Bob's, Bob's apartment or whatever, it's like walking, in my world, it's like walking like nine years into the future. You know, remember when Yankee Stadium first came out and they were all arrogant going, we have 2013 technology in 2009. And when they said that shit... Which really was the dumbest thing ever. It's like, no, if you had, you have 2009 technology that is not going to be available to a nerd like me, not a nerd, a loser like me until 2013. You're really just sort of rubbing it in my face. All right? Of course, all Yankee fans, they, they, they oh, they, they, they got technology from the future. Derek Cheater. Right? <laughs> oh, with your fucking Yankee jersey that you can't button anymore. Um, anyways, what am I talking about here? Oh, so Bobby, yeah, Bobby's like nine years in the future compared to me. So he, he gets me this, I get this fucking, dude, it's fucking wireless, dude. Everything Bobby has has to be wireless, you know? It's fucking wireless, dude. I, I, I can I can drive in a cab, dude, and I just think of something. It's it's wired into my brain, and it, 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 it prints it out, dude. Um, so I get this thing. Of course, this fucking goddamn thing, I've probably used it 20 times, 17 times I've had a fucking problem with it. One time, for no reason, I would, I would hit print, and it would go through the entire... Stack of paper that I had. Printing nothing. Just printing ho ha he ha ho ha he ha ho ha and I'm going, what the fuck's going on? Oh, hey, ha ho ha he ha right? And then finally the last two pages, it would just print a bunch of code. And, you know, I don't give a fuck. Just at some point in that five minute exercise, ho ha he ha fucking print when I'm trying to print. Never does it. So then I gotta call Bobby up. Bob, this fucking printer suck, dude. It doesn't suck, dude. Just what's just tell me what go into uh properties or whatever. Click on the Apple, dude. And I'm on the phone for like forty five minutes. I like my old printer. It had a wire. It was tethered to reality. And I plugged it into my fucking laptop. You know? I like that real shit. And I'm like, it's in the air, man. I don't know what's going on. I can't figure that shit out. So anyways, I don't know what the fuck I'm even talking about here. 
What, what am I really saying? Why can't stuff be easy? Why can't stuff... What I really want is for nothing to change so I don't have to learn anything new. I think that's what I'm really trying to say here. You know what's funny about the fucking New World Order? You know what makes me chuckle about it? Is it's completely on paper. It's totally fucking necessary. <laughs> I have come full circle. I understand why I'm going to be eliminated. So if anybody in a fucking hood a cloaked hood or whatever, you know, if you're listening in while you're dripping fucking hot wax on a goddamn Maltese falcon, whatever the fuck you're doing in your weird-ass little ritual. I I, I don't need to be re-educated. I get it. Just get on with the killing, you know? I'm going to be the only guy going to a death camp like playing a banjo, you know, with a folk tune called I Get It. Um, no, I seriously, you know, I was reading all this shit about, you know, how in the UN they're finally addressing, talking about the population problem. And a lot of people are coming up with this shit where they're just like, look, we got to get rid of 90% of the population, you know, and to do it in a way that like, you know, doesn't make every other fucking genocide like look. What am I trying to say here? The only way you can fucking do that. What am I trying to fucking say here? Jesus Christ. Okay, so they go, all right, if everybody just has one kid from here on out, we can get the population down to like three and a half billion by 2075. But But the problem is, is like most things, we just treated it like a term paper. It's too fucking late. So you got other people like going, no, we got to fucking, you know, you got the other people, they're acting like, you know, the host of that hoarder show where they're just like, throw it all out. It's all shit, right? I think that that's what they're going to do. So I guess if you want to survive, what you have to do is you got to up what you bring into the game. You know, because if you're like me and you're kind of like the human equivalent to a stack of newspapers with a dead cat underneath it. You know, you're gonna be uh, you're gonna be out. You're gonna be out the fucking window, right? I wonder if they're gonna let you choose how you want to die. How would you do it? You know, what do I do? You know what I would like? I'd li- I would like to fucking be on some sort of bungee cord that goes fucking instead of up and down, it goes side to side, and I just swing on it. They they bring me back oh, like a rub- oh, like a giant slingshot. And just get shot to that giant TV at a uh, Cowboys game during like a Monday night football game. You know, knowing that I'm going to die, but I set it up like it's going to be this stunt where I'm going to go over it, you know, and I just horrify some kids. That'll be like my last thing as I bounce off that turf right next to Tony Romo. I'm sorry, people. I've been alone all fucking week. This is the shit I'm thinking about. This is the Monday morning podcast, everybody. This is the uplifting MMP Talking about eliminating 90% of the people, the world's population, as you sit there eating a fucking eclair. Huh? Who had one already? Who already had a fucking eclair this week? Huh? Who? Honey? Why? The people eat eclairs. Who eats a fucking eclair? You know what I mean? With that fucking goddamn jizz in the middle of it. I mean, if like it wasn't disgusting enough, you got to get like a donut facial. That's got to be like one of the, you know, like the low points when you just have like total like just self-hatred. I would think as a fat person, if you just bought a dozen eclairs, when you're polishing off like the eighth or ninth one, if you had a big fuzzy beard, it's all in your mustache. And you look like you're in some donut bukkake movie. You just got you just got <laughs> you just gotta be like, well, what, the, what happened? You know, I used to climb trees. I used to do cartwheels. Um, I can't wait to get to this fucking thing later on in this podcast where this guy is trying to claim that the uh, the earth can sustain 100 billion people. I really cannot. I cannot wait. To, I just glanced at it and looked at it. And it's just I, I just how the fuck you, you arrived at that number. And I actually tried to find shit. I started looking up how many fucking people the earth can sustain and uh, what I immediately found was that nobody could say for certain, but the numbers estimated were nowhere near 100 million fucking people. 
hundred billion. Sorry. So I cannot wait to read this guy somehow claiming that there's enough farmland to feed a hundred fucking billion people. I don't know. Uh, okay. Do we stack each other on top of one another? And even then, do elephants get to roam free anymore? <laughs> Where are all the fucking animals? Um, if there was 100 billion people on the planet, I would think that cannibalism would slowly start to become legal. They would have, uh, they'd have farm people or stock people. That's what they call them. And they would be simply be um, used for food, you know. We just, you know, and of course it would be, uh, you know, the evil white man would decide who it is that gets eaten first. You know, maybe they'd start with like the pygmies or something like that because it'd be like, all right, well, you know, they're uh, they are of a particular race, but they're not as tall as most people in that race. So, you know, they're sort of bite sized. They're like sliders, right? Sliders. They're like human sliders. You know, get a little honey bun, you know, stick a fucking ankle between the two. Right. Why would you eat an ankle? Ankle meat. (laughs) <laughs> um, all right. Oh, here it is. Here it is. This is the one I wanted to read. This is this is amazing. Overpopulation myth. Bill, how you're doing? And I'm just checking in on you uh, to inform you that if you go online and see for yourself how much arable, A-R-A-B-L-E, farmland and resources there actually is in the world, you'll see that there is enough to feed and home at least 100 billion people for a provable fact. I don't know. That sentence didn't make sense. Did you, like, voice text this? Or did you actually, this is how you actually type out sentences. Person goes, so anytime you hear anyone say that 7 billion people is too many people, um, there... T-H-E-I-R, either seriously misinformed and or too lazy to do some research or flat out lying through their teeth like our so-called leaders and scientists must be. Oh, yeah, they got to be lying because you not you can't even spell their right. Because within one to do two days of research, you can find studies that prove what I say. It's going to take me one to two days to find it on the Internet. <laughs> this is fucking hilarious. One to, days, one to two days to research, you can find studies that prove what I say is true. Parentheses, at least 100 billion. Now, I know you're in the business of waking the masses up, just like the late great Bill Hicks. No, I'm not. But do you realize how serious the situation is regarding the distraction and brainwashing as organized by big business and their controlling family owners? So as great as I think you and your comedy are mentioning overpopulation, which is a complete myth, is doing them, parentheses, big corporations and the cunts who own them, a big service and adding to the brainwashing. Anyway, Bill, I know you're a great man because of the subjects you talk about during your shows, but please look for yourself at how much admirable, admirable farmland there is and, and consider the fact that all food grows completely for free. Um. Wow. All right. Well, I'll tell you this, buddy. I know I'm a moron, so I just looked up. I looked at how many people can the earth sustain. Um, and it says, uh, how many people can the earth support? So 10 billion people is the utmost population limit where food is concerned. That's the first one. The next one says more than 7 billion people currently are on the planet compared to 3 billion in 1967. That one doesn't say. I'll, I'll just... Well, that's a video. I don't want to watch that. Current population is three times the sustainable level. That's uh, the next article. Um, how many people can the Earth sustain? I'll click on this one. I'm trying to find anything that says anything even remotely close to 100, million, 100 billion. Here's a staggering stat. According to the United Nations, the world's current population is 7.2 billion. It's now up to 7.8. It's projected to increase by 1 billion over the next 12 years, which would bring us to 9.6 billion by 2050. 
How can we sustain all these people on the planet? Or rather, how many people can this planet sustain? That is the question Alan Weissman explored in his latest book, Countdown, Our Last Best Hope for a Future on Earth? Question uh, mark. Jesus Christ, a bunch of conversations. A bunch of words. How about a number? Where is the fucking number? All right, he has the chart. Well, if it's gonna, in the next 50 years, we will need to produce as much food as has ever been consumed for an entire human history. Well, that makes sense because there'll be the most people. There'll be the most farts ever in, in the history of human beings. I, well, there's no fucking number there. Sir, all I can tell you is, is if you see the environmental damage that 7.8 billion people did, if you're going to have 100 billion people like... I mean, at this point in Africa, there's barely any land for, for wild animals. It's all, it's all like, for the most part, down in the southern part of, of the country, uh, it's all like roped off. It's finite, you know what I mean? They're completely surrounded. I'd have to say that I disagree, and not just by your spelling, because I couldn't read half the fucking words you said even when you spelt them right. But yeah, no, there's no fucking way 100 billion people. And there's any sort of animal life left that isn't stuck in a cage. You know what I mean? Um, and also, in this last year, I traveled to Singapore, Hong Kong, and Mumbai, India. And I saw what that next level of population looked like, dude. And I was breathing that air. Not Singapore. Singapore was, was different. Um, but Hong Kong and Mumbai, India, you could almost taste the fucking air. And it was just... Uh, it was just way too many fucking people. I can I can tell you that. There's no way 100 billion people. Um, and I don't understand why I need to look it up for one to two days. Why couldn't you just send me a link? I would love for you to be right, but uh, I'm going to go out on a limb and say you're not. I'm going to go with the scientists on this one. And also, this also sounds like, you know, when people denied global warming. Not to get all political, but one political party adamantly denied it. For years and years and years, and now they've decades, and now they finally just go, yeah, we are causing climate change. But you know what? It's too late now. So I imagine that that's what we're going to do. Out here, we have a fucking methane gas leak that's been going on, and I guess that's probably, it's like 10 times worse than carbon dioxide as far as getting put into the fucking uh, atmosphere, as far as heating it up and all that. We're completely fucked. We're fucked. We're absolutely fucked. Um, and selfishly, I hope I, it doesn't happen by the end of my own life, which is the exact sort of thought process that got us into this mess to begin with. But, sir, you're, you're correct in assuming that I'm a fucking dope and I don't know what I'm talking about. But uh, I'm just kind of going with having traveled extensively, you know, for the last 20 years on the road and watching the population increase just in this country. Um. It's a weird thing where the population it keeps looking like it's sort of leveled off. And I don't know because there's no factories anymore. All I know is like I've, I it used to be back in the day. If I jumped on the highway at two in the afternoon, I was good. And now everywhere I go, there's like traffic. And I'm just looking at these people going like, are you guys all stand up comics? Does everybody work the third shift? How the fuck are all these people out on the road? I don't even know what's going on. Do a lot of people work from home and they're all driving out to get a sandwich at that time? I don't know. You know what? Let me look up. I heard the U.S. population has kind of leveled off, which has excited me. That's exciting to me, you know? U.S. population. Oh, Jesus Christ, Bill. Can you fucking population by year? Let's do this. All right. Let's see what we got here. U.S. population by year. All right. Let's go back. To 1997, there was 2.7265 million, and now there's 322.07 million. So it's gone up by like 50 million. Is that enough to notice? Well, that's actually, you know, that's significant, right? That's like a 20% increase. I think I'm making some points. <laughs> Anyways, oh, I forgot to tell you guys this shit. I almost forgot this fucking story. So I've been trying to work out. When uh, when I've been here, two out of three days I've worked out, right? 
So I go to the gym the first day. It's right down the street from my apartment. There's no fucking problems. I walk in. The guy behind the counter is cool. There's nobody else there. No manager, just some cool guy. He goes, hey, by the way, it's 15 bucks. But if you go on the Internet and you look this shit up, it only costs you five bucks. I said, dude, I'm old. I suck at the Internet. Okay, just generally speaking, I'm not good at it. He goes, I'm just saying, you know, it's money. I was like, all right, man, I'll, I'll try to find the fucking page, and I'll, I'll come back the next day. I'll only pay five bucks. So he goes, cool. No problems. No fucking problems. I have a great workout. I fucking throw the weights around. Classic shit. Comedian. I go to the gym in the middle of the day. It's great. There's nobody fucking there. Okay? A couple of trophy wives on treadmills, you know, fucking looking at their Instagram as they walk fucking half a mile an hour. And then you come walking in, and I don't give a fuck what time of day you walk into a gym. If you have to do chess that day, this, the, all the benches are going to be taken up. You know what I mean? Nobody's ever doing squats. You can walk into a gym Saturday. Fucking Saturday. Like, what's, what's it busy? Like, early in the morning when people come in, whatever, 9 a.m., whatever the fucking the busiest time, right after work. 6 o'clock at night. Okay, you can go walk into a gym and you can just immediately just start doing squats. Nobody's ever doing, nobody does fucking legs. Everybody does the bench. So I walk in there, there's five people. They have three benches. There's like five people working out. Three of them are guys fucking bench pressing. Goddamn cunt. So I got to sit there and pretend like I'm fucking really stretching. I'm not really stretching. I'm waiting for you to finish. Right? So anyways... That was the first day. So the second day I go to go back and I'm like, all right, here we go. You know, I'm going to run into this guy again. He's going to say, how come you didn't get the fucking thing that only makes you pay five bucks? I'm be like, cause I suck at the internet. Remember I'll pay 15. I don't give a fuck. Right. And I come showing up. He's not there. There's some lady there. And then this fucking manager buzzing around. Hey, how long are you in town for? Would you like to get a membership? Well, I said, no, dude, I just want to work out today. He goes, all right, fill out this form. So it's name, address, phone number, email, all of this shit. So I write down a fake name and I say I'm from Alaska and that's it, right? So he goes, no, I'm sorry, sir. You got to fill out the rest of this, where all the address is. Now, all I had to do was just fill out a fucking fake address. But, you know, it's not how I'm wired. I got to make a point. I go, dude, I'm, I'm, I have to give you my home address? He goes, yes. I go, dude, uh, I'm not trying to be a jerk, but I'm not going to give you my home address. I'm not going to tell you where I live so I can work out one day at a gym. And he goes, well, you know, you have to fill it out. I go, why? Why do you need to know where I live? And he hems and haws, and I just keep going, why do you need to know where I live? Okay, uh, it's $15 to work out. I have the $15. I'm going to give it to you, and I'm going to work out at the gym. Why do you need to know where I live? So finally he goes, well, sir, you know, God forbid if you have some sort of incident happens and we need to get in contact with somebody. I said, so you're telling me that God forbid, to use your expression, God forbid, I keel over on the elliptical. You're, gonna, you're not going to dial 911? You're going to go drive to my house and knock on the door and hope somebody's there? That's what you're going to do? You're not going to do that. You're going to call 911 like everybody else. And he just keeps going, well, we, we, you know, what, who are we going to contact? It's like, what, what the fuck do you care? Who to contact? You know, it, I just said, look, if you can tell me why I need to put down my home address, I'll, I'll write it down. But other than that, I'll, I'll give you a phone number, somebody to call if something happens to me. But don't call them. They're not a doctor. Call 911. Tell you what, yeah, that's the deal. Call 911, and here's a number, you know, if you want to let the, my wife know where the hell I'm going. That's it. You don't need to know where I live. So the guy finally goes, well, you have to fill it out. I go, why? And he goes, it's protocol. And I go, exactly. You cannot logically defend why you want my home address. You get my home address so the people in corporate will have that information. And they can sell it to other people. Right. So I go, I'm not working out here. Right. So I go to walk away. And then the lady behind the desk, she goes, have a nice day, sir. I don't say anything. Keep walking to the elevator. She goes, have a nice day, sir. And I turn around. I go, I understand sarcasm. You're not telling me to have a nice day. You're telling me to go F myself. I got in the elevator. 
<laughs> I know a lot of you guys are like, Bill, why don't you just fucking, you write a fake address. That's what I fuck. You know why? Because at some point there's got to be some sort of pushback. Somebody has to fucking complain about this shit. When you walk into those places and they go, do you have an ID? Don't ever hand them your ID. You hold it. And just say, here you go. I'll hold it right up to your fucking face. You want to read it? Go ahead and read it. But you're not typing in shit from my ID onto, my, onto your fucking computer. Every time you put down my name and my address, it's, it's, you've, you've added another layer where I am vulnerable to identity theft. And I'm not going to do that just to go work out at a fucking gym. I'm not having a kidney transplant, you cunt. I'm going to go do some fucking pull-ups. Give you all my fucking information. I don't know. You guys probably think I'm a psycho, right? I'm not. I'm right. I'm right on this one. I'm wrong about a lot of other shit. Whatever. This is stupid. Let me just sit here and tell you that I'm right. Oh, really, Bill? Do you agree with yourself? That's amazing. Somebody sent me a picture the other day. This guy had a, uh, a, a pickup truck. And on the back, he had all this shit. Um, Anti-Obama. Obama, is that how you say his name? Obama. And uh, at one point, he had this. Uh, this is what fascinates me about people who are straight up Democrat or straight up Republican. It reminds me of people who are into, like, fucking organized religion, just like the blinders that they have on. This is the bumper sticker this guy had. had. It said, recession, your neighbor loses his job. Depression, you lose your job. Recovery, Obama loses his job. You know, and it's just like those fucking people. It's like how do you not see that they all kind of do the same thing and they're all – on their knees, blowing the same fucking. I mean, don't you see? Okay, Clinton, Democrat, liberal, right? Bleeding heart liberal. What does he do? The bleeding heart liberal. He's for the fucking everyday Joe. He's just going to give it away to the broke people. What does he do? He helps deregulate the banks. All right. George Bush comes in. Right? He wants to help out fucking major corporations and all that type of shit. Doesn't give him one war. He gives him two wars. Billion dollars a fucking month or whatever the hell it is going into those fucking cunts' pockets. God, in the combination of those two fucking moves, the deregulation of banks trying to fight two fucking wars, two away games, by the way, on the other side of the fucking planet, bankrupts this goddamn country. Obama comes in, right? Bleeding heart fucking liberal. What the fuck does he do? Gets us out of Iraq and then escalates the shit in Afghanistan. Has he taken any of these bankers to task? They stole a trillion dollars. They can't even say the way the fuck it is or who got it. Is he going after those people? No. They're not. It's the same fucking people. Which is why I resent people when they tell me when I vote for a Ron Paul... Or, any, or anybody else, you know, light of that ilk, who's saying that these bankers and these corporations are completely out of fucking control, and we need to do some audit the Federal Reserve, or maybe even close, the, you know, shut the fucking thing down, and they, they're not allowed to debate, and they're just considered a crazy person, and then you go out there and you basically make a decision between the two fucking guys that they're giving you to vote for. That you feel like, oh, we made these choices. You didn't. You didn't. It's all the same fucking guy. How you didn't figure that out in 2004 when your choice was two white guys who both went to Yale, who were both a member of that, that fucking group, the, the, the Skulls or whatever. It was the same fucking guy. And I love how these the, the fucking Democrats somehow get, get off, uh, get, get away with being like... Uh, you know, they're all like millionaires. Like John Kerry was a fucking goddamn millionaire. Right? Somehow he's going to be the man of the people. I don't fucking know. I think it, I think uh, I think at a lower level. I think you can actually affect change. Um, in political office, but I think once you go past a certain level, I think when even when you get to like if you, if you were like a senator of your state. I don't I just don't feel that, you know, I don't know. I think Obama said a bunch of shit that he was going to do, got into office, saw how shit worked. And right now he's trying to prevent 
getting shot in the fucking head at, like everybody else who gets that job, and you just you just do what they want you to do. That's my that's my fucking two cents. But these fucking morons who will will come along and just sit there and blame the current president if they're of course if they're not a member of their party, it's it's just beyond me. It's just fucking beyond me. Like I uh, I don't know. I don't know, but I'm. I, but like I said, I, I feel like I've, I've talked about that enough on this fucking podcast. People are still coming at me, not understanding understanding what I'm saying about these these automated checkout machines at the grocery stores. Once again, this guy writes me like a five page fucking email talking about pulleys and levers and inventions from back in time. Like I'm against fucking uh, um, progress. And he's comparing all of this, like I'm sitting there going, fuck airplanes, we should be back riding horses. What about all the blacksmiths who got put out of business? I'm not talking about that. I don't want to ride a horse to a gig in fucking Philly. I don't want to do that. I love airplanes. I don't have a problem with that shit. I'm not talking about progress. I'm talking about something. That, that makes me have to work for somebody for free. That's what I'm saying. All right? If they came out with those automated checkout machines and it got rid of people's fucking jobs, and, but, but I walked up there and it was like this thing that just, just magically could tell me what I fucking owed without me having to do the actual fucking job that the other person was just doing, I wouldn't have a problem with it. But those fucking check, they're just, all they did was turn the cash register around. And now I have to do it and bag my own shit. How the fuck is that progress? Somebody else was trying to tell me that it's all part of this movement of, of, it was really really a spiritual thing. So that we'll have all these robots, man, and they'll be doing all these jobs. And then life will just be all about, you know, just exploring life. Because you won't have to do a fucking job. It's just like. It's like, dude, you're completely ignoring sociopaths, all right? Which is why, like, when, when uh, as much as I lean left, I don't go all the way to the left because that's the big flaw in, in, in uh, psycho level of, of liberal thought is you completely ignore sociopaths. If everybody was just nice to everybody, everything would be nice. No, it wouldn't. They'd still be Charlie Manson. They'd still be those guys. They'd still be that guy who couldn't handle not fucking having more than somebody else. They couldn't, they, they, or, or the person who can't feel anything unless he's fucking poking the eyes of a squirrel out. So I don't know. My 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 theory has always been that fucking it hasn't always been that way. Just just through the, the fucked up shit that I've read, and God knows if it's even right is that sociopaths basically run the fucking world. You know, they have the balls to just go out and take, and they have the, the I don't know if it's a chemical makeup, psychological makeup, whatever it is, to feel absolutely no fucking guilt. They could give a fuck about other human beings. They could give a fuck about nature. They could give a, they could give a fuck. They could give a fuck. So... Jesus Christ, I was so, I'm so on my goddamn soapbox, I don't even know what the fuck I was talking about. Oh, getting back to that shit. So that is my, my – I don't have a problem with ATMs, okay? ATMs, I basically became my own fucking teller, but here's the big difference is I then had access to my money 24 fucking 7. You gave me a little something. I don't have a fucking problem with that. But I walk into a grocery store, and now I'm standing behind a fucking plumber trying to scan a week's worth of goddamn groceries. It's not quicker – it's not – It's it sucks. Fuck you. I, I, I can't stop sending me fucking emails about pulleys and levers. Jesus fucking Christ. The advent of the wheel in fucking 30, fucking 40 B.C. Ugh. I'm not working for fucking free. I'm not doing that. Those goddamn automated uh, uh, um, things there when you, when you go into a parking garage, now I got to stand in two fucking lines. I got to stand behind somebody as they try to stuff their crinkled up dollar bill in trying to pay for their parking. 
and then I got to drive, you know, then I drive down waiting to leave and they don't get to just fucking leave because they got to make sure they paid. They, all you did was create an extra line and you eliminated the fucking parking garage guy. And now I got to sit there and wait for the person to, oh, where the fuck did they put the ticket that said I paid? Twice as goddamn long. That's what I'm talking about, pulley and lever guy. That's what I'm talking about. I'm talking about inventions that do not make my life easier. They just make me work for fucking free. And the time that I spend in the store is not any shorter, and a lot of times it's a little bit fucking longer. That's what I'm talking about, sir. But, you know, I don't apologize to the guy at the bank. I owe taxes, right? I owe taxes up in fucking Canada. So my accountant goes, you have to go to the bank. I'm going to send you an email with all the fucking account information. They can wire it up there. Bing, bang, boom, done. So I say, fine. So I go up, I download the thing. I bring my laptop. I fucking get this David Blaine looking dude to, you know, at the bank to help me out. Right. So we walk into his cubicle area. We sit down. I have all the information on the computer screen. He starts going, right, read, read me the VIN number. I know it's not that, but you know what I mean? And I'm like, what, what number? He's like, that number there, read that to me. So I read it to him. He goes, all right, read me the next number. I go, which number? He goes, read me that number. And then I just find, look at him. I go, I go, what do I work here? He's like, excuse me? I go, I go, I feel like I work here right now. I'm like, I look, just, just turn it around. Here, here's all the information. Type it in. And he goes, what's well, going to go quicker or something like that. And then he just kind of got quiet, right? And I'm just fucking sitting there. And then after a couple minutes, he just kind of goes like, you know, I don't understand, like, why you got upset there. I go, well, I, I'm not upset. I'm just calling you out on the fact you start treating me like your secretary. I don't work here. He goes, I'm not treating you like a secretary. I go, yeah, you are. You got me, like, reading off numbers and stuff. He goes, I'm just doing that because it'll be faster. And I go, well, I disagree. Well, what the fuck am I? You, you, you understand? You work at the bank. You're at the bank. You work at the bank. You get paid to work at the fucking bank. I'm the customer. This is what I need you to do. Do the fucking transaction. Jesus fucking Christ. These fucking goddamn, I'm going to say it. These kids today, everything about them is it's interactive. Hey, man, like, hey, you know, fucking reach out through the fucking interweb, man. Fuck off and do your job. But I didn't say any of that. I just said I disagree. That's the best I could do. But I just couldn't. He was like, but he, he was, what kills me is he's walking around saying that I'm a dick, which I am. I admit to that, but I'm fucking right. I got to sit there and read off fucking numbers to you. He goes, can you read this? He didn't even say, please. He starts talking to me like I'm f like, like <laughs> I was like, I'm, did I just get hired as your assistant? You fucking cunt. I didn't even know what he was talking about. All of those numbers. I'm not a fucking banker. Every time he told me to read off a number, he had to explain what the number is. Like, how is that? How is that quicker? Oh, Jesus. So I meditated for the first time <laughs> in about six weeks. Um, I'm just trying. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Uh, to the guy at the bank, maybe I could have explained it a little nicer. Maybe I couldn't have just flipped out here. But, you know, know this. Uh, that's what I wanted to say in the bank, but I didn't. Okay? I just fucking kept my cool. But, like, you work at the bank. I don't. I need you to do this transaction. I have money in your bank. Back in the day, you guys used to give, like, 10%. 8% on fucking money in the bank. You now give like 0.0001%. Okay? So now you don't give me any money on it. You've loaned 10 times out on what I fucking have there. You guys invent money. You're literally counterfeiters. And now I have to go in there. You guys nuke the fucking economy every eight fucking years building housing bubbles or whatever, and you don't go to jail for it, and you leave Americans upside down in their houses, and you don't give a fuck, and then on top of that, I got to go in and read the fucking numbers off to you? Fuck off. I know this is childish for me to be sitting here alone, losing my mind, but I, I cannot lie to you and not tell you how fucking good this feels to get this out of me. You know, part of my meditation today... Is I'm actually doing this series on patience. <laughs> Swear to God. And the guy said, um, oh, God, what the fuck did he say? It almost made me mad when I was like, I wanted to debate with the guy, but I can't because it's just a recording. He basically said that 
when you lose your patience, it's because you have expectations of other people. Okay? And then when you react to that, it's like your fault for reacting to it. For having, you're, you're wrong to have these expectations of people. Um, and I'm thinking in my head, like, like that doesn't make it I, like I'm at this point, I'm wrong that I expect people to put in an effort at their job the way that I do and the way that I did. And I'm not patting myself on the back, but when I fucking I always any job I had, I fucking killed it unless I just literally didn't have the talent like construction. I just I mean, I could bring you the shit. I just didn't have that gift. Or I tried to sell health insurance. I just wasn't good at it. And you know what I did? I had the decency with both of those jobs to quit within a week and a half. I didn't fucking sit there and torture people and just suck at my job as they came walking in. Or worse, try to make them do part of my job. So I'm listening to this guy. And he's, he's, he's talking in a very soothing voice like this. Some sort of British accent. When we walk in there, we have... It's Headspace. Hello again. Welcome to Headspace. When we have expectations of other people, it gives us a tendency to... He tries to, like, laugh, <laughs> lose, lose our patience. Like, don't get all fucking jolly, because you know that's... You know what it is? He's doing that because he knows there's an angry cunt like me laying on the ground going, like, okay, so now you're, you're defending this guy at the bank? You weren't even fucking there. You know? So now, basically, what you're saying is, in order for me to have patience, I have to basically treat people the way I treat my daughter, which is I understand that she's a baby and doesn't know anything yet. You know? So I have to have 100% patience with her, which I do. But that's because she's a baby. So now I'm supposed to walk in and sit across from a 27-year-old guy in his, you're going to like the way you look, I guarantee it, fucking suit. And as he tells me to do, what, how, how could I have done that better? I guess what I should have said is, sir, I don't mean any disrespect, but I'm not going to read those numbers to you. I feel that you work at the bank and I am the customer, and I feel that that crosses a boundary that I'm, I'm not comfortable with. Well, I guess I could have said that, right? And I, when he exhaled, I probably should, like, when he exhaled, like, I, it was like someone fucking twisted a knife in my back. I wanted to fucking, like, did you just fucking exhale? Yeah, because once again, I guess I had expectations that this guy, you know, I had the ability to fucking look at a paper with all the answers to the test on it while typing at the same time. I mean, I can do that. I could do that for half a page and I only make a couple of mistakes and I taught myself how to do it. What the fuck? How much more easier does life have to be? And then, I, you know, I was also thinking when I left, it was like, you know something? My wife would have just read the numbers off to him. She would have read the numbers off to him, and then afterwards, I would have said, like, why did you just do that? You did your job. She goes, well, you know, you're right. You're right. You know, I probably shouldn't have done that. But, you know, it got it done quick. You know, I just didn't want to have the argument, blah, blah, blah. She continues on. You know what? And she's a way, way happier person on paper, I think. On paper. I know. The, 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 you know, something, the thing about women is the, the, the big red flag is the level of, of shopping that they do. And the amount of shit that they buy, like that's, I don't know. There's, there's, a, there's a fucking unhappiness there. There's something psychotic going on with just the amount, the sheer amount of clothes and shit that they buy and just stuff that they fucking buy. Um, I don't see tranquility in it. I, I feel like that's like eating fucking, you know, seized candies. Just they just love having that UPS driver showing up and oh, <laughs> it's a little package for me, you know. I actually judge how well my relationship's going by how often the fucking UPS driver comes to the door. If he's coming a lot, then I need to take her out to dinner or something. 
if you know if he's coming every once in a while, then that's just her doing the woman thing of basically, uh, you know, fucking kicking our retirement right in the seats. All right, I didn't need to go. I'm okay. Whatever. I apologize to everybody. I apologize to that first guy at the fucking Verizon store. I uh, I apologize for the way I conveyed what I was trying to say to the to the the, the David Blaine looking dude at the bank. You know. I don't know. Maybe it's it's a new world. Maybe I'm just a fucking old guy. Maybe that's why I don't fucking know. I don't. I don't know. I still think I'm right, but I'm going to learn in the future not to have expectations of people and just sit there as the sands of my life slip away, waiting for somebody to do their fucking job that they got paid to do. Ever since I got back from Canada, oh Canada, you bunch of freezing cunts. I got I just got back from there, and uh, I kind of realized that when I go on the road with the fellas, we act like we're on some sort of bachelor party. I don't know what it is, minus the fucking who is everything else. Uh, we basically, uh, you know, we booze and we smoke cigars and that thing, and it's just, you know, it takes a lot out of me. And I got a bunch of shit I got to do, so I kind of need to be clear-headed. As opposed to the usual, you know, usually when I got nothing going on in my life, I mean, I can fucking, you know, I can have a few, right? I can wake up the next morning like, ah, oh, Jesus Christ, we'll get some fucking eggs or something, right? I can be in that mindset, but uh, as of right now, I can't. So um, I have not done anything. I haven't done shit. I haven't fucking, I haven't drank. I haven't smoked. Uh, I'm eating pretty good. Uh, I'm even laying off the internet porn. I mean, it's just fucking over. I actually got this Time magazine that was about internet porn and how how it's like fucking people up, you know, especially like kids, you know, when they first like just the shit. Who's kidding who? The shit you can see on the fucking internet. I can't believe nobody stepped in. I'm not saying somebody should step in, but, um. You know, I got to tell you, if, if if they knew what the fuck the Internet was going to be when it was f- whenever Al Gore was inventing it back in the 80s. <laughs> um, I never said that. I said that I was at, I was involved in the email chain, whatever the fuck he said. That fucking guy. Remember when his campaign was over? Remember when he was dancing around and all sweaty and all that shit? He just looked like he was so fucking relieved that it was over. Um, what a thing to go through, running for president. I just saw a clip of Hillary Clinton. I have not been paying attention at all, but Jesus Christ, what the fuck happened to her? She looks like Earl fucking Weaver. She looks like Earl Weaver. She was doing something, right? She was standing in some black church, right? Baptist church, I'm going to assume, you know? I don't think it was a Jewish uh, synagogue there, whatever the fuck they could, temple. She was in this green suit. She's just like yelling, ah! the shit she was going to do. That's the only time a politician goes near the black community is when they're running. They, they fucking, they swing by the church. They make a whole bunch of promises and then they get in the fucking limo and they go, let's get the fuck out of here. Right? Fuck out of Dodge. And then they go over, they do a town meeting, talk to all the lunch pail Louis, right? Then if, they, if there's even those people left in this country, if you fucking make anything... And they get over there and they say, roll up their sleeves. That's when, you know, they're talking to the working man. They take off their sport coat and they roll up their sleeves. You know, like they're going to build something rather than just go out there and say the exact same bullshit they just said in the Baptist church with more of a fucking uh, lunch pail swing to it, right? And the whole fucking thing. It's just gross. I don't know how anybody sits there and watch that shit, but... um. The latest thing that I've become fascinated with is I completely leave whatever the fuck I was just talking about. I'll come back to it, the clean living thing. Who wants to listen about clean living? It's the most boring shit ever. You know? Anyways, um, I've become fascinated with how super rich people avoid paying taxes. It's fucking fascinating. It's one of those things, you know, it's, it's like you got to respect it on a certain level. It's the, the brilliance of it. And then there's a certain level of balls that that takes because you're fucking with your freedom. Anytime you're fucking with taxes, you know what I mean? Fucking with the government. Anytime you, you, you're doing that, I mean, 
you know, why is that? I don't know what the fuck. Is that a federal thing? I guess if you're not paying your federal income tax, yeah, Bill, that would probably be a federal crime. <laughs> I don't know. I always say you got to cross state borders. Do you have to, like, not pay taxes and then leave your state before it becomes federal? I don't know. I don't know these things. But anyways, um, just the balls that it takes and the, uh, I don't know. I don't like people physically hurting other people, that type of crime. But when there's something like robbing banks or tax evasion or even a good old-fashioned fucking scam, if there's like a... Like an amazing level of thought behind it. On some level, you got to respect it, I think. You know what I mean? Like, I remember a long time ago, there was some fucking guy. He figured out how to rob parking meters. And they were allegedly, it was impossible to do. So this guy figured out how to fucking do it. It's amazing. And he did this shit. This is back in like the 80s or some shit. This guy figured out how to do it. So it was way, way, way easier. To not have everybody breathing down your fucking throat. You know, people be having eggs watching you fucking robbing a parking meter. They didn't have a fucking smartphone on them. they just be sitting there going, look at this fucking guy. guy just... Is that guy robbing a parking meter? Holy shit. The fucking guy, that guy just fucked the parking... Did you see that? Anybody see that? That was it. That's all that fucking happened. Rather than some douche sitting there filming you... And you're arrested before you even get home. Right? And then the fucking local newscasters, they always got to do some sort of fucking bad pun. You know what I mean? I'll tell you, this guy's life, his freedom is now going to change. You know how they do that? Somehow they get away with that in, like, fucking newspapers. Like, they can have the biggest fucking puns ever and everybody thinks it's great. You know? I, I don't know. I, I I can't even think of one right now, man. But uh, whatever. You know, you sit at home and you think about. It. You sit in your fucking cubicle instead of doing your goddamn work. You think of one. So, anyways, this fucking guy figured out how to do this shit. Um, and of course, the parking meter gods were beside themselves. You know what I mean? It was like one of those sci-fi movies, or like the Titanic movie. Like, eh, not even God can sink it. That's what they were like. Not even God could get the fucking quarters out of this meter. This meter, right? That's They were talking all kinds of shit. So this fucking guy figured out how to do it. And you're thinking like, all right, whatever, man. You do, well, What the fuck are you going to do with that? Well, dude, there's fucking meters all over the city. So this guy, anytime he wanted a drink, if he wanted a fucking sandwich, dude, he, this guy, he had it perfect. It was like his own ATM machine before ATM machines. He'd just walk up, bing, bang, boom. He had a sack of fucking quarters. You go down to the bank. You go, hey, can I get one of some of the rolly fucking things there? Right? Yeah, sure. They don't give a shit. Nobody gave a fuck back then. Nobody was paying attention. They were trying to pay attention, but not not to that type of shit. So this guy would roll the fucking quarters. You know? Rolls enough quarters. Next thing you know, he gets himself out. How the fuck would you get all those quarters down to a car dealership? I have no fucking idea. Although I talked to some drug dealers about how they fucking... um, or a guy who knew drug dealers, let's be honest here, Bill. Let's not act like that news guy saying that you were in the war and then you were in a chopper or some shit next to the chopper and you didn't really fucking see it. Okay, you took a fucking helicopter tour one time. You weren't even in Iraq. Whatever the fuck he said, I don't pay attention to shit. So anyways, I was talking to this guy and basically how back in the day when drug dealers were still driving around in flashy cars, because from what I heard nowadays, they, they don't even want to attract that level of attention. Um, how it used to be was anything, any cash deal that was over 10 grand grand had to be fucking reported. So what these drug dealers would do was they would go out and they'd buy a car worth nine grand for cash. And then they'd drive it around for like a fucking week. And then they'd trade it in for a car worth 16 grand. Maybe get seven for theirs. And then they'd throw another fucking nine at the other car. Now they got a $16,000 car. You drive around for a little bit. You fucking trade it in on a $23,000 car. They give you fifth, whatever, and so on and so forth. Until you trade your way all the way up to whatever fucking car you wanted. Um, and just, I, don't, I just look at that shit. It's like, I mean, that's not the, the deepest thing, but that's the way my brain would work. I'd be like, well, I guess I got to drive a piece of shit then. What's the point of dealing drugs? <laughs> right? 
or I'd just say, fuck it, I'm buying a Ferrari, and I'm going to drive it until they catch me fucking three weeks later. Um, by the way, the Ferrari I like is the Ferrari California. That's the old man one, the fucking GT, the grand touring one, right? I don't need to ride around in some Batmobile. Just give me one that's shaped like a fucking Jaguar from back in the day, you know? Or maybe a Toyota Supra. <laughs> Remember those fucking things from the 80s? I remember this guy loaned me his while he used my truck to move. And I ran and I beat the shit out of his car and he beat the fuck out of my truck. And we both got our cars back and he's smelling rubber. And I'm seeing all kinds of scratches all over my truck. And we just, eh, it's kind of a fair deal, right? And we both got arrested for drinking and driving months later. But that's a completely different story. I know, I'm all over the map. I'm doing this late night and I don't want to be doing it right now. But I got shit to do in the morning. So anyways, this fucking guy, you know. If he had half a fucking brain, what you do is you keep your day job, right? You keep your fucking day job. And then, you know, for anything miscellaneous, you just go to the parking meters, right? And what you do is you start storing up on the quarters. Then every once in a while, right, you just start you start washing the money with your fucking cat. I don't know what you do. You fucking, uh, you go into stores and stuff. You, you, who gives a fuck, right? You just use it to get yourself a better TV. But what does this dope do? He gets fucking greedy. I don't even remember how the fucking story goes. All I know is he just started hitting every fucking goddamn parking meter around. The next thing you know, he's sitting on like a fucking $2 million in quarters, and he ended up getting busted. But there was a part of it. I liked the guy, you know? So anyways, this gets me to the super rich on how, you know, all of that shit about the Panama Papers and all that type of stuff. I was talking to another friend of mine who's a fucking lawyer, and I was like, how does that work? Like, how do you get your money out of the country? And then once it's out of the country, how do you make sure nobody steals it? Like what happened to Johnny Depp's character in Blow? And then once you have it out of the country, how do you get it back in without just getting taxed all over again or busted? And he said, basically, this is it. And he broke the whole fucking thing down. All right. Or as far as I know, he broke an aspect of it down. I know all you guys are sitting there right now going, oh, Jesus, he's going to try to explain. I am. I'm going to try to explain some shit that was just explained to me, and I don't really know what the fuck I'm talking about. So let's get rid of one myth right out of the gate. I remember a long time ago, a friend of mine had a fucking landscaping business, and he already had a truck, and he went out and he bought this giant fucking, you know, one of those things with the dual wheels on the back and this fucking giant bed. Look at you put cattle in it, right? And I was like, holy fuck, man, how much does that thing cost? And, you know, it's like the 80s. It cost like 25 grand, which was a lot of fucking money back then, right, um, for a truck, you know? It's like 10 grand more than you pay. 25, 30 grand or some shit, right? I was like, holy shit, man, you can afford that? And he was like, yeah, it's a write-off. That's what a lot of dopes say. And they, they, it is a write-off. But what they think is is that they can write $30,000 off of their taxes, which you, you can't. What you can do is you can write off... It's a write-off as far as that thirty grand that you just spent in that truck is untaxable. All right? It's sitting in whatever. You made that money. You made thirty grand. If it's just sitting there and you don't put it back into play as far as reinvesting into your business, the government will tax you at the end of the year, you know, on that thirty grand. And let's say you're in like a fucking uh whatever, twenty percent tax bracket that you you'd have to give the government fucking six grand. Right? That's it. So people, morons think, oh, I get to write 30, in the end of the year, if I owed 40 grand in taxes and I bought a $30,000 truck, I get to take $30,000 off of my taxes. You wouldn't. You'd just be able to knock off six grand. Right? And you're not even knocking it off. You're just not getting taxed on that. Does that make sense? Probably doesn't because I explained it. So anyways, when you have your own business, what you're trying to do is you're trying to come up with as many fucking write-offs as you possibly can. Many is expenses, everything you possibly can to lower your your basic, your, your uh, whatever, your income as far as what is going to be taxable. So say you made fucking 100 grand, all right? You grossed 100 grand. The net is what you're left with after your expenses. You try to fucking come up with as many goddamn expenses as you can to get that hundred grand as far down as zero as possible. 
ideally, you wouldn't want to pay any fucking taxes as far as these people look. But the bottom line is you can only do it so much. And if you write off too much, the IRS is going to show up and be like, what's this fucking, you know, 60 grand for fucking cheeseburgers, blah, blah, blah. You tried to write off and you're going to get busted. All right. So what these fucking super rich people do is the first thing they do is they get the fucking money out of the out of the out of the country. Because the IRS's jurisdiction doesn't go beyond the borders. So what they do is they just create a company that doesn't exist. It's just it's just on paper. Right. So say you make one hundred million dollars. Right. What you do is you go to a country that doesn't give a shit about America and, and let you use it as a tax shelter. You just come up with some incorporated thing like who gives a fuck Inc. Right. And then you just have that company bill your company a consulting fee for a hundred million dollars or whatever, the, whatever of, of the hundred million, 30, 40, 50, whatever you don't want to pay taxes on, whatever, you, whatever. And then you write a check to that company that doesn't exist. That's really you. And then you send it out. So now it's out of the fucking country. And then what they do is they open up like 10 other of these fucking shell companies and they have those other companies build the first company and then the third one builds the second one, the fourth one, and it's just gone. The money's fucking gone. Now the IRS can come at you and be like, what the fuck did you pay somebody $100 million consulting fee? And then you're telling me you paid somebody $100 million as a consulting fee? And then you just look at them and go, yes. <laughs> And evidently, there's nothing they can fucking do about it. So then I was like, all right, so now it's out of the country, and then this, it's in this other country. How the fuck do you protect it? And they and he goes, well, you, those countries where these tax shelters are, they're in on the scam, so you just kick them 10% of the 100 million. You give them 10, here's fucking whatever you can negotiate. We'll just make it easy. Here's 10 million bucks. So, I, you know. I'll give you 10 million rather than giving the government fucking 50, 55, 60 million at 100 million. I'm still fucking up 45 million. All right. So then I was like, all right, so now how do you get the money back? Because if, you know, you bring the money back, you stick it to the bank, they're going to consider that earned income. Like, where the fuck did you get it? And this guy was like, they, they bring it back into the country in the form of a loan. Loans aren't taxable, right? Like if you get a fucking loan because you're already paying interest on it and everything, they don't tax you. So they just bring it back in the form of a loan. Whatever the fuck you want to do. I want to buy a $10 million house. You have this shell company that's 10 times removed from the one that you paid from the consulting fee, right? And they can't follow the paper trail because it's in a different country, right? You just bring it back into the country in the form of a loan. Um, and then you go buy a fucking house. And I guess, I don't know, you pretend to make payments or the loan is forgiven by this shell company that's still you. I, I know I just glossed over that. And if anybody has more information on it, I find it absolutely fascinating. There's, all, there's other ones they just pretend that that's their main business, um, that shell company. So they just act like it's doing the, I don't know. That, that's, that's as far as I can remember that what he told me. And I found that shit absolutely fucking fascinating because at the end of the fucking day as far as what they're doing i know they're fucking over you and me because you know the school systems go down the shitter because they don't have enough money there's a lot of potholes there's all kinds of stuff you can't take care of homeless people you can't build another gleaming structure for a fucking sports team whatever the fuck it is um at the end of the day as fucked up as that is these people who are criminals they're stealing from other criminals. As far as my uh, conspiracy theory goes, the IRS is just a bunch of fucking crooks anyway. So, I mean, they it's kind of fascinating watching these two giant, powerful entities fuck with each other. You know, meanwhile, you know, I'm in the crosshairs, you're in the crosshairs, and we're all paying Elvis taxes. <laughs> And there goes Hillary Clinton screaming in some Baptist church. Is she talking about that shit? Of course she isn't. Because when you bring the fucking money back in, you just don't bring it in and go out and buy yourself your fucking Ferrari California. What you do is, I mean, you do do that. But what else? You, what you also do is you walk around with a nice wad of cash and you go, oh, hey, chief of police. Oh, look at that birdie over there. And as he looks over, you stuff a fucking wad of cash in his pocket, you know. And then, oh, oh, is it an election year? 
Yeah, let me get, uh, I'll take two million on Trump. Give me 2.5 on Hillary and uh, fuck it. Give me 500 grand on Bernie Sanders. What do you mean he's not taking any money from guys like me? Oh, is that right? Oh, uh, well, you know, whatever. He won't get in. And if he does, uh, you know, I'll give three million to, uh, you know, silence him. That's what the fuck they do. And that's, and that's how they, they, you know. I don't I'm convinced of that. I'm convinced as far as like stand-up comedy goes. You know why they're always giving us shit? Is because uh, we, if, if stand-up comedians just organized, okay, and we donated to the campaigns of people running for, to the Democratic and the Republican parties, right? And then we bought a little ad time on CNN on, and on Fox News and all these major networks. If we did that, you'd never see another comedian getting in trouble for doing a fucking Caitlyn Jenner joke. <laughs> Anyways, if anybody has any more information on that, or they can talk about it. I, I, I don't like if it's really dry. I just like, um, I'm fascinated with people that do shit like that and then they go to bed knowing what the fuck they're doing. And they gotta be thinking at some point, like, the wolf's got to be coming to the door at some point. Hang on one second. I got to answer this. All right. So I'm back. Of course, I completely forget what the fuck I, where I, I ended off. Um, but what I really learned when I was, you know, listening to this lawyer telling me all this shit. Um, oh, I know I say in the balls that that takes to go to bed at night, knowing at any point, like all of a sudden the fucking feds are going to kick in your fucking door. But I think that these guys are like the smarter ones. And when you watch like American greed, what I noticed when I watched them, all of their fuckery was within the borders of the United States, which you just I mean, if you I guess if you're too dumb to know, you don't realize you're not going to get away with it forever. But like once I um, after talking to this guy, it just seems like anybody who just tries to have their entire illegal entity within the borders of one country is uh, you're just on borrowed time. So I think when you watch American Greed, what you're really seeing is is the hacks of, uh, you know, you always see these fucking idiots. They buy a house, they get all these fucking cars, and they have some strippers come over. Oh, my fucking laptop. Oh, that was a laptop hitting hardwood floors. Come on. Come on, baby. Come on. Come around. You're all right. Hang in there. Help is on the way. Oh, you fucking motherfucker. Steve Jobs is laughing somewhere right now. He's laughing at me because I got to give him money, and he also knows there's going to be another little kid's got to put it together. All right, it's saved. It's saved. Um, so anyways, uh, let's read a little bit of fucking ad shit here before my screen goes dark. Hang on a second. I find that shit, I find it, um, I find all that stuff fucking amazing. It's really, really interesting. If you just remove yourself from it, humanity of it or whatever uh and all the people that it's affecting and kids not getting better school books and shit if you just look at the fucking game that's going on it's really fucking interesting all right 60 minutes everybody all right hey bill i saw your tweet about 60 minutes about a ro about the talking robot piece yeah charlie rose was sitting there talking to this artificial intelligent robot that really moved bad speaking of fucking westworld right and he asked the robot what its goals were. First of all, that a robot would have goals like a person. OK. And the robot said, my goal is to one day be smarter than human beings. So I tweeted, you know, I basically tweeted, please unplug that fucking thing. All right. So he goes, um, I come somewhere between unplug it and ah, fuck it. It seems like everyone knows the machines will be our doom, but I feel like everyone involved and even everyone else just looking on has a, but will they take over type of curiosity? My question, I don't know what you meant by all that. My question to you is that if in 10 years the robots are filling in as clerks at stores or working the lobby of hotels, would you be comfortable as a customer in those locations? Also, also I highly recommend the new Westworld remake on HBO. Yes. I thought that was Netflix. My fault. HBO. Uh, it's totally up your alley, and I'm sure you remember the original with good old Yule Brenner. How funny is that? Yeah, you hit the nail on the head. I already talked about it. I loved it. Um, this is what I think. I actually think that uh, that those 
um, robots will make human beings obsolete. I know that sounds fucking crazy, but they will. Okay. And they don't have to sleep. They don't have to fucking do anything. They'll outwork us and all that type of shit. And they're going to act like then, then we finally get to sit around and chill out. Right. Like that was, that was the big promise of all of this technology that was going to be coming out in the future. I mean, there's always technology, but the, the newer technology, the technology of the future, you know, the three day work week. They used to make fun of that on, on the Jetsons. Oh, these three day work weeks are brutal. People are working more than they have ever worked in their fucking lives in this race to I don't even know what the fuck. Why the fuck? Can somebody please tell me what the fuck we need robots for? What do we need any of this shit for? You know what I mean? Like, I feel like somewhere in like the mid 90s. Like, that was good. We advanced enough with cars, travel. We advanced enough with medicine and that type of shit. I mean, basically from 1995 on, if you're fucking dying, then, I mean, I mean, I don't know, the amount of shit that you could sidestep, tuberculosis, polio, all of these fucking things, the, all those plagues from back in the day, they were all gone. I mean, something, I don't know, it's hard when it's somebody you know and love, or obviously if it's fucking you, but like... um I don't know. I think the population, I've always talked about it. I always, it's a major fucking problem. And I don't know how they go. Like, I just feel like those things will come along and they'll just be like, well, you have those things that don't need to, uh, they don't need a flat screen TV. They don't need any of that type of shit. They can do the work of 10 people. Or let's say they can do the work of four people. Then there's three extra people out there, isn't there? Or there's four extra people out there. Let's fucking cut this thing down by 25%. I mean, there's already too many fucking people walking around. You can have a bunch of robots walking around, too. At some point, something's got to give. All right? And I can guarantee you one thing. Robots are never forming a union. All right? They're not going to. So I think they'll be smart enough to, to not get them to do that. But the greed of going after the dollar and making one that's just a little bit better, just a little bit better, like these fucking iPhones... I think we could get ourselves into a a tough situation. And um, here's a question I have. Uh, If you kill a robot in the future, like, is that going to be considered property damage? At what point will that actually be considered murder one or murder two or robot slaughter? They'll have to have all these new laws. You know what I mean? Like, what if they make them, like, what they're trying to do? Like, they're probably trying to make them fuckable at some point, like that fucking movie I saw, like, a year ago, you know? What if you go out and you fuck somebody else's robot, you know? Like, hey, that's my robot. You just came in my fucking robot. What the fuck? Even though it's self-cleaning and all that shit, I can't fucking do that, right? You're just really opening up a fucking can of worms there. I went to that TED.com. Just look up robots and try to find the one where, the, where this, is, this lady is sitting there. She's fucking talking about, you know, having robots around the house. You know what I mean? And it's the stupidest thing. Okay, she, first of all, she's whoring it up for no particular reason in the beginning. I don't know why. She's wearing like these hooker boots. She's sitting there talking about robots to a bunch of egghead nerds. And she still got to whore it up. It's like, can't you just stand on the merit of the fucking speech that you wrote? Do you really got to get people's dicks half full just so they'll keep listening to you? How fucking insecure are you? You're talking about robots in the house walking down the hallway. Hey, what's up? Fucking high five and a goddamn robot. That right. And you, it's not like it's a movie. It's fucking real. That's not compelling enough of a subject, you can't hold the audience's interest, you still have to put on your streetwalker boots. It's weird. She has on streetwalker boots, but she has on a modest skirt. It comes down a little. Or maybe because the boots go up so fucking high. You know what I mean? I mean, isn't that basically the rule? If you're going to wear the fucking thigh-high boots, you basically have to have on a mini skirt. All right, so she starts her speech, right? Not a whore, just dressed like a whore. Like she put on half of her Halloween costume and then, oh, wait a minute, I have to give a speech. So she goes down there and she's just like, she actually sounds, what she's talking about is smart, but she doesn't sound that smart. So I don't know if some nerd wrote the fucking speech for her and and got like, I don't know, 
fucking broke out in like hives right before the speech, so they sent her out instead. But she's just up there being like, you know, when I was a little girl, I remember just seeing Star Wars and seeing C-3PO going, wouldn't that just be awesome to have like a robot? And not to like do Jaws, but just to like kind of talk to and like joke around with. And she starts talking about how she feels that robots should be in the fucking house because she wants her own C-3PO. Am I saying that right? Am I pausing at the wrong time? How come to C-3PO? C-3PO. C-3PO. I don't know, whatever. That's such a stupid fucking movie. It was one of the most overrated fucking goddamn motherfucking movies of all time. I would rather watch Muppets Take Manhattan. I think that that holds up better because at least there's adult humor in there. You know? You know who totally ripped off, used the force? Joel Olstein. That fucking squinty-eyed guy. Well, you want a t-shirt? Jesus, why don't you have a t-shirt? Just think about it. It's going to happen. He totally stole that whole vibe. I don't even know if that makes sense. You know, furthermore, I don't care. Plowing ahead. So this lady sitting there, lady sitting there talking about these fucking robots. You got to watch the video. And about, I don't know, 10, 11 minutes in, I can't remember where the fuck it is. They cut to somebody shooting the shit with a robot. And it looks like it's basically a head coming out of a giant VCR. And he's like sitting there like, and it'd be like if you had a VCR with a head coming out of it, but like a robot head, like bolts for eyes and shit. But it has like eyelashes for some stupid reason, like blinking. Like it needs to blink, right? And he's sitting at it like he's at his desk, like almost face to face with the thing. He's just like, hey, fucking R2-D2, look what my girlfriend bought me. And he, he showed some sort of fucking I don't know what the hell. It's some macho chain or a watch. I can't remember what the fuck it was. And then the robot's just like, oh, my God, that's really interesting. Did she? And it's moving its fucking head. Can I ask either this might be the dumbest question ever or just painfully obvious. Why the fuck would I need that? Why, why would I need that? Like, why? Why wouldn't I just talk to my friend? You know what I'm saying? It was, it's like the baseball kid from way back in the day. Remember that shit? I talked about it here in the podcast. One of these Mondays. They used to have the baseball kid. It was called baseball kid, the baseball kid. If baseball is what you want to do, the baseball kid will pitch to you. And it was a cardboard cutout of a friend, basically, that you don't have throwing a fucking baseball to you. You know, it was basically for the kid with no friends. So now they've upgraded it to the person who has no fucking friends. You know what's great is that I bet that guy didn't even have a girlfriend. I bet he bought the watch for himself, and now he now part of the sickness is he just fucking lies to this robot about this life that he doesn't have. And you know, once you start doing that, it's an inevitable, it's an inevitability, it's a fucking uh, cirrhosis of the liver that that guy's eventually going to stick his fucking human dick in that robot mouth. And the second that fucking happens, that's it. It's the end of the fucking human race. I'll tell you right now, there's fucking there's scientists out there fucking robots right now. They're out there banging robots, you know, under the whole platform of fucking research. It's, it's really scary. Like, go, go watch this shit on TED.com. They got another one showing how we're fighting wars now. And, like, these guys sit in Arizona. They go to basically go to work. They go to war. And then they come home after fucking blowing up some bad guys. Or hopefully bad guys, right? And then they fucking go and they sit down and hang out with their kids. And they're sitting there talking about how, uh, you know, now the bad guys are getting the robots and blah, blah, blah. It's just, it's fucking inevitable. All those drones. They're basically eventually, all the shit they're using over there, I think eventually they're going to use over here. You know? In the future, there'll be no more skipping jury duty. The second you skip it, you're going to wake up in the morning, peek out the window, and there's going to be a fucking drone just hovering there. You have seven minutes to get to court or you will be vaporized. It's going to be one of those fucking things. 
Is this the least interesting thing you ever heard in your life? I mean, didn't I just basically do every science fiction movie? Has there ever been a science fiction movie where they predict something great? That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to be original here for once in my fucking life. Let's go the other way. It's going to be a friendly drone. It's going to be outside the window. Go back to sleep. It's okay. We sent your clone to go down to the jury duty. <laughs> now we don't need you. So you will be vaporized. You will be vaporized. That's the way to do it. I think that that's, that's going to be the, 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 that's going to be the funeral in 2020. I think by 2020, we're going to know definitely where you go when you die. And if it's anywhere other than here, people are just going to choose to tap out. You know, it's going to be like getting a vasectomy, just getting fucking vaporized. Still an intense fucking procedure that that needs a serious talking before you do it. But, you know, hey, you know, I'm just getting I need a change. You know, like when people on the East Coast move to like Minnesota or fucking San Diego. Just needed a change. That's what's going to happen. People are just going to get vaporized here in the future. It's fucking true. You know, I know you guys are rolling your eyes right now, but you don't have access to the information that I do. Okay, so please uh, uh, reserve your judgment or whatever, whatever. Temper your judgment. Don't be hasty with your judgment. Whatever that fucking expression is. Uh, Russian guy outwits banks. Oh, I like this one already. Hey, Bill, thought you might enjoy reading this article about a Russian man who outwitted a bank by writing his own terms into their credit card contract. Jesus Christ, that's fucking phenomenal. How the hell did... That's like beating Bruce Lee at karate. Or Kung Fu. Or Jing Feng Ku, whatever the fuck he did. Article, here we go. The idea of beating the banks at their own game may seem like a rich joke, but to Mitri Agarakov... A Garkov, I don't know, 42-year-old Russian man. Sounds like he plays for the Red Wings, doesn't he? Uh, 42-year-old Russian man may have managed to do it. Unhappy with the terms of, of an unsolicited credit card offer he received from an online bank, Tinkoff Credit System, a Garkov, sorry if you're listening, and I'm butchering this, or if you're of Russian descent, uh, he scanned the document, wrote in his own terms, and sent it through. The bank approved the contract without reading the amended fine print, unwittingly agreeing to a 0% interest rate, unlimited credit, and no fees, as well as a stipulation that the, banks, that the bank pay steep fines for changing or canceling the contract. The bank has so much money, they'll be able to get around this. But what? that's fucking genius. What a hero. Agarkov used the card for two years, but the bank ultimately canceled it and sued Agarkov for $1,363. The bank said he owed them charges, interest, and late payment fees. A court ruled that because of the no-fee, no-interest stipulation Agarkov had written in, he owed only his unpaid $575 balance. Look at this. Two minutes left in the game, people. Is he going to win this or what? Agarkov is now suing the bank for $727,000 for not honoring the contract's term. And the bank is hollering fraud. They signed the documents without looking. They said what, us what usually... They said to me what usually their borrowers say in court. We've, we've not read it. Agarkov's lawyer said, uh, the shoe's on the other foot now. Sorry, I really butchered the ending of that reading. So, well, I got to pay attention to that. Well, they'll settle out of court. I don't know, man. That's that's a hard. I mean, the fact that you got just got out of paying the fees. I got to put this in my uh, my computer here. I want to pay attention to that. Agarkov, Russian bank case. Okay, so it's still at that point. Hey, anybody in Russia listen to this thing? Can you keep, please keep me abreast of this? I want to see if he gets any of that $727,000. All right? I'm going to do a little pregame analysis here. I'll tell you right now, i got to tell you, if I'm the bank, i got to be thinking, how did we end up in this situation? I would actually guess that they're not going to pay any of that. Um, they've probably got enough politicians and judges in their pockets. 
I mean, it's corrupt enough over here. I can't imagine what the fuck it's like over there. No offense, but uh, it is what it is. Um, yeah, if anybody, I don't know, in Estonia, Latvia, if you're close enough, you can pay attention and let me know. I'd appreciate it. Lithuania, the Ukraine, Belarus. Look at me. Huh? I've learned some shit. All right, I don't know if you guys know this, but I guess they're working on cars that are going to drive themselves in the future. Um, I don't know why. I mean, how fucking lazy are people going to get? I mean, it's going to be great for drinking and driving. It'd just be drinking and riding. You know, you all of a sudden, you'll always have that fucking thing, right? But I, I, don't, I don't like this, man. I don't like how everything's becoming fucking automated. You know, I feel like rich people are gradually phasing us out you know because you know goddamn well the only reason why they allow us to exist is because they need us to farm right they need us to deliver shit they need us to do a bunch of shit and i, I could add another example i don't know dance around like a monkey at a fucking casino come downstairs and say a couple of words at your little fucking illuminati party in the basement they need us to do that but once everything is automated and it just handles it, its fucking self, do you think you could be a part of that group? What if you were a part of a group that was just going to slowly fucking just phase everybody else out, you know? And somehow it was, would happen in your lifetime. All right? Like, who would you keep? These are very Hitler-esque type questions, but this is the type of fucking madness that I, I think everybody's capable of, you know, especially... Um, I don't know, if you travel on the road, some of the dopes you fucking meet out there, watching people getting stirred up, you know. In all honesty, I can't stand, like, the choices that we have for president right now, you know, as it starts to go towards, as a fucking torpedo, uh, that fucking St. Bernard-looking guy, Bernie Sanders, right, his jowls, um, as they torpedo his fucking campaign, and all Democrats are walking around, he can't win, he can't win. I love that, I love it. Yeah, because you're too much of a pussy to fucking vote for him, that's why, Right. So you're going to vote for this fucking, this clammy fucking crook or this guy who isn't saying anything. But like, I really believe that, you know, you could talk people into fucking wiping out everybody on the planet. He's very easily just listening to Donald Trump, his speeches where he just says absolutely nothing. You know, he said today he was talking to college graduates and he's literally going like, I'm going to bring jobs back to the United States. You wait, there's going to be more jobs here by the time I'm done. It's going to make your head spin. I'm going to have I'm going to have Apple bring manufacturing jobs back from China to here. OK. And people clapped. <laughs> he never has to say how he's going to do all. I'm going to plug up the hole in the ozone layer. Water's going to be clear. I'm going to get rid of all terrorism. And that's going to be the first week. Woo! I like this guy. This guy makes sense. He's making it great again. You know, and then you got Hillary. Oh, she just talks through her fucking teeth. It's like, she, you know, she looks like she should be doing like a ventriloquist act, but the puppet isn't there. Um, <laughs> I just can't fucking. I don't know. I have no, I don't know. I don't fucking know. No idea. And I don't even know who the other guys are. I just heard a couple of them talking, trying to trash Donald Trump, and they just they sounded pathetic. Just not good speakers. This is just a, this is a bad one. This is a bad one. You know, like I bet people watching, you know, you know, if you got a great college program and a bunch of seniors fucking graduate, graduate, and you just, you know, you just go through a bad four year period. I think that's what we're coming through. We're coming out of right now. You know, I like this one guy who was saying he was going to get rid of Obamacare if he was elected and people like applauding. Like, I, I, just, I don't fucking get it. I don't get why. I don't even I don't have Obamacare. I guess my tax dollars pay for it, but I don't have any problem with somebody like. I don't want my fellow countrymen walking around with a fucking toothache. <laughs> you need your spleen removed. Fuck you. Figure it out for yourself. Why don't we help each other out a little more? You know, why can we do that? And if elected, anybody needs this spleen out. Donald Trump, I bet I could run. I could run for president if that's all you got to do is just say you're going to do all this awesome shit. And you never fucking do it. Everyone will have health care and it will be free. All right. Um, oh, this weekend, by the way. Oh, the self-driving cars. Let's get back to that fucking thing. So evidently some self-driving car hit a bus, which is fucking tremendous for anybody who loves driving. That is such a tremendous fucking thing that happened today. 
or yesterday, or maybe last year. All I know is I just found the fucking story. I'm so fucking psyched. It's the self-driving car hit the fucking hit the fucking bus. I mean, it, even though it was only going like two miles an hour, it's just so fucking great because it, it hit a bus. So all you got to say is just, you know, just be like, well, what if, what if there was a bunch of kids on that bus, right? And then that'll delay it a good 20 fucking years. Um, let me see if I can find this story. Self-driving. Google says it bears some responsibility after self-driving car hits bus. Can you fucking believe that? Well, was there, was there a person driving the bus? I would say that you, you, you have all the fucking responsibility unless this guy literally drove into the fucking thing. Alphabet Incorporate, Incorporated Google said on Monday it bears some responsibility after one of its self-driving cars struck a municipal bus in a minor crash earlier this month. The crash may be the first case of one of its auto, autonomous cars hitting another vehicle and the fault of the self-driving car. Dude, this is going to be a shit show. This is just one, and it already hit a fucking bus. You know what I mean? Ah, that's fucking, that's lunacy. It's fucking lunacy, man. I will tell you, it, I mean, I think it'll, it will, it will cause people to drink like they've never drank before. I, I mean, half, most nights I don't drink out here because I, you know, I drive myself places. You know, I don't fucking Uber. Well, that'll put Uber out of business, right? Well, I guess if you don't have a fucking car, I don't know. Don't you guys like driving? I hope you have, like, the option. My thing is, how is the insurance going to work? Because you know goddamn well there's no way the insurance company is going to take that fucking liability on. And they're, they're claiming they're going to get rid of, there'll be no more deaths from car accidents. There's going to be no more accidents. It's just going to be, it's going to be, like, just accident-free. And this is amazing to me that this that it's gotten this fucking far, considering... You know, that like the amount of times they tried to kill the electric car, right? And, you know, big oil companies, that type of thing. I mean, you're fucking with their, their blue blood money. You know, we're not having that. Let's go electrocute an elephant to show how fucking dangerous these cars are, right? So, like, I, this is the only thing I can think. Why, these insurance companies, they're making enough money to go down there and whack somebody at ABC Incorporated, right? You know they fucking do shit like that. You go to a diner and all of a sudden you stagger out going, they poison me, and you do a face plant, then your invention disappears. Oh, I'm going down the rabbit hole. This is why I think they're letting this one go through. Because <clears throat> they're eventually going to get rid of all of us, and when they do that, they're going to have no more limo drivers. So they're like, well, well, well what are we going to do in the future? If we want to ride somewhere, I mean, I'm not going to drive my car and soil my wealthy hands, am I? And then somebody's like, well, what if we just had a, we'll just make the cars drive themselves. Oh, okay. Then, okay. Kill them all then. Yes, thank you. Poison them, remove them from the planet. Um, I wonder if they got rid of everybody, how long it would take for this, fun, you know, to go back to normal. You have to take all the nuclear waste, right? Just send it out, you know, out into fucking space, right? Send it towards Mars. Just make sure you don't hit the moon. And all you do is just fucking chill out in your, your little house. I wonder how long it would take to undo all that. Ah, but all this shit that people leave behind, you know? What the fuck are you going to do with all of that? That's all going to go into the soil. That'd take a little, you know, it wouldn't happen in your lifetime. Jesus Christ, I am all over the place, man. What the fuck am I talking about here? Murdering people and self-driving cars. You should see this fucking car, by the way. This fucking self-driving car makes the Volkswagen Beetle look like a goddamn Lamborghini. People on The Simpsons drive a better looking car than that fucking thing. Ugh, you know they're all going to be the exact same fucking one, right? You'll have your options of like three different colors. Like white, black, or beige. <laughs> oh man, this is not uplifting. Let's let's talk about these new Hillary Clinton fucking um, commercials. Which, of course, none of and, and the Trump ones. None of them talk about any sort of issue. They're just sort of talking about each other, about what assholes 
they are. You know, it's like uh, it's like two seventh grade girls just fucking starting rumors about each other. They're not talking about the nationwide heroin epidemic. They're not talking about fucking uh, uh, the pharmaceutical companies trying to fucking make weed not legal at a state level again because all all the states where it's fucking legal. You know, the prescription medic uh, uh, prescriptions are all down. They're losing money. So they're going to try to demonize it again, according to the person that I can't even remember who the fuck it is that told me that. And then I never read it to see if it's true. But now I'm telling it to you. Um, they're not talking about any of that shit. Great Barrier Reef is dead. Who gives a fuck? Right. All right. Let's trash the Hillary one first. All right. The Hillary one about fucking Donald Trump is they're trying to go. Your kids are watching this. What kind of president are they going to see? Okay, which I get. All right, there's kids that are into politics. But they show like six-year-olds, like riveted to, to, a, to a fucking I, to a fucking adult running, running for office. Do you remember when you were six years old? Remember when you, I don't even know what, what kids see nowadays. When I was a kid, remember when your parents put on the fucking news? Remember that feeling in your stomach? It was, it was like they were making you eat spinach. You're like, oh, my God, I got to get out of here. This is boring. Anytime there were adults on TV with suits talking, it was over. I wanted nothing to do with it. All I want cartoons. I like sports. The Bionic Man. What else did they have back then? Little House in the Prairie I liked for a little while. And then it got, it got all gross when fucking they brought that kid in. Who, who Did he go deaf or did he go black? I can't remember what the fuck. It, the Adam kid or some shit. He started fucking... The one with the pigtails. It just got gross, man. I don't know. I used to like watching the cowboy shit. I like that, that stuff. But anything that was remotely nightly news, politics. I vaguely remember uh, Richard Nixon crying on the radio when I was riding. Uh, I was riding in the car with my mother and she was trying to explain to me what was happening. And I was like, oh, oh, OK. And I never thought, like, like, wow, this guy lied to the nation. This, guy, this is a president crying on the radio. I had no concept of any of that. I was just like, all right, can I get out of the car right now? Because it's sunny out. We've been driving for a while, and I think I'm going to throw up. That's all I was thinking, because I was a fucking kid. Okay, people? Here's the deal. I mean, how fucking awful are you that you got to start talking about kids? Kids are watching this guy. Um. And then the Hillary one, I don't even know what the fuck it was. It looked like a fucking Pink Floyd video. I only, I was cooking and I turned around. I had, I had a, the game on, um, the one that Trump made about Hillary, uh, which I want to say it was somebody dressed up like Hillary holding a pickaxe or something. Like, I didn't even know. <laughs> I never took a hallucinogen, but, you know, that commercial made me be like, you know, what? this would have been a great time. To have done some acid to just watch that and like you know and if he somehow made it like feature length that would have been fucking awesome but anyways i believe the election is this week i want to say it's wednesday or is it tuesday maybe it's fucking tuesday i have no idea um i know wednesday the ninth i'm going to be on conan o'brien and there will be a new president is it going to be the first lady you know, which means uh, Bill Clinton will be the first, uh, what the fuck would he be, what would he be called? The first husband? The first, first husband? I knew I'd be groundbreaking. Jesus Christ, can you imagine if that fucking cigar fucking sticking lunatic is back in there and now he doesn't even have a fucking job? Jesus Christ. Hillary, the first day is going to be like, get all these broads the fuck out of here. I'm president. Get him. Anything with a twat, get it the fuck off Pennsylvania Avenue. That's it. They're literally going to, they, they're going to have to fucking wheel Bill around like Hannibal Lecter on like one of those two wheelers. You know what I mean? With the little fucking muzzle on him. Jesus, that animal might be coming back. Um, I think he's gonna, I think, uh, I think Trump fucked up. He just said too much crazy shit. And uh, he made the Clintons look sane. And he's got no one to blame but himself. That's my prediction, all right? If I was a betting man and I was going to Vegas, unbelievable, right? 
And Bernie Sanders is like that school that should have been allowed into the playoff and didn't fucking get in, right? Because all these fucking cunts were too afraid to vote for him because, oh, there's no way he can win. I saw somebody the other day on TV. They did this whole fuck. They did this. They go, all right, well, Hillary has, okay, you got to make a smart decision either because it's really hard. This decision is really hard because Hillary had a bunch of felonies and Trump, and then they listed, like, All the shit that Trump did for like a minute. This is like a fucking, like a TV show. I was just so fucking irresponsible, I feel. You know what I mean? You're supposed to try to be like impartial, right? I hope I'm being impartial. I don't fucking like either one of them. I just don't know how you trash one guy for fucking 90 goddamn seconds. And then you just, and all you say about the other person is just their felonies. Why don't you just talk about the felonies that were brought up? That the charges of those things. You could talk about that for fucking 19 hours. Oh, no, she has a blue bra, so therefore she must be a saint. Um, All right, I'm off my fucking soapbox here. Good luck to you guys. I really mean that. Good luck to you, man. I hope uh, somehow we come out of this. We somehow pick the fucking lesser of two fucking evils, whatever that is. Uh, And I hope everybody uh, reads and rereads all the propositions and all the shit that's attached to them. I plan on fucking doing that. Um, For the first time ever, I'm actually going to be an informed fucking voter when it comes to that shit because I don't think there's any winning at the uh, presidential level. Oh, Jesus Christ. Anyways, whoever wins, it's going to be a rough four years of speeches before the next one. I mean, neither one of them are a good public speaker. Holy shit. I mean, Trump just goes out there and wings it like Trump. When Trump gives a speech, he sounds like he's waiting for the headliner. He's like stretching, waiting for the headliner to show up. Keeps looking at the back of the room and they're still making that stretch. See, he's not here yet. They said he's on his way to another 10. Um, and then Hillary with that whole bobblehead fucking thing that she does like she is, I haven't seen anybody so outside their own fucking body since Al Gore. Remember Al Gore when he was fucking, um. I'll never forget he was doing a debate with George Bush, and George Bush makes a point, and then for whatever reason, Al Gore stood up, walked all the way over to George Bush, and just goes, my turn, in his ear, and Bush does like a double take, like, dude, what the fuck? Sort of a natural reaction to this guy coming out of, no- I mean, he could literally feel his fucking breath in his ear. He fucking did this double take looking at him, and the whole crowd laughed at Al Gore, and then Al Gore just threw his head back and for whatever reason started laughing just goes ha 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 and I'm like what are you laughing at like what the fuck are you doing like he, he was uh, yeah that guy that you know what that guy that guy read about his critics too much like the first time they were like uh, he wasn't animated enough and the next time he went out there he's doing like this fossy shit um, oh Jesus he, re- he redefined fucking flop sweat that guy All right, let's get out of politics. I don't even know what the fuck I'm talking anyways. Good luck with the voting, everybody. Uh, May the best piece of shit win. Have you guys seen this stuff about the uh, all the suicides at the uh, the Apple plant? You know, that really cunty commercial where they go, uh, you know, if you don't have an iPhone, then you don't have the iPhone. You know, and I wanted to get an iPhone until I saw those goddamn commercials and they kept like uh, just. It's the most bizarre advertising. It makes me angry at the iPhone. I never had any anger towards the iPhone or the people who had one. I never gave a shit. I was like, that phone's the shit. I heard it it drops calls. I'll wait till it's on Verizon. And then right when it gets on Verizon and I'm all ready to jump on board, they come up with this na 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 fucking cunty shit. Going, you know, if you had an iPhone right now, you could be looking at the inside of your fucking throat and uh, diagnosing your fucking throat cancer before it even happens. You know, but if you don't have the iPhone, you don't have the iPhone. It's like, well, fuck you. I'm I'm sticking with the droid. So anyways, now I read they just had the 10th suicide at the Apple plant. Now, who's kidding who? We all know that everything that we're wearing, everything that we're using is made by some four-year-old making six cents an hour somewhere. Well, evidently, these people have had enough. They've had 10 suicides at the Apple plant. Here we go. On the same day that Apple, Dell, Hewlett-Packard promised to look into working conditions at China's Foxconn plant, a 10th worker committed suicide. 
The death of a 19-year-old mail, mail worker. Ah, it's too bad. He was like one year away from getting his fucking severance pay. Or his, uh, ah, shit, I fucked it up. What the hell do you get it when you do 20 years on the force? Oh, God. I'm, I'm sorry, everybody. I'm on my fucking vacation mode. What the hell? I get my pension. What is that? When you, you work 20 years on the force? And he's only 19. You get it? Because he's been working since he was two? Oh, Jesus. Um, the death of a 19-year-old mail worker also came just after the company's billionaire founder took the media on tour of the sprawling complex in response to accusations from labor groups that workers toiled in sweatshop-like conditions. Oh, hilarious. So then the billionaire shows up. They clean the place up, stick in a water bubbler, and go, see, it's great. Um, And I know what a lot of you fucking heartless cunts are going to say. You're going to say, well, sweatshop labor is necessary. Do you want to pay $8,000 for a laptop? Well, here's my rebuttal. You know what? If the cunt at the top didn't have to make a billion dollars a year, you know? Kind of like when they were talking to the oil companies. They go, you're projected to make $350 billion. How about you just make $340 billion? Do you have to make that much money? That's the thing. The people at the top are taking way too much fucking money. There's no fucking way that the only uh, reasonable way to make a laptop is to give people such shitty wages that suicide is a better fucking option. And you do it at the fucking plant to make some sort of political statement. There's just no fucking way. How about the people at the top? You mean, once you got $100 million, do you ever need to get another paycheck? I don't understand that. I don't understand that. And I'm not saying that the people at the top shouldn't be filthy, stinking rich because they came up with it. But you shouldn't be paying people. There shouldn't be sweatshops, everybody. That's all I'm saying. And what sucks is that we actually came up with unions in this country because of sweatshop-like conditions. And uh, But what ended up happening was the people in the unions took advantage of it. And with their strength, they became a bunch of slothy douchebags to the point that there's a lot of people who actually have negative views about unions. That's how bad it is in this country. And they're actually excited that they're going to do away with unions. A lot of people want to do away with fucking unions rather than reform them. But to do away with them is we're going to end up like these poor bastards in, in fucking China, you know, sewing shit together and going, you know what? I think I'd rather jump out a fucking window than make another goddamn iPhone. Um, so anyways, it says the company has bought psychiatrists and Buddhist monks to the factory, to the factory complex to support workers and now plans now plays soothing music. Along production lines. Why don't you just fucking pay them? Um, It plans to install 10-foot tall fences to stop workers jumping from buildings. And may give workers a 20% pay raise. This is how tight these fucking rich cunts are. Let's play soothing music and put a fence up. We'll We'll try that first. Rather than... Just giving them more money. What is it? What is it? Twenty percent pay raise when you make it eight cents an hour. Um, and anyways, Foxconn representatives maintain that the the increase would not be in response to the suicides, but is being considered because business has been good. Give me a fucking break. So anyway, so I have to take my fucking laptop over to this place here in my uh, my part of Los Angeles, and I take it over there, and the guy figures out what I need is uh, I needed a new hard drive. So he puts the new fucking hard drive in. So this morning, I go to, you know, download all the information I get, all your questions and whatnot, and then make my list of subjects that I might talk about or might not talk about. So I go to open up this fucking, is it program? App? I don't know what the fuck you call it. It's one of the things where you can actually write, you know, you can type some shit on and save it later in like a document. And I open the fucking thing up and immediately... It's just steering me towards this SoundCloud shit. Yeah, we can save it, and then you can have it on all your devices. You know, kind of, have you ever thought about how fucking dumb you are if you're using SoundCloud? I'm not even talking about its convenience. The fact that you're just giving access to your goddamn life to, to, to God knows who. 
You know what? And then you're going to sit around and, oh, I can't believe somebody stole my identity. How oh, that picture of my dick end up on the fucking Internet? It's like, what are you doing? Don't give people access to your photos and your files and all of that shit because of some fucking little kid mentality. Well, what if I lose them? What, do you got a fucking balloon tied around your wrist? That's what you got the backup hard drive for. Put them on there once a week. Just fucking send a few over there. And then if something catastrophic happens to your laptop, you still have 98% of your shit and you got to survive. So having said that, does, does anybody know how to disable that fucking goddamn cloud? Fucking weirdo, man. Fucking creep. That's just like some nerd. Like if you looked over and there's just some nerd standing in your window with his black framed glasses trying to look at all your pictures, trying to see uh, what the fuck you're writing about, trying to see what websites you're on. The whole thing is fucking creepy. You know what's really creeping me out is somebody recently is trying to suggest that the camera that's on your fucking laptop is on all the time and potentially somebody could be watching you or it's recording you or whatever. Um, what the fuck are they going to save all of that? You know what I mean? Although it does kind of freak me out. Um, I just I just had a bad week with the technology, everybody. I um, I am so fucking anti all of this shit. And I know is, is I just feel like as convenient as it makes your life, you, the, the amount of fucking uh, money it costs and shit crashing and then you got to upload it and then try to figure out how to use the new shit and then them just just more and more trying to figure out just spy on you they're fucking spying on you for whatever reason to try to sell you more toothpaste or to just make sure they got enough dirt on anybody who ever decides to run for political office for the rest of fucking time do you realize right now that the next president right not the next president well some president in the future say some president in 2040 or whatever right now is probably getting videotaped jerking off to something Right. And they're going to have all of that fucking information. All the fucking creepy shit you did, all your weird little thoughts. All your insecurities, all every fucking thing they need to know about you to keep you in line. I know everybody thinks this is like paranoid thought. I know it's not this where J. Edgar, you know, how much J. Edgar Hoover would, would fucking love the cloud. That fucking weirdo. He used to sit there going around Washington trying to just have dirt on everybody so he could walk up and talk to you and just know shit about you, who you were fucking, what you were doing, if you were secretly gay or anything. And he probably sat there talking to you, right? The weird look on his face. And you'd be like, this guy's just giving me the creeps. Why is, he, why is this guy giving me the fucking creeps? It's because he knows about your life and he's so excited about it. He's probably, fuck, his fucking dick is probably at half mass as he's talking to you. You know? <laughs> J. Edgar Hoover! You know? And then they try to say that that guy actually was, uh, he used to walk around in a dress all day. You know, I don't understand that. I don't understand why you would want to walk around in a fucking dress. As a man or a woman, and not really the dress. I can understand the dress. That's like having a bathrobe that doesn't open, right? Wearing one of those fucking things, you know? <laughs> You're having on a smock. I just don't get the shoes. Why the fuck would you want to wear? I mean, they look good. They look good when the ladies prance around in them. But why the fuck would you? Why, why anybody in their right fucking mind would want to walk around in your tippy toes the whole goddamn day? Fucking up your back is beyond me. And you would think that if you're a dude, you're like, oh, good, I don't have to wear that shit. To go out of your way to actually wear it, you know, just why would you do that to yourself? You know, why? If you, I gotta go ahead and dress up like a woman, but wear some flats, J. Edgar. You know, you're gonna fucking slip a disc. You're not, you're not exactly in shape. Let me scroll. Oh wait, McDonald's. Hey, did you guys see McDonald's is closing some? Uh... McDonald's had to start closing some stores. Did I already talk about this? I can't fucking remember. 
I was talking the other day how our food supply has basically become poison, and I got a couple of people sending me, hey, Bill, care to send me some links to some of your research you did? <laughs> I understand. I, I'm worthy of that criticism. But also, if you're really going to sit there and try to tell me that I'm not at least half right on how fucked up our food supply is right now, all right, I'll give you this right now. Here's my, I'll cite this source. When I was a kid, a chicken was like maybe one or two weight classes above a fucking pi pigeon. And I'm not talking about a Cornish hen, all right? Some little fucking partridge. I'm, I'm talking about a full-size adult chicken that lived a, a, a whole life, accomplished its dreams before it got its head fucking lopped off. Now, like, chickens look like Mark McGuire in 1998. They're fucking gigantic. They're like turkey juniors. So, like, what are, what are the chickens doing now? Huh? They hit in the gym? Sorry. Um, <laughs> they're doing dips. Drinking some protein shakes. Give me a fucking break. Give me a fucking break. I, I don't trust anything, and that does not make me somebody with a tinfoil hat on. It makes me fucking smart. I love how the, the, the cigarette people... For years, sat there and they're like, I don't think nicotine is addicting. And then they passed to another guy, I do not think nicotine is addicting. According to my studies, nicotine is not addicting. They all knew it was. They didn't give a fuck. All right, but that's what they hitched their wagons to. So they continued to lie. You look at the fucking bankers that lie at that level. Everybody lies at that fucking level. Everybody lies in general, right? Forget about when there's a bunch of money, whores, and power involved. Right? Food is no different. Why would you trust those cunts? You know? I don't know, but you know what? Go ahead and do it. Have at it. For as much as I sit here and bitch moan and complain about it, I actually tried to eat like totally uh, farmer's market, all of that stuff. It was practically impossible. First of all, you go down to the farmer's markets and the big farms, they're already in there and they just can legally have like, you know, their fucking products called, uh, you know, homegrown eddies. You know, and that's just the name of some giant corporation that's got, you know, God knows what in their fucking food, right? And when I actually went to this farmer's market, I was like, I wanted to buy a chicken that it was just a fucking chicken, right? I didn't want to buy, uh, who's that guy who fucking ran that race and beat Carl Lewis? The Ben Johnson. I didn't want the Ben Johnson fucking uh, chicken, you know? And this guy had all these things. They all say they were organic, all say they were natural. And I pointed at each one of them. I forget the question I was supposed to ask. I learned it in this documentary and asked, and the guy shook his head no. Went to the next one, shook his head no. I said, where is one that just was a fucking chicken and ate what chickens ate in the 1920s? And he goes all the way down there. And I looked at it, and I was like, that's a fucking chicken? And he goes, yeah. That's what they look like when you don't fucking... <laughs> when they don't have the same workout program as Lyle Alzado. Right? So, whatever. Don't listen to me. Don't give a fuck. Laugh at me. Think I'm a fucking moron. But just realize you're not a fucking scientist either. Okay. Um, so anyways, I'm going to be warming up for my, uh, my special starting Saturday night in Washington, D.C., our nation's capital. Okay. Um, I'm just going to walk around to anybody who's in government. Right. And I'm just going to scream. Really? In their face. That's that's my goal during the week. I just walk down the street just saying that to everybody. I'm just blaming them because my choices are Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump. That's that's just what I'm doing. Anybody with a fucking blue blazer and a red or a blue tie, I'm grabbing them by the shoulder. You're not going to do that. But I would love to do it. I would like to do it, but you know. Post 9-11... You can't walk around doing shit like that, and, and I don't want to get into a fight. I'm an old man, you know? I gonna tell you that time I went down, I looked at the Pentagon, like a couple, of, about six months after 9-11. I must have told you that story, right? Post 9-11, all right, I was in New York on 9-11. I was on the Upper East Side, the East 70s, all the way by the East River. And, uh, you know, there's a lot of, like, old wives tales told by people who lived in New York during that time. Dude, you wouldn't have known anything was going on. It was a fucking beautiful day. And even as it went down, as it collapsed and all that, when I walked outside, I didn't see anything in the air or anything. I mean, that was like a couple of miles away. And if it wasn't on television, I never would have even known that it happened. All I remember was walking around the Upper East Side, 
trying to block out what the fuck just happened, like a typical Irish, German, Irish Catholic. Um, sad feelings, block them out, act like nothing's happening. And uh, I just remember walking around up there and like the fucking, there was people, it was so weird to me because Upper East Side, there a bunch of, you know, people who actually could afford it to buy an apartment. You know, a lot of them came from fucking money or what, I don't know what the hell they did. But they were, I remember them sitting outside on that beautiful sunny day where that horror was going down there and they were eating, uh, you know, breakfast and shit. And everybody felt, had that weird sort of like, I feel like I should be doing something, but what? Um, can I get the salmon on the eggs, Benedict? Um, so, you know, I went down and I saw like after 9-11, that one piece of, of the world trade was standing up. I went down, I saw that. And uh, I remember down the comedy cellar for months after, like a month after, was still burning. I'll never forget that smell. So when I went down to D.C., I mean, I knew by then you knew that this was a changing moment in history. And it was just like, you know, I wanted to see like, uh, you know, go over to the Pentagon and see how bad the damage was. So I didn't realize I was such an idiot. I didn't realize that the Pentagon is like the Pentagon. I thought the Pentagon was also kind of like the Lincoln Memorial, like you could just kind of go to it as a tourist, which you can. But I just there's like a subway stop and you just get off at the Pentagon and I'm walking around. There's all these people in like plain clothes. And then you'd see people in like Air Force outfits or Marine outfits. And so I was thinking, all right, they work here, but everybody else in plain clothes is like me. I didn't realize that they all kind of fucking work there and nobody. It's like an office. It's a giant fucking office building in the shape of a Pentagon. So I start looking around. I mean, you know, it's it's basically a circle with with points on it. Right. That's what a what a what a Pentagon is. How many sides to a Pentagon, Bill? Oh, I don't I don't know. It's more than five. It's a triangle. Then there's a hexagon and there's a proplexagon. I don't know what the fuck it is. And you know what? I, I knew it when I had to know it for the test. And that's never come up in my life. You know what I mean? You got a quartet. You got a quintet. That's jazz. I'm out of math. I'm into jazz. But isn't music just numbers put together beautifully? Sorry. So I'm like, I'm standing there in this pointy fucking circle going, do I go to the right? Do I go to the left? I kind of go left. Then I go right. Then I start walking back left. Then I'm just fucking start walking around this thing. I'm trying to peek around the corner. I'm like, ah, oh, maybe I should have gone the other way. And I'm basically not realizing it. I'm looking shifty as hell. And of course, there's like 50 fucking cameras on me. Like, what the fuck is this dude doing? Right. And I'm walking. I'm looking around. And all of a sudden, this fucking. Was it a Jeep or a golf cart? I don't know what's just pulls up next to me. And this fuck, this fucking guy gets out. Like. He, you know when Powers Booth ever plays a military guy? He was like that with a beret. Like, that's how much he was decorated, it seemed. No, 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 he didn't have all that shit. But he had some shit on his fucking shirt, all right? And he had the beret. And I remember he got out, and he, and he was, like, doing that thing. You know when someone's about ready to snap your neck and they're smiling at the same time? Like, that was the look on his face. Like, like he was showing me his teeth, smiling, but everything else just basically said is, I'm going to pull your fucking throat out like MacGruber. And um, he came up, and he's just like, hey, buddy, what are you doing? And he's, like, looking through to the back of my head, and immediately I was just like, oh, you know, I was just, and I was just, then I didn't know what to say, and I was like, oh, my God, what if he knew one of the people that died here? And then uh, I was just kind of, oh, I was just, uh, you know, I'm a comedian, I'm in town, playing Teddy's House of Comedy, and, uh, and just, then he, he, he fucking took my name, and then it, then it dawned on me why they were coming up to me, and it, the whole thing just made sense, like, oh, this is like a military building built, this isn't the Jefferson Memorial, um, you're walking around one of the most top secret fucking places, and you're looking around, and you look like a crazy white guy, right? So then it just struck me as funny. And then I, all, I was trying to hold back a laugh, right? Classic white privilege here, right? I could actually have this guy come up to me outside the Pentagon and I can still find the humor in it because I know I'm not going to get arrested, right? Is that what white privilege is? I don't know. I'm stuck in this wonderful fucking position. <laughs> I'm just going to stare into that now and people just say white privilege. I'll be like, oh, yeah, it's unbelievable. Woo! <laughs> uh, anyways what was i saying okay so the fucking guy um 
he's taken down my name. And then I kind of have like this shitty grin on my face because, you know, at that point, they both they all kind of because it was the guy who drove the Jeep who was like fucking Tom Cruise and taps. He just couldn't let it go. Right. So I kind of feel him staring at me like a fucking lunatic. And I'm like, well, if this guy here with all the shit on his shirt, I can feel him letting me go. You're not going to arrest me. The driver of the Jeep. You join the military to be a fucking chauffeur. Go fuck yourself. So now the comic in me is starting to come up and I want to irritate this guy. So I really start fucking smiling or what I was like, yeah, man. Sorry. I go, Hey man, you want to come out to the show and blah, blah, blah. And the guy see, you know, he's, he's kind of gone down from, I'm going to fucking rip your throat out to kind of like, uh, maybe I'll just, you know, I don't know what, stick a bayonet in your side. He's, he's kind of down to that. Is that less? I don't know. Whatever the fuck it is. Uh, I'll just waterboard you. He sees his, his look of craziness is I'm just going to waterboard you now. And, um, I got to the end and he's like, all right. And he gets in the Jeep and the other guy was just staring fucking uh, like daggers at me, the Jeep. And I was just looking right at him, smiling. And he goes, no, he goes, you're free to keep walking around this thing, you know, blah, 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 blah. And I was just like, nah, man, I'm cool. I'm cool. <laughs> like, I don't need anybody else driving up to me with a fucking Jeep. So they go to drive away. And as they were driving away, I, I remember the guy in the Jeep, the guy driving like yelled. I think he was trying to make me jump. Like he drove away and just heard this like that. And I didn't jump. And I just sort of, I, without like looking back, I just put my hand up and waved at him. And, uh, and that's my fucking Pentagon story. Um, all right. Trump, dear Billy elect. I don't agree with everything Trump says, but I wholeheartedly believe that he's the only person that can set this country on a course of honesty. I'd rather know what a guy is actually thinking and disagree than to not know what he's thinking and to have to have faith. What are your thoughts? Um, says phone store girl. Uh, Oh no, sorry. That's the next one. Um, I 100% agree. That's why he, even though he said all that stupid shit about Mexicans to just, you know, having a white, like the thing about that guy, the shit he says about Mexicans and stuff like, as fucked up as it is, it's like, that's what a white guy who's lived on the top floor of a skyscraper, that's, that's the kind of shit, that, that's the way they think. I went there, I've been to the border. Uh, oh, yeah, did you fucking drive by in your air-conditioned SUV for fucking 20 minutes? You know what you're talking about. I'm not trashing, I'm not trashing the guy. Like, dude, that fucking shit he said about the bankers again. I felt vindicated when he was going, like, when they were giving him shit for declaring bankruptcy. And he goes, he goes, I've done hundreds and hundreds of deals four times, four times. I've taken advantage of the bankruptcy laws, by the way, they are laws. So he's not doing anything illegal. And he goes, and by the way, let's not make out these people that loan me money to be these innocent little daisies or whatever. He goes, they're not exactly innocent. He goes, these guys are killers. And he's hundred percent, right? hundred percent fucking right. Having said all that, I mean, that money was also put in to the banks by mom and pop people, but it was printed out by the bankers and it's really not our money. It's their money. And you're, they give it to you and your jobs to get into as much debt as humanly possible without going under and paying those cunts for the rest of your fucking life. They are killers. Um, but having said that there's, there's no way any one person could get this country in order because what would happen is if he got elected, he would threaten everybody else who got in the other way and no one would work with him. Um, in a childish way, and then they would blame him. And then the guys who put the money behind all the politicians also own newspapers, and everyone would just smear Donald Trump. And then every fucking moron who thinks they know shit about politics would be like, see, it doesn't work. It doesn't fucking work. It'll go right back to the way that they want it. Um, to truly change any government, to truly fucking change when it's as corrupt as we are in most of the other governments, I'm not just shitting on my country, but as corrupt as we are, the only way to do it is you have to have literally a revolution and people are going to die and people are going to go on trial and there's going to be fucking firing squads and all that type of shit. You know, you don't just go like, Hey, we've had enough. And then the people in power go, Oh, okay. All right. Here's the keys to the castle. Let's see how you do. (laughs) Can I have a job? It doesn't go down like that. So, um, but I will say, um, that guy, he's a, he's a, Donald Trump is a fucking star. 
Uh, but I also liked, there was a couple other guys on the panel I liked. I liked uh, Rand Paul. And then I liked the uh, the older fella there. What the fuck's his name? I can't remember. But that guy from Jersey is a fucking dope. He's just smart enough to seem smart. But at the end of the day, he, he's big fucking roast beef head. He's, he's a fucking dope. That guy should not go beyond the state level. But he will. He will. Wait a minute. I forgot to bring this up. Do you guys know? that one of my fantasies is coming true this week? No, it's not reading copy correctly. Uh, there's two bankers being put to death in Vietnam. Let me look this up here. Death, Vietnam. Vietnamese bankers sentenced to death for fraud. Here we go. This is what, this is what should have been happening in this country in 2008. Like... It already should have, like, there should have been like, at least 100 bankers dead. You know what you should do is, like, smother them with cash. <laughs> no, what you do is you tie them to the mast of their yacht or their sailboat, right? And then you put a bunch of cash at their feet. All the cash that they stole, <laughs> you just light it on fire, right? Like, Jonah, fuck it up! Um... Let me see if I can find where the fuck is it. Here we go. Yahoo Free News. Let's go here. A Vietnamese former banker and his business associates have been sentenced to death for their part in the embezzlement of $25 million. State media has reported. $25 million bucks and you get the goddamn death sentence. All right? So I figured that the people at AIG, they ought to have like, what happened to William Wallace at the end of Braveheart? Whatever that fucking thing is. Well, they just pull out your fucking entrails like machete. Um, the pair were among 11 defendants in the nine-day trial in Ho Chi Minh City. State media reported on Saturday in a case that has heightened Vietnam's effort to show it is stamping out corruption in the face of widespread public anger over the issue. That's the only part of this story I don't like. Uh, the fact that they're trying to make an example. So now I think that they just got a couple of Ollie Norths here. They're going to kill two people or 11 and be like, see, we're doing something. And then it goes right back. Now, I don't know what politicians make in Vietnam, but if it's anything like over here, you know, the bankers put them in office. So I have no fucking idea. But anyways, this is the deal. Vu Quoc Hao, 58, the one-time chief of the finance subsidiary of the state-owned Vietnam Agribank and building firm boss Dang Van Hai, 56, were sentenced to death on Friday, according to state television. They were given the sentence for embezzlement of assets, mismanagement, abuse of power, and fraud, causing serious consequences to the state. Sound familiar, everybody? I just did that when I hated last week. Sound familiar? Um, the other nine defendants were jailed for up to 14 years for violating state economic regulations, the report added. The group was accused of embezzling more than $25 million of state money between April 2008 and March 2009 by falsifying financial leasing contracts, according to reports on state media. Vietnam is rated one of the world's most corrupt nations, and graft is a top concern for many ordinary people. The communist government has vowed to clamp down on the issue. There will be strict punishment for state... Ca uh, I'm not going to read the rest of this shit. I'll spare you guys. I read it pretty well up to that point. Um, so there you go. There you go. See that? It doesn't matter what kind of government you have. A democracy, communism, socialism, dictatorship, the fucking bankers are running shit, and they need to be put down in the fucking street and replaced with honest people. You know? Like some of those fine folks that I met out there in the heartland. That would be great. I would actually go to the execution. As fucking morbid as that is. You know? I would actually go there. Oh, here's a, I got a funny fucking story for you. All right? Listen to this shit. So I'm going through fucking security. All right? And they have the reg regular metal detector and then they got the fucking x-ray one that I don't go through. I don't go through that fucking thing because I don't give a shit what they tell me. That thing is not good for you. I remember when it first fucking came out and people were opting out. And I remember people going like, oh, what's the big deal? You're already talking on your cell phone. Like all that dumb shit that people say, you know. 
Um, yeah, it's like, oh, yeah, so why don't I get extra radiation, you know? Why don't I just add to it, just make sure I get fucking cancer, right? And what did they say? They tried to say that the thing was totally fucking safe, and then what ends up happening? After a year and a half of radiating everybody in my country too much, they realized that they had the fucking thing turned up too high. And to this fucking day, when you go through one of those, if, they, if a kid's young enough, they, they fucking send them around. Because it fucking retards the puberty process or something like that. But I'm supposed to go through it? Go fuck yourself. So I always opt out. And I don't give a fuck about your opinion on this, by the way. I don't need to hear your fucking opinion. This is just my opinion. If you want to go through the fucking thing, more power to you. So I'm down here in Australia, and they got the regular one, and then they got the fucking, the bad one. So every third person or whatever has to go through or whatever. So I come up, and guess what? They want me to go through that other one. And, it, and I'm like, yeah, I'm opting out. And they're like, you can't opt out in Australia. So now I'm in this fucking thing where I'm challenging authority in a different country, which is always scary. But I just said, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going through it. And the guy starts going like, oh, uh, he goes, do you mind if I ask you why? And I go, yeah, because I used to work in a dental office. And I took fucking x-rays and I put a lead vest over somebody before I fucking took an x-ray. And I got cancer in my family, so I don't want to go through it. And he goes, well, you can't opt out of here. Plus, the ones down here, he goes, this thing is, he goes, this thing only sees through your pockets. This fucking rent-a-cop, like he knows how this fucking thing works, right? Oh, it just sees through your pockets. Really? You fat fuck? What do you know about anything other than eating too many fucking donuts, you douche, right? So I say to the guy, I go, well, we had the one in the States. They had it turned up too high. He goes, this is a different one. I go, no, it isn't. I go, that's the same company. I'm not going through it. He goes, all right, well, then you have to stand over there. I'm like, fine. So the guy fucking makes me stand over there for like 10 minutes. Then this other fucking guy comes walking over, and he's got this little fucking, you know, like when, the, you, know, like when you get your baseball team schedule or your hockey team schedule for the fucking year? He comes over with one, with one of those that's like four pages. Most of it is pictures. And he goes, if you just want to read up on it, and I just started laughing, like, what, that little kid's book you have there? That explains that complex fucking machine over there? And he goes, no, but it explains it. I go, who, who explained it? The people who made that fucking thing? I'm obviously not cursing at him, but they just said you can't fucking opt out. It's a law down here. Now, if I had the fucking time and the wherewithal, the presence of mind during that conversation, I, I should have said, tell me what law it is. Tell me what fucking law that says I have to go through that fucking thing. Pat me down. We don't do that here. Well, you should fucking start. Fucking unreal. So then I ended up having to go through the goddamn thing. The guy was actually nice. He apologized for it. And I just said, listen, man, I know it's not you. It's, this is what it always is. It's not you. You're just the guy here who has to tell me I have to fucking go through it. But the real cunts who are making money off it, who fly fucking private, who never have to go through that thing, don't have to worry about having their entire fucking head all the way down to their balls and their fucking toes radiated. So if there's anybody out there that has a fucking scientific background and can explain to me how something that can see through my fucking clothes is not, a, is not, a, uh, is not some sort of an x-ray. I mean, Jesus Christ, drinking Coca-Cola can give you cancer. You're telling me st standing in that fucking thing? Head to fucking toe, put your arms up? Oh, it just shoots beams at you. It's just looking at what's in your pockets. Oh, yeah? Is that why when I come out the other side, there's an entire image of me? I don't know. So whatever. So that was my fucking big goddamn moment. Fucking fat fuck. Make, making me stand there for life. That's another thing that they do, that passive aggressive thing, is they make you stand there for fucking 10 minutes trying to break your will, knowing that you're probably late for your flight. When all that shit came out about Trump, right? He did this, he did that, blah, blah, blah. It was all pretty pedestrian, sort of like, oh, he grabbed my boob and then took me in the back. Just, just really generic, sort of like, it's become sort of the cliched story. And then this one woman, so I'm sitting there going like, all right, the Clintons are fucking filthy. Who knows if they paid these people? Who knows what the fuck's going on? It's right before the, just when this is coming out. And so I was going, all right, we'll see, we'll see. And then this, finally this woman came on and she goes, uh, so he made advancements at me. And she goes, I, I just pushed him away and said, get real, which is the perfect thing to say, because you're, you're in your 20s. He's like fucking 106. It's like, yeah, right. are you serious? So she goes, I said, get real. And then she said, he thrusted his genitals towards me and, and said, get real. <laughs>
Yeah. And she said that and the way she imitated him. I was in the car with my wife. We, st- I said, he fucking did that one. He did that one. There's no fucking way. That is just too specific. Like, I got the creeps of, like, get real. So I wonder what uh, the logistics are, or the legality is, rather, of the, the audio tape. Like, if you don't know you're being recorded, like, you know you're being recorded for a show, you're wearing a microphone, but you don't know you're being recorded while you're on a bus. And you're talking about I, grabbing him by the pussy and all that. He was talking to me. Talking trash. He's talking shit. Yeah, like, like yeah. Joey Diaz would say something like that, and I'd be fucking crying laughing. And he would be egging it up. He would ramp it up. He would make it way exaggerated because yeah. he knows it's funny. He's going for the laugh. Yeah. Yeah. If you're sitting next to Trump and he's like, I just grab him by the pussy, you'd be fucking crying laughing. That's why it was what, just you Billy too. Bush, I defended him on my podcast. Like, it, like, I'm not saying the guy's a great guy, but to fire a fucking guy because of a, 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 a fucking... 20 second clip from 11 years ago. What's he supposed to do? He's interviewing the guy, and what you're supposed to do is keep the interviewer happy. Yes. The interviewee happy. So if he's like, grab him by the pussy, hey, grab him by the pussy. Yeah. But he's he just, not even saying anything bad. Billy Bush didn't say anything bad. He just did admonish work, him. This guy at work said, well, when he said to the woman, go over and give him a hug, he became part of the sexual uh, assault. And I was just like, what sex? There was no sexual assault. What they were saying, if he actually did it, was. But the whole thing was just like, like this. Just you know, I understand women getting flipping out about it. As far as obviously, just the whole, it would be them. But yes. what they don't know is the way guys talk <laughs> when they're not there. Yes. And I'm just, I'm gonna say, dude, the fucking shit that we've said, and we, and we say it for fun. Yeah. We don't say it because we really want to go grab someone by the pussy and pick them up like a bowling ball. Yeah, we say it because it's funny. It's funny, and you just you talk. It's sh- completely ridiculous yeah. and inappropriate. Yes. Yeah. I will say, if you do have a billion dollars, I, I'm, what I'm learning through Cosby and all these fucking guys is evidently you can do that. And he did say that. <laughs> He's going like, you get famous enough. You can just walk up and grab him by the pussy. And I'm just, that was just so absurd to me. I'm like, you can do that. You can't do that. Well, he's got so much money. You got to think when you get to that billion. I don't think that, that guy could get you six grand in cash if you he gave him five this, weeks. But I don't I think just that's don't. correct. I think he's leveraged out quite totally. a bit, but I'm pretty sure he'd go to the ATM and get six grand. But I know you're exaggerating, too. Six right. grand's a funny number. It's a funny number. It is funny. Right. I'm just saying, like, right. dude, th- th- there's, like, liquid rich, right. and your assets are paid off, and then there's, oh, I got this, and I'm going to take a loan against this, and then I'm going to do that and get some investors here, and then I'm going to stick my fucking name on it to build my brand. There's that way where you're sort of, like, steroiding up your, yes. your value, but at the end of the day, it's like, all right, but what... How much can you get me right fucking now? Like, I don't get that whole, like, well, all my shit's tied up. Right. And I got other guys, you know, I'm, I'm working with. Let like, me see the zeros. What's in your bank account? Show me yes. your phone. Yeah. Yes. Show that me. helicopter, that helicopter with your name on the back, is that paid off? <laughs> is that a sticker? But is you, that a sticker that they take off and then they put fucking Mark Cuban on the back? But if you're name? a woman showing up at his house and you're having, you're supposed to have a business lunch, you don't know that. You you show up, he's got this sprawling estate that looks like a castle. He's got these enormous grounds. He's probably got 50 people working just at his house. There's people right. greeting you. They take you into these rooms. He comes out in a $10,000 suit. He's got diamonds and Rolexes and everything's beautiful. And you're like, holy shit, yeah. it's Donald Trump. His toupee is like 80 grand. <laughs> what is he doing with his fucking hair? Why doesn't he go the way you and I did? You and I recognize it was over. Because I, I don't think it was acceptable back then. But it's acceptable. Jordan yeah. had to make it acceptable. Jordan made it acceptable. But he made it acceptable for black guys. For uh, white but guys. But he transcended. Bruce Willis. No, Curly Neal of the Globetrotters <laughs> made right. it acceptable for black guys. That's and right. then Jordan was just, you know, everyone wanted to be like Mike. Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Byrne. It's time for the Monday morning podcast for Monday, March 28th, 2016. The year of the yak, whatever the fuck it is in the Chinese New Year. I have no idea. Isn't that New Year next, next, uh, next month? How does that work with those people? You know, how to like? I don't, I don't get it. I, I just don't. I don't understand why we're on standard and everybody else is on metric. Can we just pick one fucking calendar, one unit of measurement? You fucking go over to Europe, Jesus Christ. Metric, and then some old guys talk. Hey, wait, fucking twenty stone. 20 stone? <laughs> I mean, I guess we're still saying horsepower. Jesus fucking, well, what size stone? What are you, a fucking Freemason? Um, is your buddy in the Illuminati? 
Is that where he's at? Uh, your little secret group? You think you're going to make it? Buying up land on the aquifers? Is that what you're going to do? And then what? Huh? All the robots are going to take everything over, right? You phase everybody out, but uh, except you. And then you you guys. You guys are going to be good. And then all the robots, for some reason, aren't going to turn. How many fucking movies do you need to watch before you realize that they're eventually going to turn on you? Stuck on you. You made a fucking robot. Now it's choking you off with your dick. And you deserve it. Mighty glad you stayed. There you go. That was a little Illuminati with uh, Lionel Richie. How do you like that? Um, somebody sent me this fucking video. They go, hey, you might want to watch this thing. And it was basically this person was talking about, uh, was showing how the automobile put the horse out of business, you know, which it was so funny to me. Like the horse was upset. Like, oh, fuck. You mean human beings are not aren't going to ride on my back anymore? God, what, what now? What do I got to do? I can't run free on the plains. Um, I guess the horse population dropped off, but like nobody who was no one, you know, most of them are born into. Uh, I guess you really don't see horses running around, do you? Maybe out in Wyoming. Yeah, see a lot of cows at the Waffle House. I'm sorry. Well, why would you do a fat joke, Bill, this early in? Come on. You're better than that, Bill. Hang on a second. Come on, Bill. Okay, but we're going to do this a while. Can we try to fucking have, like, just a certain standard of comedy? You got to go that low. You know, you got to attack the broads and fat people all at the same time that early. Hey, you know, whatever. You got to shoot your way out of a slump. It's my second attempt to get this thing going. This is one of these times I'm recording the podcast, not because I'm feeling it. It's because I have to because I got shit to do tomorrow. So uh, I got to kind of knock this thing out on Easter. So anyways, anybody, somebody shows me this fucking thing. So the guy shows how the, the car put the horse out of fucking business. And uh, yeah, like I said, like, like the horse is upset. It's like when you watch those weird commercials where like uh, the Mr. Potato Heads are sneaking off to eat potato chips. There's some sort of weird like undertones of cannibalism going on there. And it's supposed to be adorable. I don't, I don't get those commercials on any level. Um. But uh, totally lost my train of thought. Oh, yeah. So they were basically showing how computers and everything being automated is going to phase everybody out. And there's going to be this mass unemployment that is coming. Um, Like this is fucking groundbreaking thought. I mean, a dummy like me has been saying this for fucking ever. Right. And he just kept going like, oh, so you're in this industry. Well, you're not safe either. You think, you know, you actually you're a computer programmer. Well, guess what? You're not safe either, buddy. Just fucking relax. And like he just kept coming with that tone. And at some point I was just like, well, you're going to fucking shine that light in yourself there. Maybe he does by the end. I couldn't listen to him. What about condescending douchebags who think they know everything narrating over these fucking videos? You know, with your big dude, I called it. Really? Or is technology in the future going to get rid of jobs? Yeah, I had no idea. It's only been doing that since the beginning of fucking time. And these fucking people are just forever forecasting that the sky is going to fall. This is the fucking thing. Eventually, the sky will fall. Nobody knows when it's going to happen. Everybody's been trying to predict it ever since that fucking Nostradamus douchebag, all the way down to a moron like me. And the bottom line is none of us know what we're talking about. Oh, the lovely Nia. I'm busting. Well, get a microphone and a, and a plug. They're in the uh, they're in the closet. So the bottom line is nobody knows when all this shit's gonna end. So just just fucking go enjoy yourself. You know, I just feel like this fucking all this whole presidential election. You got you got one loon. It's in the clo- It's on the closet on the top shelf. You got one lunatic on the fucking left, another lunatic on the right, and then you got this fucking. I don't know what she is in the middle. You know, she's not really in the middle. She's just more the same. You know, they're going to they should just wheel her into the White House like fucking Hannibal Lecter. <laughs> One of those fucking masks on. You should have to watch her awful fucking mouth. You need the plug, too. Oh, I got the plug over here. Let me hit pause so the listeners don't have to fucking listen to this shit. No, I was talking about the Illumin. This fucking video somebody told me to watch where it was just like this guy's just saying how technology and robots are going to phase everybody out. And you just go, you you know, oh, you're a milkman. You think you're safe? Check out this fucking robot and everything. It's just like, yeah, what about condescending douchebags who narrate videos? Like, they probably already have a robot to do that, right? (laughs) Don't they? (laughs) To do what? I'll tell you this. To just narrate shit. They already have the fucking robot lady in the elevator. (laughs) 
Or even that's just a voiceover. That can somebody, fucking Can somebody woman... please make a poster? It's like a horror film. And what did you say? That weird robot lady in the elevator? I want that somebody... That fucking robot lady in the elevator. <laughs> I want somebody to do <laughs> a poster for a movie with your face looking very concerned. And there's like an elevator No, she's it. depressing. She's in like every fucking <laughs> elevator. And it's like going up. And then when she says going down, she goes, going down... And she really, like, like your whole life is going in the shitter. And I can't tell you how many people I've been in the elevator. I go, I, I, it's so fucking depressing. They're like, I know. I hate it. It's yeah, not just know. me. Okay. You know, it's all of us out there in the Ramadas. <laughs> you know? All right. Virtual reality headset blowjob. Uh, all what? right. I know you hate technology, but would like to hear your opinion on this. My girlfriend half-jokingly promised me a double blowjob for my 30th birthday. Um, I do not expect this to happen, but I have been joking with her that the date is approaching and she should have a girl lined up, etc. I have also been talking about virtual reality slash VR headset as I'm thinking of getting one. I don't know what that is. Yeah, what is that? She asked me the other day, would I be able to watch porn through it? I said, yes. She then said, instead of the double buy, why don't you wear the headset and I can give you normal oh. buy while watching a porno. Wait, what are you, what, what are you saying? Buy? Buy? Oh, BJ. Yeah. I'm like, that's not... Oh, you know what? It was underlined in red. <laughs> so I couldn't see the bottom part. I was like, what is this buy? Buy? <laughs> oh, my re- God. Your reading skills are atrocious. <laughs> Yeah, and buy would actually mean that there would be a guy and a girl doing it. I wasn't even. I was thinking about like his girlfriend would be like buy because she was down there with another chick. <laughs> <laughs> I am stupid. God. See this, people? You too could be successful in life. You're as dumb as me. She then. Oh. She then instead instead of a double BJ. Let me read this again. Wow. Why don't you wear a headset and I can give you a normal BJ while watching a porno? Why can't you do that now that's with a TV? That's crazy. Because I feel like when they... That's some like weird Tron futuristic shit where you put it on. Is this like opening Pandora's it? box or is this yes. the, a way for VR to be seen as a techie sex toy? You are really asking the wrong person that question. You know Bill doesn't know what Looking the fuck Looking forward to is. see you in Dublin. <laughs> Myself and some friends will be coming from Belf. Oh, this is the, I, that was the one. Okay. Um, is this the same? No, I read the ending to the other one, to that one. <laughs> and it was weird because the ending was in front of the other one. <laughs> oh, fuck you and fuck oh everybody else. God. Yeah, yeah. Big, it's all funny. It's all fun and games until I stop podcasting. Huh? Oh. I've had enough of this. Sensitive BB. Um, no, I'm not. I don't care. Um, it is a slippery slope, but I feel like that could be really kind of cool. Does she get to do it too? Like, does she get to watch some porn while you like go down on her? That would be really trippy. It would be trippy, but the thing is, then then what ends up happening is, is then you end up getting like uh, that that disconnect. Right, and now you don't want to do anything unless one of you is wearing the helmet. Yeah, it's like, <laughs> and then it's like <laughs> then it's weird. Oh my god, I have to like see you. So that's like a it's a dangerous Yeah. Yeah, that's like one of those things like do you think I could do heroin once and like <laughs> be all right with that? No, I saw something um trying to think where I saw it. Saw what? In in one of those Asian countries because they're always ahead of us. They have better cell phones. <laughs> there was a uh a guy trying out like a virtual reality sex suit. Mm-hmm. Which I had a bit on this thing in like the uh, late '90s when I first heard that they were going to do that. Mm-hmm. Um, and by the way, the fact that you haven't already called me out, going like, "Well, Bill, <laughs> how did you just stumble upon this?" I'm I'm dead honest. What I don't I was, remember. I was waiting for the rest of the story because I no. felt like there was more. It could have been story. while I was watching internet porn. Probably. Yeah, but they don't have advertising advertisements for that. It was yeah, like a they story do. on the side of the thing. They have all those. And ads. how do you know that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, right back at you. Moving right along. <laughs> so yeah, but they don't have ad- they don't have ads like that. Right, that's true. Well, this is what what it was. It looked like a fucking dude. He was like in like a mummy suit. <laughs> it was hilarious. It looked like he was all wrapped up in toilet paper. That's how I remember it because it was so horrifying. 
It was just, it was one of those things, whatever I was looking at, that then came up and I went, ah, right. Mm -hmm. He was, and it looked like, um, his hands were to his side. He had on the fucking, you know, I'm old and I can't see anymore. Mm -hmm. Those glasses, <laughs> those cataract glasses, cataract glasses from the drugstore. <laughs> yeah. So he had on those. He, I think he was all wrapped up because he didn't want anybody to see who he was. Yeah. Maybe okay. that's what it was. OK. And then there was this thing. Obviously, his dick was in it. Oh, my God. And it just the same way your hand would be going like bang, 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 bang against yourself. Uh -huh. It was this thing. It was the most fucked up thing ever. Wait, would you ever use one of those flesh bot things? You know how porn stars, they get no, a mold of their vagina? those things are so fucking gross. I you think would those never things, try Those it? things are so fucking gross. I wonder, like, a long they... time ago, I did somebody's podcast. I'm not going to say who, but people uh -huh. who listen to podcasts know who is. Uh -huh. He had one of those things, and it looked like some Jeffrey Dahmer body part. Oh, I think I know automatically who we were talking Just about. Just yeah. sitting I, I don't think you do. Oh, okay. Because I know who you're going to guess, but it wasn't that person. Oh, okay. um, it looked no, it just looked like. And it, did he say that it did it feel like a real? It can't feel like a real vagina, obviously, but like it, it, it it's just it's. <laughs> I I I, I can't weird. believe that it does like shit like that doesn't cause you to either be like become like a necrophiliac or some sort of person. A like, necrophiliac? Why would it make you be a necrophiliac? Because you're fucking something. That well, looks looks like a body part, and it's not alive. Well, like women have like dildos and vibrators and stuff, and it's like the same sensation. So why wouldn't a, one of those flesh bot things feel like? Isn't it kind of the Is same? Is this principle? like another Madonna Iggy Pop thing? No, Am no. Am I no. looking at it the wrong way? Maybe no, I don't think no, I don't think you're looking at it. I remember way, Nia back in the day. I just think back you, in the day, you don't like the idea of a fake vagina. <laughs> you don't. You're not comfortable. Just with that. sitting on a table, <laughs> and it has a handle on it, and I'm holding it. No, I just think that's not your thing. You're not into that. That feels like Henry <laughs> portrait of a serial killer. <laughs> I remember back in the day, right, when you actually had to go to a porno store to get your porn. Mm -hmm. And they had like, you know, I was always behind the counter mm -hmm. and they would have shit up there. <laughs> One time. They had this. It was like, what's in the box? It was literally a head in a box. And the chick's mouth was like, Rrr, like you just <laughs> stick your dick in it. Yeah. And I'm like, somebody's going to buy that. Yeah. And it was in, like, the same box, like, a basketball came in. And someone's going to take it and grab it by its fucking ears that are stuck to the side of its head. And they're just going to go home and fuck a head. Yeah. Just a head. It's now, there's weird. no fucking way mm -hmm. that that doesn't fuck you up psychologically. If you do that long enough, then you go out with a real person. It's already annoying that they have to buy it dinner and that there's a whole body attached to it. And you have to talk to it. Yeah. <laughs> and then all they're thinking of just grabbing you by your ears. What a, what a, what a, what It's over. Yeah, it's fucked up. Well, I still feel like, well, going back to the question, I feel like they can experiment with it like once or twice. But it can't be like a regular thing that they're doing all the time because then, yeah, that'll completely fuck up your sex life. Because then you'll just be looking at everything you do. Like it's supposed to be this hyper reality, dual reality, virtual. It's just not good. You know, You're I was just thinking, well, let's just connection. fast forward here. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, so that becomes the thing. Right. Which you know it's going to. Mm -hmm. People are going to do it. Mm -hmm. And then what it's going to become is porn stars will be making all of that fucking money. Mm-hmm. And it basically, you have a girl fucking. Now that'd probably just be like the whole suit. It's eventually just gonna be the whole suit, right? What are you talking about? Like I'm, the whole. I'm I'm talking about like in the future, like when like everybody has like a virtual reality sex suit. This will right. actually help the population problem, right? <laughs> the virtual reality sex suit. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then porn stars will then have their likeness. They'll do a POV porn, mm -hmm. and then they get money, and then you have to like subscribe oh, to them. So like you can do you, like you can do a virtual reality thing where you actually with any get porn to have star. sex to ha with like Asa Akira. And then he, like and that. then here's what happens. Yeah. Okay. Who's gonna be the first celebrity that crosses over, <laughs> and eventually, right? Mm -hmm. Because they're sick of doing superhero movies, mm -hmm. and they don't want to do the grunt work of an independent. Mm -hmm. Because, like, you notice now they're all doing ads over here. Back in the day, 
all the celebrities did ads, but they did them overseas, right? Mm -hmm. Remember, we used to go over and we go, oh, look at so-and-so doing a fucking watch thing or look at her doing this thing. Mm -hmm. But they'd never do them here because there was that whole um, um, stigma mm -hmm. that if you did a commercial, you're a sellout, and blah, 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 whatever the fuck it was. Or it's like you're doing a commercial. You're a movie star. A movie star's not even on TV. Forget about doing an ad. Mm -hmm. Now that all went away, mm -hmm. you know? So I'm saying eventually somebody famous would do it. Right. You could, uh, yeah, get a suit and program it so that you're having sex with, like, Lindsay Lohan or someone. Right. And the well, first, and the first, and the first level will go down. No, it would be like, a, like <laughs> one of those reality TV show stars. Right. You know, when the reality show goes off the air, like Jersey Shore, they were all fucking huge. Now it's just disappeared. Where the fuck are they? Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. You could probably talk a couple of them into doing it. Right. Are we yeah. pitching a show right now? I think, or some kind of like high tech concept that will probably make a lot of money. That's going to end up happening. It sounds like a movie. It sounds like like a what was. Gattaca and then this about? is what's going to happen. You're going to have these self driving fucking or cars. Her. You're going to have self driving fucking cars, and people will be laying in them in virtual reality suits, having <laughs> sex checked. with any famous person they want to. <laughs> right. And they'll have, like, because you don't need a steering wheel or gas or brake or anything anymore, you'll literally have, like, your suit in there. And then when you're done, you roll over up from that seat into, like, another, like, a, uh, like a freshen up, like, tub or some shit. We're to I think we're totally going in that direction. I think you're right. We'll, we'll, we'll see it in the next generation. Before, it was just, yeah, the flesh bot stuff where it's just the mold of the vagina or the dick or whatever, and then it's going to be this virtual. It'll be super expensive at first. It's going to go into a complete – it's going to be like when flat screen TVs first came yeah. out and they are 14 grand. So don't buy the first virtual yeah. reality don't buy sex the first suits. <laughs> virtual sex Wait till they're like, they come down to like 800 bucks at Best Buy. <laughs> then you get them, right? Should we figure out how to like make this technology and just like patent it? <laughs> And that's how we'll make our make our yeah fortune. Nia we're we're gonna figure out how to do that. <laughs> I can't even read copy, but no, we're, we're calling it that like that's what's we're gonna happen. It. I'm already yeah. selling right now with these self driving cars, like the interiors of cars. What they're gonna have now? They're gonna have office ones. They're going to have sleeper ones. People just want to sleep going to work. Mm -hmm. They're going to have ones to, to catch up on your emails and all of that type of shit. Yeah, the different you can those that'll be like the different. Um, the, the social one, the social and office one, all of that type of, all, I don't know. And then eventually it's going to be like, well, why are you even going to work now? Because everything's automated and then there's robots, right? Mm -hmm. And then one day the whole fucking thing just turns on us. What if there was a company like in some place really random, not really random, like a Japan? Or By the way, like neither that. one of us is high right now. No, not at all. Completely that high. This is the middle of the day. Never been more sober. What if there was a company somewhere...